perfectly fit any make and model, providing a wall of protection for your vehicle's carpet. Best of all, WeatherTech floor liners are made in America, so you know you're getting the highest quality. Order your WeatherTech floor liners at WeatherTech.com or call 1-800-CARMATS. We all want a home that's ideal, in the right area with curb appeal, somewhere that's serene. Yes, that's the one we see in our dreams. But there are things that can affect you later, like an inspection, closing, or noisy neighbors. You need someone there the whole way through, not to find the perfect home, but one that's perfect for you. Find an agent who knows at Remax.com. Remax. Dream with your eyes open. Each office independently owned and operated. In 30 minutes, broadcasting's finest duo will hit the airwaves. And prepare for the incomparable Opie and Anthony Show. Only a show this big could have a pre-show this good. Welcome to the Opie and Anthony Pre-Show with Sam Roberts. Oh, yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the pre-show. 866-WOW-1-WOW is the phone number to call. 866-969-1969 to be a part of the pre-show as we count down the minutes before Obi and Anthony take the airwaves for another legendary show. Can you imagine being in a position in broadcasting where every single show that you do is legendary. That's where Opie and Anthony are. So let's celebrate that with this here pre-show. Call up now. We'll talk about everything that may be going down today, everything that went down yesterday. Um, a lot to get into on the pre-show today, no doubt. Uh, I kind of have a feeling I know what everybody wants to talk about. The phone lines are already going a little nuts. Uh, we'll start with Larry in Rhode Island. What's up, Larry? Well, good morning, Sam Roberts, you professional broadcaster, you. No, oh, well, good morning, Larry. I was really struck. Oh, thank you. I, I, I'm doing well. I, I hope you're doing well, Sammy. I really do. I am. I was I was listening to the last replay this morning, and uh, listening to the other the, the the interview with the Iron Sheik and and your post show interview. And I've heard the Rock use the term jabroni. In the vernacular, what is a jabroni? That's that's a great question. Uh, of course, the Iron Sheik uses that word very freely. Jabroni, it's just it means it's a, it's a loser. It doesn't mean much more than that. It's a guy who who loses all the time. It's just a guy who sucks. It's a word that some wrestlers use to just describe a loser. That's what uh, the Iron Sheik was using quite a bit yesterday. Super fan Eric, only one way to follow a Larry call, and that's what the super fan Eric call it. Six oh two in the morning. Right, you, you got that right, Sam. I'm the super fan, super fan Eric. It's hump day. It's the day of celebration because my Flyers made the playoffs last night. But Sam, I feel my, your pain, my brother. I, I want to extend my condolences on the Ultimate Warrior. I loved him as a kid, growing up, watching him in the Hulkster battle. But that's okay. Now you got me, Sam. I'm still here for you, buddy. I'm the super fan. Uh, you know what I'm doing right now? I'm on Great Shit, the Great Road at 95, and it's a, my place of business in Philadelphia. I'm going to make hoagies for the city today. I love my job. I love hoagies. I love my man, Sam Roberts. Larry can go up himself. Let's go, Flyers. Sam, sorry about the ultimate warrior, but you got me, baby. The super fan. Thank you so much, super fan Eric. Oh, my God, he's fired up. Of course, that's a big breaking story that the ultimate warrior died last night. Uh, very strange timing with the whole thing. It was sort of, I mean, it couldn't have been more sudden. He was, uh, for the first time in like, I don't know how many years, he was back on WWE TV. He was at the Hall of Fame over the weekend. He was at WrestleMania. He was at Raw on Monday. And then Tuesday night, that's it. It's, it, it's, it's scary and it's sad. Uh, he had his family with him at the Hall of Fame. He kept talking about how much he loved being a dad, so... Very, very sad, but I'm sure that we'll get into uh, everything Ultimate Warrior on the Opie and Anthony show today. Right now, I want to talk to Marion. Marion. Hey, Sam. Hi. I want to ask you something. Is this about the Ultimate Warrior? Yeah. No, no. It's not about the Ultimate Warrior. It's about this uh, get-together next Thursday. <laughs> Look, I can't go, and I'm not, I don't really, you know, I'm talking to you. is because Diane called me up crying, saying that Ultimate Wait, Anthony was she crying about the Warrior? 
No, no. You guys don't want her next Thursday at Caroline's. Right. Now, I can't go, and I, I don't think... Quite frankly, I think we'd rather have the warrior there. But the thing is, though, why are you saying you guys don't want me there? Um, well, I think that Opie and Anthony yesterday... We'll get into the clips. Uh, Opie and Anthony decided uh, to create a... I think they're calling it the Bobo Rule, um, and kind of taking the people that kind of make a scene at show events... And asking them not to go. Stay on the well, line. I understand. I understand oh. about Diana and that Diana and her drinking and right. everything like that. But me, I can't go anyway. But if I wanted to go, I'd go because I don't make a scene. <laughs> right. At, at, stay at, on the line. Let me let me let me bring everybody up to speed on what we're talking about. You stay there, to, uh, uh, Marion. Yeah, because she she's right. me a blasted. I think she was half half in the bag, and she's crying and crying. That doesn't sound like her. It, yeah, it does sound like her. So oh. if, no, really, Sam. And in order to, she is very upset that she can't go. You guys don't want her there. All right, well, let's hear how the Lady Die call went yesterday, Sal. I know, let's, okay. I don't really know because I was at work. And I no, no, it. I know. I was actually going to play the clip for you so you could hear it. Right. How's that sound? All right, do that. I oh. have my radio on. I'm home. No, you just listen in the phone. You just, it'll, you'll hear it. You'll be on the phone and you'll hear it. And I don't understand, oh. like, why. <laughs> of course not. Well, all right, I'm going to play the clip. You stay on the phone, okay? Okay. All right, here's track 16. You called yesterday during the show, and then you asked where Sam is because you wanted to call the after show and ask Sam and beg for tickets. Yeah. When we told you Sam wasn't here, you called anyway. You called fucking right. uh, Denny and E Rock and begged for tickets. And when they wouldn't outright say, oh, we'll get you tickets, you were like, I don't know, maybe, maybe I can get some tickets. You, 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 you're a grub. And then they no, asked you. I wanted to go to the show. You're not going. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. After all that I just How said, she goes, no, I wanted there. to go to the show. What? How come you don't want me to be there? Because you're going to interrupt everything. Because y your seat's good for three fans that I don't want, would show up anyway. I don't want. No. Here's the list. Oh, yeah. I don't want Bobo there. What? I don't want Lady oh. Di there. I don't want Mary there. Wait a minute, there. Bobo already has his ticket. How does he got it? How, how did he get a ticket? I'm, I'm he being. Told me. He told me he has a ticket. Hey, Bobo does not have a ticket. Nobody has a no ticket. No one has yet. a ticket yet. Those oh. guys have got to stay out. They can join us afterwards. I think we're going to try to right, get something else after going. Party, but I could join you afterwards. Oh, oh thank, you thank the Lord. Thank Jesus Christ <laughs> on the cross for that one. I want fans there that rarely get the opportunity and to fan, hang out. And fans that aren't going to interrupt and talk over us. Right, like this. Exactly. This is what we're going to get. Imagine Ronnie being, so you guys. 20 years, you you're on. 20 20 years, years. Uh, who's that? Who's talking? Right. You're not going. I'm sorry. No. Persona oh, non God. grata. So, Marion, you're brought up to speed a little bit. This yeah, is Lady so Di's best friend, Why Marian. me, though? Why, why wouldn't I be able to get in if I, needed, if I wanted to go? I, feel, I, I think that you were probably categorized under the column of people who have a tendency to interrupt and maybe aren't... Uh, Aren't, aren't the quickest on picking up the vibe of the room. You know what I mean? I am a lot of fun to be around. Okay? I was just thinking and that. I'm not a drunk, and, right. I don't, and I don't embarrass myself, okay? Right. I go out, and I have a little bit of fun. Mm -hmm. And you know something? If I, if I can get there, I would go anyway. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe people are but, offended about that N-word thing when you said it on the video. I don't know for sure. Bad. I don't care what they're offended of. But let me tell you, I say it like it is. I tell it like it is. Right. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm not that upset because I, I do have other, other things I have to take care of next Thursday. Well, of course. And, and the thing is, with Diana, she's crying and crying and crying. She would love to go. We were part of the show for 20 years. Back in the day, it was fun before right. Diana. I became a full fledged alcoholic. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of fun before before that. All right, well, but let me. Now, but now it gets out of hand. When, right. When she did the internship, she had a good time, even though I understand what happened with the crapping and growing up and all of that stuff. Oh, yeah, she made a mess of the bathroom and was banned from and using the bathroom. We had to take her on walks. You guys yeah. are trying to help like her. Like a dog. Out. I right. know you guys are trying to help her get into rehab, but I'm telling Woman you, it, in her ain't, 50s. it ain't happening, okay? It ain't, or not happening. Right not now. with that attitude. Let me, but maybe this will clear things up for you. Bobo called in uh, after we talked to uh, Lady Di. Marion, yeah. you stay on the phone, and this might clear up a couple things as to how the decision-making... How come Patty gets oh. to go to all of these things? She keeps her mouth shut. 
Yeah, well, she doesn't yeah. talk too much. That's why. Oh, well, that's a good but, counterpoint. That's a very good I mean, counterpoint. She does not talk too much. She does not know how to have a good time. So why don't we hear when Bobo called in yesterday? We'll listen together, Marion, and then maybe it'll help bring us up to speed. Now, what's wrong with Bobo? Why can't he go? Okay, let's find out. Let's play track 17. Hi, who's this? Yeah. Yeah, this is Bobo. <laughs> Boy, this program oh, loves to run in circles, don't oh, we? Hi, oh, Bobo. Hi, Lady Di. You told me a million times. Lady Di. Yes. Shut up while we talk Look. to Bobo, okay? Sure. All right. Hey, Bobo. Hey, Bobo. Uh, take it, Di? Bobo, we got something called the Bobo rule for this unmask. Is that it cool? Is. It's the Bobo rule. We're naming it after you. Is that cool? It's like Megan's law. Right. Something. It's Bobo's well, rule. That's unconstitutional. <laughs> what? The Bobo rule is simple. We really appreciate you guys. Says that you don't care if she comes, stays, lays, or prays. <laughs> Your toes are still tapping. We support, you know, the support you guys have given us and the great radio over the years is terrific. But we just feel like this event is not for you or Lady Di or Marion. Is there anybody else oh, in there? Come. Oh, come on. Come on. Bobo. I really want to get to this. <laughs> is he crying? Bobo, Bobo, are you crying? No, but I really want a ticket to this. Why did you tell Lady Di you already had a ticket? Yes, why? No, oh, I didn't know what to do, right? I, I... <laughs> Why'd you lie? How come you don't want us here? Oh, my God. Because you're a babbling no, I idiot. Not, I not, I I not that that you're on stage. It's not about it's you. you. That's true. She it's behaves. a very <laughs> important... You'd never behave yeah, at she'd anything. Be all right. I think she'd be You've okay. never behaved at anything. You'd be good, right, Ty? <laughs> Wait, wait, hold on, hold on a second. Okay. Uh, 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 Jimmy said I never behaved in anything? No, Anthony yes, Jimmy said, said that. <laughs> After all these years, you don't know the voices? Holy fuck. See, Marion, my only problem yeah. with... You're still there, right? Yeah, I am. My only problem with that clip is that since you're on the list of people not invited to the Unmasked yeah, event... why me? It makes it sound like Opie is describing you as well as a babbling idiot. I'm not a babbling idiot. Why? Because I talk. Right. And that's... I like to have fun. Uh huh. And I'm the idiot thing at, too. I, all these events that me and Diane went to in the past. Right. We had a good time. We talked to people. Now I wasn't at some of these events. Were you a, a babbling idiot at I'm the events? A babbling idiot. No. But I do talk a lot. Right. But what am I going to do? Stand there and not talk? An idiot. To people want to come and talk to me. Right. I understand. I understand. And well, I don't get loaded. I don't get drunk. And I don't make a fool out of myself. No, I've never seen you make a fool out of yourself. But I'm going to tell you, I wish I can go, but I can't go. But on the other hand, I'm calling for Diane, too. Maybe you guys could call her. And what, if you were her. planning an event, would you invite Lady Di? No, not the way she is now. Right. Well, then you get our point. Would you invite you? Yes, I would. That's weird. Let me... Uh, yeah, let me... You know why? Because I don't, yeah. drink, I don't drink, okay, like she does, and I have a good time, and I talk. I don't stand there and, like, stare into space. Right. It's just, you know, you talk, just, you I hang know. out, you talk a lot, you're a bit of an yeah. idiot, and so it's like, well... I'm not a blooming idiot. So right. You are a blooming idiot. Okay, good and point. You know what? Let me tell you something. It would be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. People ask... People might even ask about me and Diane. There is a you good know? chance that the fans are going to wonder... Where is Marion? Actually, let's go to Snowy in Michigan. There might be because Snowy, yeah. you're on the phone on the pre-show here with uh, myself, Sam Roberts, and Marion. Thank you, Samuel. It isn't about whether you guys are fun or not, or whether that Bobo is the fans like. It's about Opie and Anthony. They said she could go to the after show. I know it's about Opie and Anthony, idiot. But let me tell you something right now. If Patty could be there, and Patty will just stand around and, and stare at people, and she won't even hardly talk. So if you're at an event, she'll interrupt talk to people. You said yourself, you wouldn't interrupt her. You wouldn't take her to an event yourself. Why yeah, I, I've been to plenty of events in the past. Plenty. Plenty of events. All right, Snowy. Uh, Marion, Bart in Pennsylvania actually wants to talk to you. What's up, Bart? Hey, good morning, Marion. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. How are you? No matter how you are, you oh. wonder why you're not invited because you won't shut the fuck up. That's why. <laughs> why? Because Love you, I Sam. like to Bye. talk. Thanks, and Bart. I like to have fun. That's what it is. That's you it. Something. I am not a boring person. I don't need to get drunk to have a good time. My question is, do Obi and Anthony even want this event to be fun at all? They might. Why wouldn't they? It's 20 years. Yeah. 
and, and and a lot. They did a lot in 20 years. And you've kind of been there since the beginning, huh? Uh, well, just about, maybe. I'm going to tell you something, Mary, and you look great for your age. You're still rocking that little body on you. Yeah, well, I would love, like I said, I would love to go. And if I can get to New York, Smoking if I hot have body. another appointment, I would go anyway. Yeah, those... I'm sure if I went by myself, you guys would let me in. But you know something, I'm not going to go. Those curves are holding up. Sam, but I'm going to tell you something right yeah. now. Diane is very upset. I'm so, not, but she is. And thoughts on the passing of the Ultimate Warrior? I don't know anything about that, but he... Are you serious? He did die? He passed away uh, last night, yes. Holy shit, from what? Probably from steroids? I don't know for sure. I don't... I, he apparently collapsed outside of his hotel in Arizona. Holy shit. Probably from drugs and doing too much or whatever the hell he was doing. Mm -hmm. I gotta go, Sam. Hey, look. <laughs> okay. Take care, and I'll have to see... I, I hope to see you soon. I hope so, but too. like I said... Hey, maybe Caroline's. May, she no, she's very upset. Oh. Re really, all right. Well, so much with, your, with the internship two weeks ago. Even all right. Though it didn't all right. Goodbye, Marion. Uh, we should also. I mean, if you want an example of Lady Di being upset, listen to the hang up from yesterday's show when uh, Opie and Anthony were finally done with Lady Di and Bobo. You're not pleading your case as to why you should be allowed to go. I, I guess we should just hang up on them. They're not pleading their case. No, 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 no,
Well, Lady Dying Mary and she, Jimmy, start yelling at him and waving, and he has to leave before they disrupt Dice's act. How can he beat the unmasked? You're right. You're right. You're right, Larry. They have no concept of what these events mean and, and how one should behave. Uh, as of now, they are not invited. We'll see how that develops. I'm sure we'll get into it more today on the Opie and Anthony show. Um, speaking of the Ultimate Warrior and wrestling, the Iron Sheik was on the show yesterday. As if uh, Bobo and Lady Di weren't enough, the Iron Sheik made his return to the show. Uh, let's hear his thoughts on Hulk Hogan. That's track 10. Well, we know the Hulk, though. Hulk Hogan has certainly shown support. He's a jabroni. Right. He... Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> because people know, without our Sheik, yeah. no Hulkamania. No Hulkamania. Exactly. Without, without and yeah. that was that big city, never asleep, Madison Square Garden, Madison New York. Square the Garden. most famous arena in the world, number one. <laughs> Give me a hell yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> oh, you're right there, Sheik. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh my god. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay. Uh -oh. Okay, John moment here. <laughs> Stop yeah. your spilling it. <laughs> right. Wow. Oh wow, that was good. Yeah. It's like four people in the room and the Iron Cheek still has to steal Stone Cold's gimmick. Give me a hell yeah. <laughs> It's not like it's a boisterous crowd. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh, he did not disappoint yesterday. It's amazing what's happened with the Iron Sheik. Uh, the first time he came on, he was totally out of his mind drunk. The next time he came on, he actually ended up walking out because he didn't want to do anything. I guess he was detox detoxing. Now he seems to be in a place where he's mellowed somewhat, but he's aware of what's going on around him and... He's aware that Hulk Hogan is indeed a jabroni, <laughs> because you heard him. Anthony brought it up, and Iron Sheik said it. Exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's get into He's also tackling pop culture now. Uh, Rob Ford was a topic on his mind yesterday. Let's go to track 11. Ian from Toronto, what do you guys uh, think of Rob Ford? What do I think of what the Sheik think? Oh, does, oh, the, 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 does sheik. the Sheik have a, an opinion on Rob Ford? Rob you, you Ford? Once the Javron is supposed to be the <laughs> role model for the whole young generation, but what kind of fucking man is to <laughs> smoke crack and smoke marijuana and oh, go eat that Javroni hamburger? So uh, uh, he's not really good role model for the Toronto City. But to be clear, we've reached out to Rob Ford, who's going to be coming to his movie premiere in oh, Toronto. Wow. Of course he at will. Hot Docs. We're at the headlining film in the number one uh, film festival for documentaries. Oh, nice. So at Hot Docs, April 26th, uh, Rob Ford hot and the Sheik hot have Hot Docs. Oh. They say hot dogs. H hot dogs. I thought it was hot dogs, too. Hot, hot, hot dogs. I thought it was just Sorry. some cool restaurant or something. It's not just hoose in a boot. But I understand. Your words. We are. We are. We have put the invitation out, and he will have. We will be voting for Rob Ford if he does this. Oh wow! And nice. the Sheik will give him his blessing. <laughs> and his Twitter. He'll he'll tweet him out. Oh, we, want, yes. we want the we Sheik the and Rob tweet. Ford on not the red carpet on the Persian carpet of the premiere <laughs> oh. to come to come into the come into the room on camels. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's the goal. That, that is pretty Rob good. Rob Ford, we're calling you out, brother. You need a stout camel for Rob Ford. He's a big, fat fuck. You're going to need a... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, indeed. The Iron Sheik right on the money. And he's right. And that's something that the news has never brought up in all the Rob Ford coverage. He was indeed eating a jabroni hamburger. There's no doubt about that. That hamburger was a complete jabroni hamburger. One more. Uh, of course, the Iron Sheik's thoughts on Justin Bieber. What about Justin Bieber? Oh, Justin Bieber, I know he's over, uh, he have a lot of friends around the world, but it's still that young kids get a little bit too excited. Sometimes I think he, he needs to somebody like Iron Sheik, put him in the camel clutch, make him humble. Oh. Uh, he's another young punk, but, but he did okay compared to a lot of people his age. He has yeah. no respect. No respect. No respect. No, respect. Right. Right. no, exactly. no. He needs, he needs to be a little discipline. Oh, man, she he needs was, to be she was raised on respect. Of that course. Yeah. DNA. Right. Respect. Exactly. Amen, indeed. Uh, this Lady Di and Bobo thing has the people uh, fired up. Let's go to Jeremy in Maryland. Hey, man. Yesterday I was listening to the replay, dude, and Bobo is not a scary person, but that fucker had me scared, man. I was like, oh, my God, these dudes are laughing so fucking hard. 
they don't even hear his creepy ass on the line. And that's what people, people, you know, they talk about Bobo and the things that have happened to him on the show as if it's abusive. You know, as if Opie and Anthony aren't treating him well. The minute that they say, Bobo, there's a show we're doing and maybe you sit this one out, do you hear the way he sounds like his whole world is crumbling? It's so strange. Uh, Brandon. Brandon in North Carolina, you're on the pre-show. Hey, Sam, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm sorry to hear about the Ultimate Warrior, man. He's a legend. Yeah, it's awful. But I wanted to bring it up real quick. Uh, Bobo went behind ONA's back yesterday. First ten minutes, Ron and says he started begging for tickets, pretty much talking about how he did so much for the show and all this. <sighs> I just thought the guy should know that. Didn't he pull the clip or something? I'm glad that you called in, Brandon. We're going to get into that today. I'll make sure that the guys have the Bobo on Ron and Fez clip. Because it's like, I mean, the whole thing, it's his whole life. There's nothing going on outside of this thing. Uh, Jason, Jason in Texas, you're on the pre-show. Hey, Sam, what's up? How you doing? All right, here's my suggestion. Let Lady Die and Bobo go and give them both shot callers. That way they start talking, you shock the shit out of them. Maybe we'll give them shock collars, and as a special gift, everybody in the audience gets a remote. So everybody gets to control just shocking them all night long. That'd be awesome. All right, thanks, buddy. That's the thing, though. We don't want a situation. This is not like a live, wacky broadcast. We do not want a situation where weirdos have to get electrocuted. We want a situation where Ron Bennington can do an, un and an in-depth unmasked interview celebrating the careers of Opie and Anthony. I mean, I, I don't think it's too much to ask. Uh, speaking of celebrating, our own sex bagel was celebrating yesterday. A big day for him. Of course, I, I, we talked about it on the pre-show a little bit yesterday. The other thing, before we completely move on from Lady Die, remember we were talking about on the pre-show yesterday how difficult it is to not pick up the phone when Lady Die was there? Well, that, because stuff like that happens. You pick it up, and you have no idea what type of disaster you're going to walk into. But it's always entertaining on the Opie and Anthony show. Uh, yesterday, E-Rock was an MVP of the show. Uh, the Cronut store reopened. We talked about it with Roland a little bit on the pre-show, and then again on the main show. Uh, but we sent E-Rock down because it became such a big media frenzy all the news trucks were there uh radio was there television everything and so we wanted to make sure the opie and anthony show was properly represented iraq used to do a lot more of these and one day in i think it was probably 2004 or 2005 he ran behind a live news cast flapping his arms like a bird and at that point for the next three years or so jim called him hawk we wanted the return of the Hawk yesterday, and this is what we got. Let's go to track two. Dominic Ansel Bakery. You can see it's wrapped all the way down to Thompson Street. Some people have been out here. Ah, there's he. Here we go. You He was on the news reading the text. <laughs> what a <laughs> bumbling idiot. Oh, that's so great. As I mentioned, oh, push it. Push it. Iraq, where are you? Iraq. We're just grabbing. They need to get their hands on one of these. Take a listen. Oh, Iraq. Oh, my God. Uh, Shitty boy. That was hilarious. There he is on 11. On 11. Up top. Back to you guys. That's <laughs> <laughs> much excitement on this. <laughs> oh, boy. Aren't they excited? <laughs> All right. <laughs> but then he ran out of shit to say. <laughs> they come with the help of adults to lose weight and rid their bodies up. of harmful <laughs> toxins. <laughs> but are juice punch to help you? Yeah, but you the radio show name in there. <laughs> 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 Cronuts. Oh, it really was funny. The video of that, it's a screen grab video thing. Obi put it up on his YouTube channel, Opie Radio. So if you haven't seen it yet, you got to see the visual that goes along with that uh, broadcast. The reason we were screaming is that he started, Fox 5 here in New York, did a, like a three-minute live piece from the Cronut store. And Iraq was just completely oblivious 
to what was going on. So he was on camera just wandering around. Uh, and then what happened was the other station, WPIX 11, is the one that E Rock found and shouted, Woo, Cronuts, fine. <laughs> the return of the Hawk, the return of the Iron Sheik, and the breakdown of Lady Di and Marion. It was a great Opie and Anthony show yesterday. It's going to be an even better one today. They're saying more new signals are coming from this Malaysian plane. They may have found it, but at this point, who knows what is radiating signals from the bottom of the ocean. Uh, of course, the Yukon women's team won. Uh, we'll get into the Ultimate Warrior and the untimely surprise passing of him. And Reverend Al was on TV. We talked about him a little bit yesterday, justifying and explaining why he was a, a mob informant, a rat, as they say. Uh, and he's very against the no-snitching movement. All that and a lot more when the Opie and Anthony show begins, which is right now. From the murky banks of terrestrial radio, a new hope begins to rise. Opie and Anthony are radio shock jocks known for setting up outrageous stunts. People sure are listening. Two Long Island natives who together would one day change the world as broadcasting's greatest duo. Oh my God! It was beautiful! 
After 20 years, these children of the 80s have arrived. Their hugely popular radio show is not just in New York anymore. Opie and Anthony show. The hottest show there is. Through 55-gallon drums and wiffle ball bats. Oh, you push it in until you are comfortable. From mayors to mayor. It was an April Fool's hoax by two radio disc jockeys. With bottle rockets and bra bombings. <laughs> and wieners and pigs. Opie and Anthony got their hands on the photo and tweeted it. Two men that have taken a box of cocks further than any. Well, these people will definitely stop. Guaranteed. Oh, Lift okay, up this the <laughs> <laughs> They've met friends along the way. I have a raging heart on right now. Can I please put my dick in your donuts? And through fines, scandals, suspensions, cancellations, and terminations, it's the one show that remains unscathed. Striking fear into the hearts of management everywhere comes a radio show that after 20 years remains above all else real. This is the Opie and Anthony Show. But enough of this palaver. Let's get the show on the road. Man, we just did 20 minutes of radio. Uh, let's just go home. We really should. Oh, we should man. just put that on a loop and a we would be good for the day. Uh, podcast right there or something. Oh, God, yeah. What they call it. I don't know. Yeah, <sighs> these guys have podcasts for an hour. That's cute. Uh, you, you know, guys are all cute. It's hard work. You know, we put Ooh. a lot into our podcast, do you? We've done good. we've done eight podcasts already this week. Eight. <laughs> eight we have just this week. That yeah. would be two months of podcasts for the regular podcast. There it is. Upload it. Yeah. Oh boy, are we having fun today? Oh before the show goodness. started, we got to get that energy right on the radio. <laughs> There's a just lot of beating things the going shit on. out of everybody. <laughs> we really are little fucking. Wash women. We just told Roland. <laughs> we just told Roland that we're we're saying no to all guests. <laughs> all guests. So he's like power eating in the back right now. <laughs> he's, he's a little upset about that. <laughs> oh boy, is he? Oh, because uh, when you when you submit uh, uh, people to be guests on the show, he goes, yeah. "Oh, because just put an automatic no in my <laughs> <Right>. column." <laughs> Ah, you know, sometimes the guests are great, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and sometimes it's fun to meet a big star, but in general... Sometimes it's what they call a chore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not today, though, right? Oh, not today. Come on. Danny Look at Trejo in studio. Danny Trejo. And uh, Bob Saget. And Bob Saget, friend of the show for many years. And we told Brandon Steiner to beat it. We had too many guests today. <laughs> did we tell him to scram? <laughs> we sure did. Until hit, next time. Hit the bricks. <laughs> Take your junk and go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> You're junk. Does he have some Jeter stuff, being that this is his uh, final so. season? Because I need a Jeter ball, because I was stupid. Yeah. Remember those Jeter balls that Eric Logan got for us? Oh, yeah. Did you ever save yours? No. Mine no, was I, signed I... to Opie Derek Jeter oh, on man. a baseball. That's huge. That's mine cool. is displayed in my house. Well, prominently. Good for you, because I. Behind something. Mine was laying around on my desk. Oh. This stuff drives Jimmy nuts. Oh, no. To the point the sun completely faded out the autograph. Oh, no. Oh, no. No joke. It is gone. You can't even tell that he signed this ball anymore. You know who liked mine? Huh. Little Beavis. He batted it around the house. It's adorable. <laughs> I don't I just you know. Yeah. A few pictures of some of the, the guys I liked growing up. That's great. Uh huh. She's a museum that. glass for that. Nah. That's all right. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious, it's all right. I'm sure he'll have some Jeter stuff, right? Actually, all my stuff that I get signed, I just push on other people. Yeah. Because they appreciate it way more than I. You re-gift? Well, it's a cool re-gift, though, it right? It is a cool re-gift. Although, I, I saved my um, Dr. J basketball that he signed. Oh, yeah? Even though it's not a, an official ball, but that's cool. It's one of those little basketballs. Yeah, because that's one of the guys I watched growing up. My God, Dr. J was amazing. i got to st thank uh, the Borgata. Yeah. Sending me uh, my fourth uh, Mac Air book Seriously? for fucking my birthday. Jesus. When's your birthday? Not I should Mac know this Air. by now. Is it today? <laughs> Get it. Happy birthday. I mean, no, it's not today. When's oh. your birthday? <laughs> I know. It's the 26th. Happy birthday. Thanks. Oh, I was going to say 22nd. Yes. I'm going to go um, to the. Uh, to Caroline's on my birthday to oh, see boy. Jimmy Norton. Nice. Yeah. Well, you couldn't pick a bigger bust of a fucking birthday <laughs> gift for yourself. <laughs> Jesus. 
That's awesome, though. I don't know. It's one of those things where uh, the Borgata is very nice for doing it. Yeah. But it's like, could you? how many Mac Air books but, do I really need? So why don't you call those fuckers up and say, hey, change up the gifts. Like you send me uh, <laughs> something, uh, Windows. Something. Uh, send me send me one of those fancy watches. A fancy watch. I do all that shit. Give it a watch. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, they're, they're nice. So, yeah. So. We got uh, Bob Saget. Yep. Did you know that, like, on TV, he was, like, you know, a family sitcom guy? <laughs> yeah. But in his real life, he's kind of dirty. I didn't know that. Perhaps we can uh, chat about Did that. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I was actually, unlike you guys, I was really? aware. Really? I was aware. aware. Of that? Yeah. Because I, 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 I saw him as this uh, squeaky clean guy. I was a, uh, I was a bit surprised to find huh. out that in his real life he was dirty. Wow. Because <laughs> he was so, so clean for TV. You know, I bet people go there thinking they're going to see the clean guy from the sh TV show, and then right. they're shocked, maybe. Right. You know. This may be an angle that you guys want to take with the interview today. I hope that's in our prep. I'm thinking so that we, we should do that for the it. fifth time. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, shit. Please don't be listening. <laughs> oh, boy. What? We love Bob Saget. You know that. Of course that. we do. That's obvious. And the name of his Friend book of is show. called Dirty Daddy. Oh. oh. How nice is that? We better be in this book. I'm, I'm telling you right now. Or oh, what? Oh, check I'm the searching, thank yous. I'm searching for our names right now. There's no thank you section. Oh, uh, really? No, no thank you. So, the, so he covertly hides it within the text of the book. Yeah. It's like, hey, you know, and uh, boy, boy, did this guy help me. Mm -hmm. And then we're just pieces of shit again. <laughs> Who knows? Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Oh, big fan of uh, you guys. Oh. All right. And then they go and thank everyone else in their book. Oh, but thank us. you. Whatever. I'm not saying Bob Saget did that. Thank you. He, Bob is, he truly is the king of all me. Oh, we get it. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for the thank is you. He, is we he really? Nothing. <laughs> oh. When people put their little dumb thank yous. Is he really? He can't is take he? a little ribbing from Jeff Van Gundy? <laughs> what happened there? I think the king of all media we'll should be able to take a little ribbing from Losing Jeff Van Gundy. The king of all paranoids. <laughs> right. <laughs> Poor Jeff Van Gundy is holding on to the last piece of hair on his head. <laughs> And you're going after him because he ribbed you a little bit for, uh, for leaving a Knicks game early. So why don't you just send him to your wig place? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Calling him Help a midget and all this stuff, really? <laughs> yeah. Can't take it? Oh, come on. <laughs> the king of dishing it out can't take a little ribbing from, yeah. from a guy that doesn't even have a hint of a muscle on his body. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fuck. Shit. Really? <laughs> what else is going Did you get on? My text? I texted you last night. Oh, dude, I meant to write you back. Ooh. Yeah, I was in a restaurant in Phil Jackson. Dick pics? What was no. it? No, that's obvious. Oh. He's seen enough of those. Damn, nice. Yeah, he was in. Uh... Jimmy, I don't know what happened because I, I honestly got very excited by that text and I meant to write you back. Yeah, I was, For he was real? Si sitting right behind me. I was like, what restaurant? I'll, I'll tell you off the air because he might go there a lot. Uh, Phil, uh, Phil Jackson. Oh, Phil Jackson. Sure. I'm a huge Phil Jackson fan. Huge. Yes. Even when he was with the Lakers, I had to kind of push for him a little bit because oh. of, you know, the Knicks angle. Sure. And he's now a he's big a, man. Yeah, and he's square. Yeah. You notice that? Broad fucking really shoulders. Really square looking. Oh, I thought I he mean, meant he was just uncool. No. <laughs> the, the shape, his shoulders, like Jimmy said, are. Yeah. it's ridiculous how wide he is. Like a cartoon version of a man? Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I looked at I didn't stare at him. I just saw him briefly in the mirror, and I was like, that's the guy that coached Jordan mm -hmm. and Shaquille and Colby. Wow. Like, man, he really is a See, great fucking coach. But I'm the one. I, I think of it this way. He's the guy that played with Walt Frazier, Bill right. Bradley, Dave DeBusher. Dave uh, DeBusher. Uh, Willis Reed. I remember being a kid, and my dad was a huge Knicks fan, and I would hear the game as I'm going to bed, and I thought Dave uh, DeBusher was a butcher. Dave the Butcher, yes. I always thought for so long, why is... Why is a butcher playing basketball? I thought it was Dave the Butcher, too. I was just a tiny, tiny little nobody. Oh, and then child I, of the 80s. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, then I figured it out. Yeah. But Phil Jackson, man, yeah. that left-handed, awkward-looking fella was able to play the, the game as well. People don't know that. He was good, man. He was yeah. in the starting lineup for the Knicks. I don't know him as a player at all. I just I remember he was here one day with like, four of the other Knicks. They were doing some uh, fishbowl thing. Right. Ooh, like you got him. that picture too, right? Yeah, five of them, and they all signed the ball. That's awesome. Yeah. I remember you got that picture. See, something like that, 
you know, I'm not unreasonable. A picture like that I would love and I would frame. Yeah. But most mm. of the stuff, who cares? Uh-oh. 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 Oh, Mars. Oh, Mars. What happened? New to broadcast? <laughs> Drug deal going down. The... Drug deal going down. That's Who's when you're that? supposed to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh you got to meet someone in the bathroom for a little oh, drug deal. Exactly. Yeah. Making What's some side money. Here? He's got a pager in what? 2014. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. This is a story out of... Uh, maybe I shouldn't say. Oh. Ooh, what's it about? Uh, I better not say. Oh. Because I don't know if it hit the papers yet. Well. Oh, wow. Wow. Look at the man fucking in head hint? of the news. Some drug dealing going on in a hospital in the oh. Philly area. Oh, yeah? That's why I just said exactly what I said. Oh. It's based on something. I hear a lot of drugs go on in the hospitals. Supposedly there's some dealing going on in the this bathroom. Hospital. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Ooh. A whole system. A whole system of meet me in the bathroom. I got a little something, ah. something for <clears throat> Anyway. Nice. More of that will come out soon, I'm sure. By the way, Mickey Rooney was worth $18,000. That. <laughs> That's it? And, and that he said... poor fuck. He gave a big fuck you to his eight kids. He took all his kid, but but whatever. What are you gonna give eighteen grand? He took all his kids out of his uh, will very recently because he knew he was on his last leg and said, "You know what? This yeah. is what I'm gonna do." He had nothing, and he gave the eighteen thousand to his stepson that was kind of uh, taking wow. care of him at the end there. Wow. Oh boy, eighteen thousand dollars! <laughs> and it was another stepson that fucked up his fortune. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. He, I think he filed elder abuse against that guy. Yeah, yeah. right. And then same was, guy. I'm guessing it was. I don't know. He was always bitching about the fact that he never made money with oh. all the movies that he made. He said, uh, you know, it was back in the day where they never paid those guys. Right. You know? they, they made the movies, they made a flat rate, and that was it. And it wasn't that much money. You would think Mickey Rooney was worth at least a mil, right? Oh, yeah. Come on. 18 G's. Wow. 18 G's. How was he living? That's chump change. Is he living on someone's couch? You know, it's a lot of money to a lot yeah. of people. All right. Mm. Wow, he disinherited his estranged wife of 35 years. That fucking photo blocking uh, Cloverfield monster. monster. Oh my god. <laughs> was some of those pictures that people redid <laughs> were great. I, my favorite was the one with just a brick wall. <laughs> <laughs> Someone just put an awkward brick wall in. <laughs> oh, yeah, right good. on, man. Wow. <laughs> yeah, those guys got so screwed back in those yeah. days. Not just the athletes, they, they really got screwed. Yeah. Uh, right. You know what he Actors? made it up in? Pussy. That short little fuck would have never gotten laid. <laughs> That's and true. he fucked some quality Hollywood fucking quiff. What was the quality? Quality. Name names. Uh, Ava Gardner. Ava, that's Ava quality. Ava Gardner right there. Is Back some in the quality, day, that was some quality. That quality wasn't, pussy. Wasn't that Merv's uh, beard? Was it? I think uh, I think Sinatra fucked Ava Gardner, too. Really? Right? Oh, that's, I was thinking Gabor. Wasn't oh, there an Ava yeah, Gabor yeah, or yeah, something? Yeah, Gabor was okay. the one uh, that, that Merv walked around with. But he got Hollywood starlet pussy that he never would have gotten, so... You know, yeah. you got to take it where you can get it. Maybe not in green cash, but mm. in the old pink gash. <laughs> oh! <laughs> but he was only worth $18,000. It said that he uh, at, there was some kind of a settlement he got that where the millions were owed to him, but right. they probably said he probably never would have collected. That's what you got to do, though. He wins. He's Mickey Rooney. He has this long life where, you know, he probably didn't want for anything in his life. Right. And then he, he dies with barely any money. That's the goal, right? Yeah, of course. Especially if you don't want to give your heirs any money. You, you went through your money. You used it all. Unless you want people who love you at the end. Yeah, fuck them. Maybe, maybe that one he missed on. Yeah. Fuck them in the ass. <laughs> Maybe he was just a horrible person, though. He, he yeah. comes across like he was a real prick on wheels. I'm saying maybe. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, on paper it sounds awful, but maybe yeah. he was just a dick. Hey, you don't go through eight wives being terrific. As right. much as we like Larry yeah. King, there's seven people who will say he's a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Did you know that Bob Saget's a dirty daddy? You know what? I just saw that on his book cover, and says, perhaps we should take that angle. It says the chronicles of a family man turned uh -huh. filthy comedian. That's an angle we got to take today, Sam. Yeah, Roberts. yeah. It's a good idea. We'll get to the bottom of some stuff finally. Right. Sam, who uh, makes believe he's in the know. Doesn't even understand that the Ultimate Warrior is going to die soon. He doesn't get the last interview. Uh, you blew it, sir. Yes, I didn't have that option. Weren't you down there with the wrestlers just a mere two days ago? Yeah, with the Warrior. How close were you to the Warrior? I mean, there? I never, I wasn't any closer than seeing him on the stage. Oh. Mm. How did he look? 
He looked great. Oh, boy. And I'll tell you this. Uh, I see he was a nice man. I saw him in August. I heard he was a jabroni, though. He, I disagree with the Iron Sheik's assessment. Didn't yesterday. he say that just yesterday? That just he was a jabroni? Yesterday. And then on that post... Why does that, why does that work out that way with us, with us in this know. show? On the post show, yeah. Yeah. Iron Sheik said that the ultimate warrior was a male prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, obviously the true. warrior couldn't take that news. Right. I don't know. Yeah. But I saw, I talked to him last in August, mm. and you know what he said to me when he saw me? Oh. What? He went like this, Sam, what's the haps? All right. The Ultimate Warrior said that? Yes. It was one of the coolest things that's ever happened. No shit. Probably the last thing he said before he died. Oh. He just yelled, Sam, what's the haps? And what's grabbed the his hap? chest and oh. fell on the floor. Oh, poor guy. Yeah, that's going to turn out to be a, a heart blowing out. Yeah. That's got to be a heart blowing out. I bet he did a lot of steroids in his day, right? Is I that mean, that, that was the steroid era. That's not him, is it? That's him. And what, what was oh, this clip from? doesn't look like him. This was from two days ago. This was from Monday. Holy he shit. He was in the ring on Monday? He cut a promo on Monday. Oh, wow. So let's listen to this. And it, this was the first time he was on Raw in well over ten years. I mean, wow. So he was getting his, uh, they were going to give him a little taste. They, yeah, they, he said he signed a like an ambassador's oh, deal, which means he gets new merchandising and... They sent him on autograph signings. Didn't he bash them relentlessly or no? He bashed oh, them, but fun. they also bashed him. Oh, it's one of those things. Oh, where, let's fun. hear this. Oh, wait. First, the clip from yesterday. Um, what? Uh, Iron Sheik talking about the Ultimate Warrior. I didn't Sheik. Yeah, this is the after show clip. How long is it? It's two minutes. Oh, Jesus Christ. Can we play 20 seconds? <laughs> <laughs> you, can, Just... you can bow out at any time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's right. get to the meat of it. <laughs> yeah, please. You take a lot of pride in the fact that you're a Hall of Fame member, correct? Right. How did you feel over the weekend watching the Ultimate Warrior become a member of the Hall of Fame? Because that kind of means the Iron Sheik and the Ultimate Warrior, same level. Well, um, not really same level. Uh, Iron Sheik class is higher because, uh, like I said, I'm already all American AAU champion. Right. Uh, and right. that Jabroni never been had in my class. And I'm the real. Uh, WWE champion Hulk Hogan, I mean the Ultimate Warrior gets a lot of bad name because uh, it was embarrassing for uh, Bruno Sammartino, uh, Hulk Hogan and myself to be they found out that guy is uh, sell himself for the sex for the money yeah. he was a uh, uh, kind of male prostitute uh, uh, was male. he a male prostitute? Exactly. No. He was a male the prostitute. Juice, male that. prostitute. That was embarrassing for the uh, WWE yes. company and um, uh, all the top wrestlers. So after that, he lost his respect next to me. So, I didn't care about him. So you don't think he should be in the Hall of Fame? Well, uh, what president said, uh, they don't care now about the gay people or... <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> that, uh, right. so gays, are, gays are allowed into the WWE Hall of Fame. Is that, is that exactly. an Obama thing? <laughs> Obama says, yeah, yeah, gays can get married and Vince oh. McMahon. Is there any evidence that the Ultimate Warrior is actually a male prostitute? Well, uh, that was in the en er Enquirer magazine. Oh, the so writer, a, that's why I read in the Enquirer. What the if, it's in the Enquirer if it's in the Enquirer, you know, it's 100% true. Well, yeah, so I mean, uh, it, it, it would seem that way. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I didn't mix that the story. That was in the that mixing Enquirer magazine, not just I know. Mixing. Everybody in America so read it. So to be it. clear, it's the Sheik's, it's, it's, it's his rules and what the Enquirer says is what he lives by. Right, I understand Fair that. Fair enough, I think. <laughs> I, think I think so, too. The Sheik's guys. old enough where he can just say whatever he wants. He yeah. don't care. He's got a free pass. Those man. guys didn't jump in enough. Yeah. The intelligent Jews. <laughs> I cut him out of our group picture. Did you? <laughs> I left, I left yeah. one eye just Good to make man. it really hurt. Good man. Yeah, but you did it subtly. You didn't mention in the caption that you cut him out, no. did you? I, what did I write? I forget already. I think intelligent you wrote... Jew. Yeah. Something to the effect of, I cut out the two jabronis that came with the <laughs> Iron Sheik. Yeah, look, look though. You can see his one eye. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, to make good. it really hurt. Good. And the picture is off-centered, off off-centered okay. because of that. Uh, so they're saying the Ultimate Warrior was walking outside a hotel in Arizona. Why Arizona? That's where he's from, I guess? Yeah. And uh, walking outside with his wife when he collapsed. That's uh, not yeah. good. That means a heart, a heart blew guy. out. His heart blew out. Oh. Yeah, he was he was at the Hall of Fame on Saturday. Mm -hmm. He was at WrestleMania on Sunday. 
And then he cut a for real in ring promo. Can we hear it on Monday? Were people oh, happy to see him in the ring? They were. People, and he put the duster on and everything. People are not happy with the wrestling talk on our show. No, they're not. I, I read not some at all. tweets. They uh, don't like it, huh? Too much. They tune right out, is what I hear. Oh, a little, little more than usual because out. of the WrestleMania thing mm -hmm. and and the return the the return of uh, the Iron Sheik. Right, right. We'll we'll go back to not giving a fuck soon. Relax. Yeah. But now we have to play this clip because yeah. the guy just died. He, he just, died a, a day later after yeah, cutting this. How long is this, though? Uh, two minutes. Jesus. Jesus. Enough for the two minutes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, he's not going to come out on Raw and do 15 seconds. Yeah. Well, couldn't we just cut up this? I mean, because we cut up it and then you'd say, well, what about the rest of it? And then I'd find the video anyway. Not when it comes to wrestling. Clubs. We just hear the beginning just yeah. to hear his voice. Yeah. yeah you just, just you'll talk mm. over it. It'll be fine. Yeah. You'll be all right. That's true. Oh. I actually loved this guy when Don't he was wrestling. Up. He was great. Warrior says. Yeah. yeah. Where's his makeup? As I thought about what I was going to say this evening, it's been hard for me. Could you pause? It looks a little pasty. Words. He looks like he's ready to die. He does. He doesn't. I mean, it's easy to good. say that now, but it, he doesn't look yeah. good. He's got horrible flop His sweat. Skin is pasty. He he did not run. And he didn't. Sweaty. You know oh, what I mean? Like he's hard catching a breath. Right. Yeah. yeah. I remember watching oh, this and thinking this guy's not guy. looking too good. Right. Oh boy. He uh. Right. He looks all right, but when when it's a video, you could tell that. Yeah. Yeah. There's some some issues there. Plus, once somebody died twelve hours later, you can look back at videos and go, oh, "Yeah, he looked great there." Right. Yeah, but look at the sweat. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of sweat. Yeah. He also has a big duster on over a three-piece suit. Why is he doing wow. that? Because the Ultimate Warrior wore a duster. Did he? What's a duster? It's like that jacket with the paint on it. I just remember wearing like the makeup and then the yeah crazy outfits with the big muscles. Oh yeah. yeah. Remember the trench coats were popular. The long fucking yeah. leather trench. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. A girl I dated years ago wanted a, tr a leather trench for Christmas. Really? Wait, yeah. she wanted one? Yeah. Huh. Uh, a lot of people say... Colorado schooled kids, too. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people say he couldn't breathe. Oh, yeah? I mean, yeah, he was definitely blown up. When he went into the up. ring, he couldn't breathe. Yeah, uh -huh. but he was always blown up. That was the thing. He could never breathe. I've never seen a promo where the Ultimate Warrior is not out of breath. Oh, yeah? Mm. He was 54 only. Yes. Yeah. Although that's like old age for wrestlers. Oh, man. Well, I think right. if you make it to 50 as a wrestler, that's old age. Reset the clock, huh? Oh. Yeah. How old is Iron Sheik? Iron Sheik 72. Is, oh, he made it over the hump. He's how old? 72. Is he really? Wow. Yeah. 43. Huh? He's only kidding. Oh, right. Oh. That's... Think of what Warrior does here. Poor Warrior. Oh. oh. What did he pull out of his pocket? His old mask. Nitroglycerin. <laughs> oh, God. Right. <laughs> He's got a Ultimate Warrior face paint mask ah. that they started selling. By the way, they just started oh, selling these. Oh, yeah, there he there goes. You go. Oh, there's the warrior. Put the mask on. Yeah. Oh. Well then, you shut up, Warrior, and let me do the talking. Hey, you shut up, Warrior, but he's he is but the he warrior. Is warrior. His real name is Warrior. Yes. He changed his name oh, legally, boy. Oh, boy. so that his first and last, it's just warrior. But why would he say you shut up, warrior? I'm going to do the talking because that's, that's the name. ultimate warrior. So he's the ultimate warrior. So he's telling warrior who's but just the guy. Who know that? that? I don't. I, I mean, I would, but I'm a little deep inside. Yeah, I think. You certainly yeah. are. But wouldn't, he, wouldn't it have been a better bit if he uses, you know, his, his birth name? name? No, his name what is, is it again James or something? Uh, Jim Helwig. So why he should have said because that's not his name. James, you shut up. I'm gonna talk now. Right, he, right. His name is not James, and he got offended when people called him James. He was Boy. referred to only as Warrior. All right, continue. He sounds like Edgar. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> No WWE talent becomes a legend on their own. Oh, boy. <laughs> Every man's heart one day guy. beats its final beat. Oh, his shit. His lungs breathe their final breath. Oh, shit. And if what that man did in his life makes the blood pulse through the body of others, Jeez. it makes them bleed deeper in something than larger than life. Then speech we yearn for Mr. T's speech. <laughs> Jesus. You don't think this is good? About his mother's bladder. By the storytellers, <clears throat> by the loyalty, by the memory, 
for those. He's eulogizing himself. Holy oh, shit. Yeah. He knew. And make the running the man did live forever. You. You should have gotten an you, ultimate stint. You. you <laughs> Jesus. You. You. <laughs> Help a motherfucker out. The legend makers of Ultimate Warrior. Oh. He's eulogizing himself wow. right there. Yeah. Kind of creepy. It's fucked up. In the back. In hindsight, I maybe you shouldn't have worn the fucking mask. Legends, some of them with warrior spirits, and you will do the same for them. You will decide if they lived with a passion and intensity. So much so that you will tell your stories and you will make the mask is them creeping up on his face. His eyes well. look a little crazy. I am Ultimate Warrior. You are the Ultimate Warrior fans. Oh. And the spirit oh, of he's Ultimate huffing and Warrior puffing. will Here. run forever. Jesus. A little eulogy for himself. Very nice. That's kind of creepy. Yeah, okay, is. we can cut that part out so it's less than two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> wow. For the Hall of Fame. You know who he's fighting with today? Who? The Undertaker. You know, get it? <laughs> get it? <laughs> Passed away. <Jesus. laughs> uh, poor so, guy. That's terrible. <laughs> that broke overnight. Ultimate Warrior, dead at 54. Yeah. That's just crazy. Yeah, they just filmed like a whole bunch of interviews with him over the weekend for new projects and stuff that they were going to do. And yeah. I'm sure they'll still put out a DVD and all that. Yeah, now. Why not? Vince is jerking off somewhere. I don't know about that. You know, the Warrior do? merch is going to sell really well now because of this. Just send those masks back to the printer to have two X's put over the eyes. <laughs> and then you put that on, and it's like X's on the eyes, okay. right? Like a cartoon. Unnecessary. Right? Who's unforgivable, what? do you think, in, in wrestling? Because like, he seems to Vince take anybody man. back. <laughs> He's terrible. Who's Vince. impossible to take a back? Prick on wheels. I guess Macho Man, because he died before they forgave him. But Ooh, yeah. I don't think there's. I don't think there's anybody. At the end of the day, there's money to be made. So, look at that. That was just like a day or two ago. I am That's Vince, Vince McMahon and the Ultimate Warrior embracing. Look at the Ultimate Warrior's face. It's a shade of purple I've never seen. Uh, wow. Yeah. Oh, nice God. set of choppers, though. That's horrible. Good full head of hair too. Yeah. Yeah. Poor fuck. Probably had rage issues. I bet he did. He had a nice family. Yeah. Mm hmm. Loved his daughters. A couple daughters, that. right? Young, like uh, probably preteen ish. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah. yeah. What? His daughters? Yeah. yeah push them up. Yeah. What do you <laughs> see? Some pictures. No, I couldn't be more. <laughs> I'm here to help. Uh, yeah. You see, oh, Jesus. You see Sean Penn's uh, daughter in the paper today? I've wow. seen his daughter. Oh my God. But she's naked in the paper today. What? Yeah. Punch that up. Stat. <laughs> Dylan Penn's Francis Penn. Sean's Penn, Sean Penn's daughter is naked, going into the business. Come on, stop. What? It's right in your paper. I don't have the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's right next to me. I was hoping to get the color picture from the fucking uh, paper intertubes. Mm. What is it, Post or Daily News? I, I think it's the post. post. Post is the dirtier of the two. Whoa! There you go. <laughs> Man. There you go. Right. Wow. Yeah, she's quite lovely. She's showing some skin. And that's with uh, who? Robin Wright Penn? Yep. Yeah. God, she looks like Scarlett Johansson in her face. A little butt. She's beautiful. Wow, is she pretty. I bet she's got a fiery red bush. <laughs> <laughs> it looks a little fiery. Does it? I love that fiery bush. I love a good fiery red bush. I don't know why. Yeah, let me see that. Because it's an anomaly, I think. I think because it's so rare. Yeah, you don't see them at all. Yeah. Even girls with red hair sometimes, it's like, ah, the bush is brown. They're, uh, what happened? That girl on Game of Thrones, the redhead, she's really hot. Oh, I bet that's a fiery, yeah, that's a fiery red, red vagina. Bush. Yeah. Yeah. If you shave your bush, if you have red hair, you're just you're 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 cheating, yeah. men, out of the wonderfulness of seeing that. You know the little pubis over, it's all freckled. Oh, nice freckled. That's fantastic. Yeah, I like that. I need that. Rollins. Uh, Getting really with, pink. Rollins getting with the times. He just posted his picture with the Ultimate Warrior. Oh, God. Rollins always has to be oh, right God. there. He's Mr. Right High on. Five on the subway. Yeah. He's right I'm on. I'm surprised it. he didn't wear his Ultimate Warrior t-shirt for a day or two. Yeah. It's, he's probably on order. <laughs> He'll probably come he in here with the mask yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the mask. What is his deal? He does this so he can talk to people on the subway? 
Says then, yeah, he likes no. He likes. To, he doesn't even need to talk to people. He just likes high fives on the subway. Right. So he he'll, he'll Ooh, whatever whatever's he'll, hot. In yeah, pop he was culture a part or of sports. Lin Sanity. Yeah, woo. He, he was, was part of Lin Sanity, even though he didn't watch one game. No, he had the Jets Tim Tebow T-shirt. <laughs> right. Before, way before Tebow was actually on the field. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just about getting onto a subway and getting a nice high five for himself. I see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that that's all there is. He has no loyalty to anything. No. Except for he's loyal to the high five. Yeah. That's he's a, it. He's a fan of the high five. He loves it. Good for him. That's cool. He didn't even watch wrestling. What has he got a photo with the Ultimate Warrior for? I don't know. Well, because it's hot right now. It's well, hot. And that's the other that's the other evilness about him. The only reason he even has the photo with the Ultimate Warrior mm-hmm. is because when we met him the first time, E Rock was not with us. Right. And so he wanted to be able to text Eric a photo with a wrestler that Eric oh, didn't have. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. Oh. Just evil. Yeah, Roland. All right, we got food. Why don't we take a break? Ooh. Uh, we got to talk about Reverend Al after the break. He's a fucking rat. Whole family rat. Got to talk about Run the, up to be a rat. The naked broad at McDonald's. God, I love that video. I just love the commentary. I love her giant fat tits. Can we uh, cut? Nah, we'll play the whole thing for the screw yeah, it. Might as well. And uh, there was something else. Oh, the old age home thing. Yeah. With the 85, 86-year-old lady that got a lap dance. Yep, her son's very angry. Extremely angry. Yeah. But he brought this upon himself. He certainly In did. a way. Yes, yes, I agree. We'll explain next. Mm-hmm. Opie and Anthony will be right back. You got me right where you want it now. On Sirius XM. If you'll be in the New York City area, no, no, you, oh, sure. If you'll be in New York City on April 17th and want to be in the audience for the live unmasked interview with Opie and Anthony by Caroline's on Broadway, oh, go to SiriusXM.com slash unmask or SiriusXM.com slash the Opie and Anthony channel by April 10th to enter to win tickets. The, oh, it's with Ron Bennington. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be there with Slubbo. Please bring me presents. I knew I was a little kid. I used to make believe, hey, the Billy Joel show. And now, here it is for a limited time. Get 24-7 Billy Joel. The Billy Joel Channel. Five songs. Rare versions. I saw lights go out on Broadway. Stories from Billy. All of the characters in that song actually were real people. John the Bar's friend of mine gets me my drinks for free. True. And music from his entire 50-year career. The Billy Joel Channel. Channel 4. And the Sirius XM app. Only on Sirius XM. Did you know that 51% of our driving jobs are local? This is Craig Harper, Chief Operations Officer at J.B. Hunt. Business is growing, and we're offering even more local and regional driving jobs with daily, weekly, or biweekly home time. Whether your driving career takes you to our dedicated group or delivering containers as an intermodal driver, one thing's for sure, we'll get you home. Call us today at 1-877-805-2345. That's 1-877-805-2345. Find your fit at J.B. Hunt. Material 4X work gloves from Mechanics Wear are just tough. They're four times as tough. Material 4X gloves last four times longer than other work gloves and outperform leather hands down. Whether you're on the job site or in the garage, don't just protect your hands. Enhance them with Material 4X work gloves. Work faster, safer, and cleaner with Mechanics Wear, the tool that fits like a glove. Available at Lowe's, AutoZone, Advance Auto, O'Reilly Auto Parts, and Napa Auto Parts stores nationwide or online at Mechanics.com. Did you know that a Nobel Prize was awarded for a medical discovery that improves your sexual performance? It's true. Nitric oxide was discovered to improve your sexual performance. It also miraculously improves your heart health, blood pressure, energy levels, your immune system, diabetes, arthritis pain, even your memory and mood. That's why millions of men and women have begun taking nitric oxide boosters as daily supplements. And right now, we're releasing free bottles of peak nitric oxide so you can discover the benefits for yourself. Be one of the first 100 callers at 1-800-939-5. Five seven six eight. After extensive research and clinical tests, nitric oxide has been described as the miracle molecule of the 21st century. Taken once a day, you'll not only begin feeling years younger, but we'll also send you free test strips to prove it works. Discover how to get your free bottle of peak nitric oxide and free test strips at 1-800-939-5768. Be one of the first 100 callers. 1-800-939-5768. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. If you're overwhelmed by debt and thinking about going to a credit counseling company for help, think again. 
because the majority of those companies actually work for the credit card companies and they make the credit card companies a lot of money from people just like you but there's another way out of debt and it's not bankruptcy a way to reduce your debts and save you thousands of dollars even better you can find out how for free by calling 1-800-508-2757 at freedom debt relief we're not a credit counseling organization we're not a debt consolidation company we offer a unique alternative to save you the most money possible to resolve your debt in the shortest amount of time if you're thinking about a credit counselor Ask yourself this, are they working for you or the credit card companies? Reduce your debts and save thousands of dollars by learning the secrets to settling your debt. For free information, call 1-800-508-2757. That's 1-800-508-2757. 1-800-508-2757. When it comes to getting the legal help you need, LegalZoom provides a great solution that works with your busy schedule. If you're starting a business, forming an LLC, or getting a trademark, will, or living trust, LegalZoom will provide the personal attention you need and help you take care of all the details. Call or visit LegalZoom.com today. And don't forget to enter SiriusXM in the referral box at checkout for a special discount. LegalZoom provides legal help through independent attorneys and self-help services, but it's not a law firm. Sometimes we talk about videos. You can see them, too. Cease your bitching and like us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash ONA Show. The Frozen Four is on Sirius XM. Tomorrow, beginning at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, it's the NCAA Men's Hockey Semifinals. Here, Boston College versus Union. Gilmore now to Hayes. He scores! Watch out, Scott! Followed at 8.15 by Minnesota versus North Dakota. Ambles with a steal. He scores! Live from the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia, Sirius XM College Sports Nation, Channel 91. So, FamousSmoke.com wants to give me free money back when I order cigars. No thanks. Who said no sane cigar lover ever? Hey guys, it's Tommy Z-Man. And if you're like me, not only do you love your cigars, you love getting free cash back even more. And it just so happens that the lunatics over at Famous are celebrating their 75th anniversary in the cigar business by giving you 10% cash back on every order over 75 bucks. Now that's on top of the already wickedly discounted prices we have every day on cigars, humidors, and accessories. Some restrictions do apply. Famous offers a monster selection of the big name premium brands you love at prices that make it easy on the wallet. Just pick the cigars you like, add in the other goodies you need, and your cigars will be on their way to you. Lightning fast with your free 10% cash back. Just click the activate button at FamousSmoke.com. That's FamousSmoke.com. If you're in the market for a fantastic franchising opportunity, one that is redefining the earnings potential of one of the longest standing business models out there, Retro Fitness Gyms are great investment opportunities. Do I need to work inside my gym? I already have a job, and I'm really looking for an investment opportunity. Retro Fitness is a manager-driven model. They'll train your full-time manager to run your club, and they provide all the proven systems and tools designed to keep you in the driver's seat. I'm looking for something turnkey. From real estate site search, construction, and project management, to club operations, training, and marketing, Retro Fitness has been value engineered to help you jump from startup to profitability as quickly as possible. I'm looking for something that's hot right now. There's a huge demand for high-value, low-cost gym memberships, and Retro Fitness has nearly 100 gyms open already. With a proven brand like Retro Fitness, you're poised to meet the burgeoning demand immediately. Let's go, Retro! Get started building your own gym empire today with a Retro Fitness franchise. Details at RetroFranchising.com or call 201-867-5309. This is the story of Barry and Larry. Both of them signed up for two distinct dating sites on Monday. Barry joined your typical dating site, complete with a lengthy profile that he finished two days later. Aww. While Larry signed up for whatsyourprice.com, created his brief profile, and shortly thereafter was being hit on by tons of beautiful women for dates. Oh, yeah. Now, let's fast forward to Friday night and see what's happening with Barry. <laughs> Looks like Barry has dinner plans for one. Aww. While Larry's on his first What's Your Price date. It's later. Let's check back with Barry. 
While Larry's evening, courtesy of What'sYourPrice.com, is just getting started. This is my place. While Barry's evening has ended. <sighs> Thanks to What'sYourPrice.com, Larry is partaking in other activities. <laughs> Without What'sYourPrice.com, none of Larry's night would have been possible. Start dating today and join for free at What'sYourPrice.com. Use code RADIO, then receive twice the amount of dates. What'sYourPrice.com. From helping florists manage their first payroll to checking sales projections for logistics companies to showing garages how much they've been paid to pursuing leads for multinationals Sage Software helps businesses manage whether it's accounting, payroll, payments, ERP or CRM Sage gives you the control to look forward with confidence visit sageconfidence.com Who's that old guy over there? Uncle Paul, Uncle Paul, with the creepy old guy stare. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Paul, now he's coming over here, slowly limping down the hall. It's too late now, cause here comes Uncle Paul. Let me show you how to make a big boy love you. In today's episode, Uncle Paul remembers babysitting a young Opie. You remember, I used to babysit you. I'd poke my you-know-what through the crib and you'd grab it. He was a little blue-eyed Gregorio. He was the cutest one. Yeah, I had, I told you, they, him and his brother would play the game. The, the peeny flip. I said, go ahead, flip your peeny. Um, 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 um. Sure. And his mother would take pictures. Take pictures when he was in a tub. Yeah, and then the court said she had to leave, so she went with a Jewish fella. I kiss his shoulders real tender. And I say, this is what happens. The man puts it in. I'm going to fertilize you. I'm going to show you how we start life. Push back a little bit. Come on, eat your ice cream and push back. Show Uncle Paul you want a baby. Going to make you going to make you pregnant. Who's that old guy over there? Uncle Paul. Uncle Paul with the creepy old guy stare. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Paul, now he's coming over here, slowly limping down the hall. It's too late now, cause here comes Uncle Paul. The Opie and Anthony Show is back on Sirius XM. This is Slash. Oh, it is Slash. Uh, the, uh, I hold on. Yes. I thought so. Okay. Very cool. Of course, there's no words for it. Kind of knows how to play a guitar. The, music, the words. Look back. Not in this version. I hate these fucking rejoiners. <laughs> what? <laughs> regular radio shit. These rejoiners with no words in them. All right. It's all right. Yeah, I like you get... both. I think the song doesn't have any words. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. It's a I hold on. on. Uh, Great does. song. What do I know? Sometimes I play words, sometimes I don't. Let's say oh, hi to you. Sonny in Boston. Oh, uh, I love that show. Oh, wait. I just wanted to let you know, did you know that that Bob Saget, he's a fucking real dirty motherfucker. <laughs> Slots up my under me in the car, Sonny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're learning that today. It's a good angle to take with Bob Saget. Yeah. Yeah. The Chronicles. Yeah, I didn't know if you knew you, you guys do that or not. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, hey, but listen, guys. Oh. Yep. Again, I'm punching out. Yeah. That's now that's a punch out, see? That was good. That's when he, uh, the guy says I'm punching out and it makes sense. Right. Cuz you, you your craft is going in, your plane is crashing. Right. He understood it. You got to punch out before we're searching for the ping. Right, the pings. If she was taking care of you, Sonny, would you need Leon? Would you need a man? <laughs> no, that's new in the mother's pleading with him. He's standing out in front of the bank talking to his mother. There's 500 cops and there's hostages in the bank. And his mother goes, run. 
Bob, where am I going to run to? <laughs> run. I love that. That's such a mother uh, yeah. desperation yes. moment. What a great run. movie, too. i got to put that on my list. Yeah. yeah, man. I haven't seen that one in a while. That's a damn good movie. Yep. Bob Saget is coming in. Yes. His book is called Dirty Daddy. He's finally, he's finally letting the world know, Anthony, that oh, yeah. not only is he a family man, he's also, also a filthy comedian. I did not know this. So we're going to take that angle today with yeah. our friend. These are the uncorrected proofs, by the way. What do you mean? I am. These are not the actual books. They, they are, oh, but I, I mean... I was say, it's kind of a, you know, the paper is a little cheap. Yeah. Uncorrected and, proof uh, says it right on. Not yeah. for, oh. right on the cover. Not for sale. Cool. Which means I'm going to get Bob to sign it, and I sell it. That's Uncorrected. right. Corrected. It could be worth something. A picture with Rodney Dangerfield in here. Yeah. I like a good uncorrected Ooh. proof. A picture with uh, Don Rickles. Oh, yeah. He's, he knows... He's got a picture of Louis, too. He knows some guys, huh? Yeah. Let's yeah. see. Picture with oh, picture with Stamos. Oh, is is I think Re can... Reverend Al trying to fucking backpedal? Is he? Is he trying to save? Well, when you've seen every bill and now, oh, shut up! Oh, is he? Why uh, is he on? T who likes this guy? MSNBC, especially for TV. It. Yeah, he might like what he does for the community or whatever, but he's not likable as far as watching him on TV. And the way he's they take able, him oh, sorry, the way they take him seriously yeah. and listen to him, ugh. that he's able to get an audience with the president of the United States is an embarrassment. It's uh, an embarrassment. Mr. Kumia, yes, I sir. completely agree with you. Thank you, Mr. Hughes. I absolutely agree with yes. you on that. Yes. Yes. I think that's pretty pathetic. It is embarrassing. Do you think George W would have given him the time of day? Even uh, William Jefferson Clinton, I don't believe, gave Reverend Al the time of day. Mm -hmm. But, of course, Barack Hussein what? Obama what are, gives him. What are they the saying uh, today with the Reverend Al? Reverend Al's saying what? He's a what? fucking rat. But Reverend Al says he's a cat. Oh, wow, that's clever. Yeah. He's not a rat, he's a cat. Black uh, leaders like to rhyme. That's yeah. what I've noticed. So, I'm not a rat, I'm a cat. And then uh, mm. the, the post says... You can figure... Oh, you know, sorry. the post has that quote. I'm not a rat. I'm a cat. And then right under it, it says big uh, pussy. Big uh, pussy. You know what that means? Yes. You know what a pussy means, right? Yeah. And also yeah. big pussy who is a rat for the Sopranos. Oh, mm -hmm. you think they well, might have been going for that? Yeah. That, well, that's why they felt like they could get ah, away with it. Because oh. they're basically calling him a pussy. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a bad word in our, our new society. Al all full of himself over mob takedown. And but it all is also big pussy is like cat. That ties in beautifully. Yeah, of course. They were able to say. Yeah, but they're saying he's pussy. a pussy. Yeah. yeah. And they're right. What, what's, what is he saying, though, Ant, on this? He's saying uh, the story was blown way out of proportion. Mm -hmm. he, um, he was being threatened by somebody in the mob and decided to uh, work with the FBI to to get this guy off his back. But uh, other people in the FBI and whatnot are saying that, no, he was up on some type of uh, drug charge. Really? And in order to get out of that, he cooperated with the FBI and uh, used a recording device, and, and uh, that's the reason he was a, a rat. So what the real story is at this point, who the fuck knows? Mm. But I'm willing to believe that Reverend Al would do anything to keep his stature in the community yeah. and get himself out of a jam. The The full quote was, I was not and am not a rat because I wasn't with the rats, he said. I'm a cat. I chase rats. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. I think he was... Uh, I think he was in a little Dutch and uh, decided to work with the FBI. Yep. Because you don't just work with the... If you're being threatened by someone in the mob, you go through the proper channels to, I guess, resolve that problem. You don't start working with the FBI to... No one starts working with the FBI unless they're jammed up unless, and, and, and need yeah. to get out of trouble. Unless the FBI has something. Right. Like Absolutely. No one just decides to work, decides out of the fucking blue <laughs> <laughs> to work with the FBI. De Blasio, the mayor of New York City. De Blasio, that's what I call him. He's blousy. It's kind of in there. Nah. A little bit. No? He, 
He says, D doesn't change the relationship one bit. I'm very proud to be his friend. You're an idiot. I think he has done a lot of good for the city of New York what? and this country. Oh, God, I hate de Blasio. <laughs> that the worst. Fucking <laughs> douchebag de Blasio. His, his approval ratings are horrendous already. He's talking up Reverend Al. There is nothing a black person can do that de Blasio won't just fucking fawn over and adore and adore. Oh, God, you don't have to like every black person. Reverend Al has been a scumbag in He's his life. He's a scumbag. Fuck. Well, de Blasio continues. What's obvious from what he said this very morning is that he was asked by the FBI to support their efforts, and he agreed to help. And that's oh, what yeah. a citizen should do, de Blasio what? said. <laughs> His picture. That's crazy. Hold on, let's that's see. a stretch. I'm going to my conviction. I'm good. Now, now I've been on They're all chuckling with a bit of me. Remember that picture, Al? Thank you, Reverend. Happy birthday. When you were accusing police officers of rape, Remember that when you were fucking uh, uh, inciting riots against Jews? Remember that? He was just chasing rats. Eh? Oh, Christ He's almighty. He's a cat chasing the rats. That guy's a fucking rat. Uh, let's see. Uh, support. He agreed to help, and that's what citizens should do, de Blasio said. The Smoking Gun reported, as other news organizations have in the past, that Sharpton became an informant after he was caught on a video nodding along as a drug kingpin discussed cocaine deals. Yep. Mm. His cooperation allegedly prevented the possibility that he would be charged. Exactly. So. What a piece of shit. Uh, you got uh, this uh, Bastone. He's the author of the smoking gun story. But Stone says the idea that he made the recordings because this guy supposedly threatened him, it's just totally crazy. Exactly. He may not like uh he may not like considering himself a, a confidential informant, but that's what he was. He wasn't doing this out of the goodness of his heart. Of course not. Exactly. Joe Pistone, that's the guy from um, Donnie Brasco. Donnie William Brasco. Pistone. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. From the smoking gun. Oh. Mm. Ah, of course. Sharpton cast a new attention on his work with the feds as anyone. Um, he's outraged. What? Uh, Sharpton cast a new attention on his oh. work with the feds as littering and littering and <laughs> littering and <laughs> racism. Racist. Ah. He said that while blacks who helped law enforcement are called snitches. We make heroes in other communities who fight crime. Is that it? First of all, black people never snitch. It's one of the biggest problems in the community. Cops come in. They say, do you uh, see anything? I and they know. go, no. Nope. Uh, no, they don't I say, don't I don't know. I don't know. I, I, don't know. I, I, I ain't seen nothing. I don't nothing. Know. I don't know. I saw a video the other day of two um, women, bra or actually four women, brawling in a fast food place it's great you know world stars fucking these guys are just yelling world star world star nice. world star and the guy looks at a pocketbook on the floor mm -hmm. and he just says who bag <laughs> who bag who <laughs> bag like he, he he wanted to convey whose bag is this right. that's what he wanted to convey whose bag is this whose bag uh, who belongs to this bag and he just goes who bag who bag now does that? I don't know why that's accepted. Does that infuriate you or make yes. you laugh? It makes it just makes me laugh. It does. Who make bag me laugh. makes me laugh. It does make me laugh a lot. Tell who kid we got his new name. Who bag? <laughs> who bag? Who bag? <laughs> who bag? <laughs> hey, who bag? <laughs> oh, that's where the goo comes from. <laughs> who bag? Who bag? <laughs> who bag? That's what, that's that's where where the moisture uses, comes yeah, from. That's what yeah, that's what he uses to take care of the moisture. <laughs> Greatest Instagram Instagram account ever. Who kid like from around that. the world? I don't know why that's accepted as some oh, form of English. I don't want to lose this guy. A lot of the times this shit is bullshit. But let's uh -huh. see. Let's just. See today, All Gary right. in Georgia. Go ahead, Gary. Uh, hey there, fellas. Uh, anyways, I got a neighbor down here. She's kind of a uh, kind of a scumbag, but uh -huh. anyway, she's got some uh, info. She says coming out about Al Sharpton this week, and uh, the things she has told me before. Uh, check out where she was with the uh, James Brown camp here uh -huh. in uh, Georgia. And she, of course, to, to go backwards in the story, she claims that there was a rape involved with James Brown and uh, things like that. You can check some of her story out on the internet. Yeah. But anyways, the story she says she has coming out is a, a certain type of videotape oh. that features Mr. Sharpton as a star. Oh. And uh, Sex tape? it's the same type of... What's that? I'm sorry? Sex tape? Uh, 
that's what she said. Yeah, that's what she's saying. Like I said, you know, a lot of a lot of times this is BS. That's but, crap. Yeah. But we'll see. Now she showed another neighbor of mine. My other neighbor said that's true. Now I didn't see the tape, so I can't. Why stop. wouldn't she show you the yeah, tape? Exactly. Right. Oh, well, All this vagueness she always. Heading out I, of town, so. I heard uh, someone had the tape, but they fell out of the closet and threw up on it, and then the tape broke. Right. That's what I heard. Tucker Max. <laughs> yes, exactly. Ugh. Shut up. Oh, well, yeah. I will, I will never get over that never. that liar. Never. In my humble opinion, pants, that liar. Pants on fire. Ugh. <laughs> Douche. And yeah. book publishers bought into his uh, bullshit. Please. Ugh. Yeah, they don't care. No. Book publishers don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. All right, Gary, we'll see. We'll see if you're right. I don't know. Yeah. When is this yeah, all they, happening? Yeah. Watch, it's vague. Well, it's going to be Friday. No, no, no. Then Friday comes. Exactly. Well, you know. Uh, exactly. She had to get yeah. on a plane for business, and so now it's going to be Monday. <laughs> Yellow. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't doubt that that's the fact uh, at all. Cause the fact, Jack. He yeah. kind of comes across that way. But she says the other star in the film is no, none other than James Brown's former, you know, his wife at the time. And this oh, the so Reverend Al uh, is supposedly banging James Brown's wife? In this video? Was. Yeah. This was back in the 80s. So why would this be any kind of a um, scandal mm. for, for uh, Reverend Al? Was he married at the time? I don't know. Who cares? I just lost interest. I just immediately lost interest. I, I got to yeah. tell you, I think it's all bullshit. Yeah. yeah. I it could be, and I feel like a dickhead. No, that's all right. Well, yeah. you should. You oh, could be a hero in a few days if this actually pops. Yeah. Hey, if it is, uh, I can I can put you, if it's true, I can put you in touch with the lady who uh, who is. How uh, about you put us in touch with her now? Yeah, what? wait, wait for. Put us in touch with her now. This is what I'm I'm, I'm talking about. Everything's always vague and what might I'll happen in the future sometime. Sometime. In the, in the give it, hold on, distance. he said he'll give us a number. You'll give us a number off air. Yeah, I'll give it to you. She, she gave it to me. I, in fact, I told her, I was like, look, I know these guys who would probably love You don't me. know me. Well, you don't, I don't know, know me. these guys, but I don't know of touch these me. Guys who would like you know don't a, touch like me. You know a version of me. I know of you. Oh, I'm okay. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. A version. Can you, yes. yeah, hold it's on, a version of me. It's a cat. You think like I act like this all day long? It'd oh, be exhausting. It's totally exhausting to be like this all day. <laughs> right. Holy shit. All I want to do when I get home is shut up. Right. I don't fucking. <laughs> I really don't even want to fucking talk. Yeah. <laughs> People around me get frustrated. The rest of the day, I don't talk. Yeah. Imagine you sit down on the couch at home to relax, and you just start talking about the news and making jokes about people no. and fucking. Oh, God. That would be exhausting. You're right. Why? Exactly. Why waste one of these amazing one-liners on on a few people? When, exactly. <laughs> when I, I could know. save it for the tens of thousands that listen to us. Oh, Bob Saget is on, on Fox, Fox and Friends, and it says True Colors. I guess he's going to talk about how his True Colors right. are really that he's a dirty guy. You sure? And not uh, no, the clean that. image that uh, he portrayed. In full house. Gary, hold on a minute, all right? We're going to get that number from you. Yeah, let me talk to that little tweak, Sam. All right, thank, thank you. Because we... Oh, it's uh, Bob Saget next after the commercial. Ah, oh, they do uh -huh. that dramatic walking onto the set. We're going to have to And then they go to commercials. To see if they mention the fact that, hey, you know what? He's not as clean cut as... <laughs> it's about time he tells the world this. Uh-huh. Because we've known for many years. Oh, have we ever. But we kept his secret. We did. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing you can't do with him, I've learned over the years, is make fun of those Olsen twins. He uh, he knows. Try it today. They're very powerful, those Olsen twins. Try it today. And what's the other Olsen? The one that ain't a twin. Jimmy? Jimmy Olsen. Jimmy Olsen. Right. <laughs> Cub reporter. Photographer. <laughs> Copy boy. What, uh, what's that other Olsen? Elizabeth? Elizabeth. Mo What's what some of them other Olsons we got? Elizabeth Olsen. <laughs> What's she <Okay>. doing? <laughs> Mrs. Olsen with the coffee. <clears throat> she's a big actress right now. No, she's not. Oh, yeah. What is she in? Is she reasonable? Is she in uh, Godzilla? I believe she... Uh, is that the one that uh, yeah, she's in Roland Godzilla. was pitching? Captain America. Roland's pitching her? Captain America? Yeah. What is has she been in that sexy? we know of? That's her. Or is she a midget like her, her sister's? Fucking midget. Little no, alien midget. No, she's more like uh, she going out normal with? size. Who's that guy? She, oh, I don't know if they're dating. Well, she's holding her pretty tight. He sure Wouldn't is. You? I would. And he's got a little penis action happening in the front of his Shit. trousers. How uh, so? Why'd you notice? That's where you, you got to look. You got to take a look. <laughs> I was just looking at her. You just got to take a look. Um, <laughs> what movies was she in that we know of? 
Um, not the ones that are coming out. Well, I mean, the new Captain America is out. Yeah, but that that's that's a movie no one's really checking out yet. Oh. <laughs> it's the biggest what? movie in the country. Oh, stop Who's it. Who's playing right. Captain America? every movie. The right. same guy is. Yeah. So frozen. If I haven't seen the movie, it's not a big movie yet. Right. Um, I'm still on Frozen. <laughs> let it go. 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 Yeah, I don't know what you would know her from. But uh, she's going to be in the next Avengers movie and the next and the Godzilla movie, and she was just an old boy. That movie didn't do very well. Though. Oh, man. So, was she the daughter? I think so. That old boy movie's sick. The Jap one was better. What I you like that about? version. You saw the American version? I No, I saw the uh, Japanese version. So why How do you know which one you like better? better? Because the American version, they have to fucking... Oh, I know why. They have to make it not as shocking and crazy that the guy was fucking his daughter. I know why you didn't like it. Why? why? Isn't Spike Lee involved in it? Is he involved in it? Then I, think I don't like involved it. In it. Then oh, I don't. Old boy didn't do well, huh? Yeah. No, it didn't. He's the director. I knew it. Uh, Spike, Spike Lee directed that? Directed Spike Lee. Good. Goodbye. You're He's not... a good director. Goodbye. He is. Oh, I love that fucking floating in midair. Yeah, I was about to say. I like that as well. Oh, ooh, that's, that's so a, cool. He doesn't. He doesn't Spike stop. Thing. He's trying to get some, like, the Spielberg fucking push shot or the Hitchcock shot or, or fucking uh, uh, the Scorsese fucking shot where you look at it and go, oh, that's... Right. That's that director. It's, he try. It's it's ham handed. You know, like His Malcolm X floating thing. I don't like floating people. I don't think that he did it for that reason because he started he doing that. I think I want to say in uh, either she's got to have it or do the right. Or, yeah, or, uh, it was do the right school thing. days. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, way back, yeah. like when he was still Jungle know. Fever. He does it. Yeah, but I mean, he's been doing that. I think his entire career. So yeah. I think it's just the way he That's does walking. Stupid. I don't like it. Why not just walk? I don't know. Just fucking have the people walking. He puts them on a little platform and rolls them. There's something Silly. weird about it, but I do like it. I don't I, like it at all. It's very distracting. I think it symbolizes the way the world is going on around these characters. I even bet it's that, racism. But what? I bet he's doing it as some form of showing people how racist That's white true. He white is. people float. Yes. The white privilege makes them float. <laughs> <laughs> uh, crap. <laughs> So Bob Saget's coming in. Yeah. We're I waiting for the start of his interview on Fox and Friends. Yeah, they they walked him in. I don't know what happened. Maybe they were miking him up. It's kind of cool we get the same people as some of these big TV shows, huh? We got a little preview of what the uh, interview is going to be like. All right. I, yeah. I do like that you do your guest research on the air. Yeah. 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 Isn't it great? It's like, oh, what what are they saying? Let's <laughs> let's listen in. We, we don't we get can... all we don't get all their guests, unfortunately. No, we don't. No. Who don't we get? We got Bob Saget coming. Who in. should we have gotten? Paul That's... Stanley. Yeah, Paul he's, Stanley. He's going to come in later, but. Uh... Hey! I, I tried to get him for something else. He's no. Oh, he's not you, coming you in have for supported you? Kiss and Paul Stanley forever, even when we were giving yeah. him a good trashing. And then in the end, they don't even know who you are. Friends, Romans, and countrymen, lend me a right ear. <laughs> See, because he doesn't have a right ear. <laughs> Paul That's Stanley awesome. should be doing something with Jim Norton. Period. Oh, period. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. he's going to be on Ron and Fez, though, right? I get why he's doing that, because, you know, Ron's a great interviewer. So I, I certainly get that. And he's doing OutQ. Those are the two things he's doing on the platform. OutQ. Oh. Well, that's a little, uh, <clears throat> well, no, it's totally fucking typical. He may have a lot of gay fans. I mean, you know. I think he does? Yeah, I mean, it's it's smart to promote there, but. Is he, he gay? He might be doing something with Larry Flick, and Larry Flick used to do, I think he used Billboard. to run billboards. He so did. He's got a lot of... Yeah, yeah, they probably know each other, and it's a smart place. He's got Is a lot he of gay? I, I don't you think, think he's, he's gay. I don't know. I mean, there's been the rumors, but who knows? I bet he got a lot of fucking pussy. Yeah, he's married to a hot chick. Sick. Yeah. Mm. Except maybe a piece of pussy. <laughs> you <need> 500. <laughs> Uh, that's great. I was talking about this the second I fucking saw these drones, uh, the, the the things that they could be used for. And now they're saying that there was a terror plot that was thwarted. Yeah, where was that? Some guy wanted to fly a drone lo loaded with right. explosives uh, into a school and a government building. And they uh, arrested him. I don't know how much explosives you could get on yeah. there. I mean... It would do some damage, though. It would do some damage depending on what type of explosives. But I think the, the higher tech... The explosive is, whereas you need a little bit to make a big explosion. Right. It's harder to get unnoticed. Like, you can make explosives, but the damage that they'll do isn't right. as, as, isn't as good as, as something that would put the feds onto you, you know? Well, that's... You know, like, a, where are you going to get a brick of C4 into this country to just put on a drone and fly it into a building? 
They're going to fuck up your drones. Yeah, but... Uh, I think uh, this is going to be your last summer of the drone I before some crazy laws are enacted. They're using them for a lot of things. There was right. one over, um, I think, I think a concert that was going on recently. Some guy posted a picture of a drone flying <laughs> over the crowd, right. and they were taking pictures. A lot of... Um, a lot of news stories, like uh, accidents that happen and stuff. Uh, uh, people just launch these things and start taking pictures and sell them to the media. So I don't know if you're going to be able to stop it. They might regulate it. They're going to have to try to control it a little bit. Yeah. How'd this guy get caught? Who tells people they're doing something with a drone? It's just I know. you. Well, he, I think he had an FBI guy that um, he was confiding in to try to get the explosives. Oh, oh, That's where they usually get these guys. It's it's not when they try to do something. It's when they try to get the fucking shit. I can't tell a lie. <laughs> so what do you guys think? I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> you want my answer? Yeah, yeah we want your answer. Uh, uh, you play? C. 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 I, I, you? You're correct. Oh my God. goodness! Yeah. You're it's always C. There are 3,800 cherry trees on the National Mall. Oh, oh, Saga guessed correctly. But C is always the answer. Let's go. We could talk to him about that guess. Go out and look for cherry trees. How did you know, Bob? Be watching tomorrow. The trees are beautiful down there, aren't they, Maria? She's pretty sexy. Who is that blonde yeah, in the middle? Really beautiful. You can see the title. Who's with Elizabeth? Oh, that, that is her. She's good, good man. Fuck. And all of the cherry blossom yeah. trees you would do that? are yeah. starting to nice. bloom. They haven't reached peak bloom yet, and that's because we've had such a popular. Gives a shit. Well, no, it's a big deal every, every year in Washington. When the cherry trees bloom, it means they've bloomed. <laughs> you hear that story about George Washington? Yes, he chopped it down. Yeah, and his father's like, who chopped down the cherry tree? Oh. He's like, I did it. His father's like, I know. He's the only one here holding an axe. <laughs> I cannot tell a lie. My slave did it. With him. Oh, Family Man, it says right there. Yay! Saga played lovable father on TV series. Look, he's dancing with the fucking meth head. He's good. Well, and now the dad is dishing all. Now the dad is dishing. Uh oh, here it comes. Uh, dad is dishing all the dirt from behind the scenes here on that comes. hit show and more. We're talking with Bob Saget. He's got a new memoir, Dirty Daddy. He joins us now. <laughs> you expose yourself in this memoir. Well, in a, in a robe, but I. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's it's, it's a, a story about. Uh, Actually, it's about comedy and death and how they intersect, because we had a lot of what? that in my family's life. And with so your mom just it. passed away, Sam. So right? We lost my mom just a couple months ago. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Kept me from being too funny when I was not. He's on the show. And made Can't me want to be funnier. We at least know he's not listening right now. Funny. So it's about family and comedians like Rodney Dangerfield and Richard Pryor that were Jim influences Norton. in my life. Oh, Did your mom get life. to oh. see most of what was in the book? My mom read to about 111 okay. and then stopped before I got to a chapter that was called Things I Shouldn't Have Done. <laughs> That's good. And, and relationships I'd rather not talk sure. about. See, the thing about Bob Saget is uh, the world knows you oh, as no. a <laughs> <There it comes. laughs> dad on Full House. But in real life, Bob, you have got a sick sense of humor. I have a sense of humor, and it's how you got through stuff. Like we just do strange there stuff. There it is, not, people. Not dirty or anything. There like, it is. Like the we whole world the knows now. That's our point. Of vegetables and just take it and put it on your plate and go, that's all you get. And just stare at you. Well, I would call it a creepy father. <laughs> that's great. And scary. Just, that's all we need. Uh, that's I knew it would happen. Uh, of course. The whole world knows now is our point. Of yeah. course they do. We started talking to Bob Saget probably... Ten Cl years ago? Probably close to ten years ago. Fuck yeah. And he was talking about that on our show. Yeah. That's right. And it was like, oh. <laughs> And it was right when his stand-up started becoming like uh, something people started knowing and yeah. being like, wow. <laughs> yeah. You know, you go see this guy, you expect one thing, you get uh, another thing. Right. It's true. Ten years later, it's like, oh, Christ. <laughs> that was another oh, bridge I had to repair to get it done. Oh. Yeah, I remember that. What we, we had blown him off on the phone or something. He's on hold. <gasps> And then I saw him at Caroline's. First time I ever met Bob, I said, hey, man, how you doing? He goes, oh, hey, I like your stuff. And we started chatting in Caroline's. Mm. And uh, I go, uh, I go, yeah, oh. we wanted you on the Opie and Anthony show. And he goes, yeah, man, those guys, I'm not doing that show. Those guys blew me off, whatever, <gasps> on the phone. I'm like, no, oh, and no. I explained to him what happened. Mm -hmm. And he goes, oh, all right, okay. And there was a whole thing, and then he came yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, but we really did blow him off. <laughs> I don't remember what happened that day, honestly. It might have been there. <laughs> but good save. Yes. No, we like Bob Saget. It, we just find it funny that that whole it's this this thing, right? Family man, but he's really a filthy comedian when he's not doing those uh, right.
family friendly <laughs> TV shows. Exactly. Like I made a good point with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah the Aristocrats it. came out in 2005. Right. Wow. And Bob Saget was in it making dirty jokes. Yeah. Right. And he's done specials. Yeah. 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 So at that point, There's the world, no real the world realized, oh my God, this guy's actually really dirty. He's a pig. Cats out of the bag. And nine years later, he's he's telling people. Dirty Daddy. Hey, dirty Daddy. There he is. Daddy. Dirty Daddy. Show, but he's dirty. He's coming up in about an hour. Yeah. We got Danny Trejo coming in soon. What time is he here? 8.30. Oh. So can we watch the McDonald's video? Yeah, sure. Mm. I love it for the commentary. I like it for a big fat. <laughs> so you got a, a naked, well, she's topless and she's got... She's got thong on. A thong on. She's a mess. She's, she's sloppy. She's very sloppy with big, bigums. Yeah. She got some big ones. Definitely got some uh, cans on her. And what's the story? She was just mad at McDonald's. Did she used to work there? Yeah, they haven't really said what the story is. I guess she's a lunatic. Right. I think this is drug fueled. Yeah. Sure. Because it's very irrational what she does. And uh, now you got some employees finally looking at the security footage the next day. And they're kind of commenting on they're it. They're commenting on it. And uh, she's just losing her mind. Can you hear it? Oh yeah. Oh, it's fine. And, uh, and I just want to point out, there's a guy that keeps going to the counter, and I'm wondering if he's just eating at McDonald's and trying to, like, get napkins or something. He should have gone on his knees and just shoved his face right in there. Oh. In where? Right in her ass. <laughs> no, he doesn't do that. It would be funny, though. But he can't be bothered by the fact this this no. topless woman is, is destroying the place. If you're hungry. Was really? he walking up to look at her tits, you think? I, I don't know. You tell me who it is. Or maybe it's a manager. I don't know who this guy is. But he, he comes up customer. a couple times, and he's not phased by the whole thing that's going on. And down. where's the staff? Uh, there's the two guys in the point. background. But they don't do anything? Because the, the commentators say, oh, that's... I forgot the I name. I guess they didn't was... want to touch her, maybe. Running away from titty woman. They're scared. Yeah. Let's play a little of this. It is very viral, this thing. Oh, yeah. She's screaming in the background. <laughs> this bitch is crazy. Oh, my goodness. She, <laughs> she's destroying our store, bro. <laughs> this is Look at them titties, though. Oh, my goodness. Look at them titties, though. She is just <laughs> slamming yep. things. Look at Levante. <laughs> Levante. What? Betty. And this guy walks up to the counter. He's trying to get a Big Mac. He, he grabs something and went back to his table. He needed a little ketchup packet. Look at her big tits, though, right? What did Jimmy? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, she's a little rambunctious. Yeah, a little. She's ripping things out of the... What the, an animal. What is she the doing? The refrigerator. She knocked over the... Registers. She's just destroying the place, and these guys don't care. Yeah, she is just basically. Could someone just? Wow, she has big tits. <laughs> Who is she? And this guy's trying to order. Why doesn't somebody clothesline her? Wow. Just knock it down. On the <laughs> They're all left looking. This is fucking crap. What is she eating? On the she's ice cream? The ice cream. Oh. Yeah, she, she has her head under the ice cream machine and she's just <laughs> eating it like a water fountain. Look at that. Now she's just standing there. Yeah. I'd tag that. Yeah. Especially her emotional problems. <laughs> yes, of course. That's what I mean. <laughs> this lady's really enjoying this. She's just naked now making herself an ice cream cone. <laughs> Look at her fat ass. You're yelling at me? Now she goes around back and they lose wow. her. Wow. Okay, no, she went to now, get fries. Now, now, now she's gone. Yeah, now she's in back. I gotta go to another back. Wow. Hold on. Okay, you gotta change the screen? Yeah. 
Yeah, stop. Alright, hold on, hold on, we're not done. Yeah, we going. are, there's nothing going. They loved it. Well, no, I want to yeah. keep going. But she doesn't come back up there until it... For uh, yeah, that's all they so. had. That's all wow. I had, but that's amazing. That's what? great. But why don't we have a story? I don't know. Maybe she hasn't been arrested yet. Ugh. She had to be arrested. Story. What happened? <laughs> Let's see how ah. Fox reports the three men charged in a yeah. brutal beating of Detroit men. James Davis, Wansi Saffold, and Bruce Wimbush, Wimbush, that is to say, will be facing charges of assault with attempt to murder. Yeah. Steve Utash remains in critical condition yeah. in the hospital. What happened here? Area. Well, a, 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 a white guy was uh, driving his uh, pickup truck right. and uh, very slowly hit a uh, child right. that was uh, crossing the street. The kid was completely at fault. Um, the guy does what he's supposed to do, gets out of the vehicle to, to help the child that he just uh, hit with his, his car. And uh, a group of uh, black people come over and beat him into a coma um, where he's got, you know, brain damage and uh, he's on death's door. Um, and it's just looked at like, oh, well, 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 whatever. That's what they do. That's pretty much it. They're, they're mulling uh, hate charges. Oh, yeah, sure they will. <laughs> okay, but even They'll Fox. Never. They fucking end as they're doing it. Because they're so outraged at what happened, they go into his truck and steal his phone and uh, other stuff in the truck, and then take his wallet out of his pocket while they're stomping on his head. Is there a video uh, of it? No, there's no video of it, but um, it's just fucking. But even Fox that doesn't report that. I, you know, none of them. No, no, no. Fox no. is just as you, bad you, with that you, shit you as every network. You can't. You can't uh. report honestly about race. It's um, it's ridiculous. Oh well. Uh, Whatever, whatever. We're doomed as a nation. Sorry. It's just the way it is. <laughs> it's just Thank the you. way it is. Thank you. You can play a little Bruce Hornsby. Uh, uh, some things that never change. You can't go with the others. Go. The it is. Is. Wow, let's play that a little bit. It's oh, nice. but don't you believe... I hate that fucking song. <laughs> of course you do. Uh, can we play it for <laughs> Anthony? <laughs> it was a huge hit. <laughs> it was a huge hit. Ugh. Bruce Hornsby in the range. And now he plays with uh, the Almond Brothers a little bit. Mm. Bruce Hornsby and the Almond Brothers? Wow. Well, Bruce he's... Hornsby? You don't like Bruce Hornsby? Ugh, what a fruity song that is. What? I can't stop. Yay! Stop it. Yay! <laughs> this brings me back to CQ 102, hit music and more. Bruce Hornsby's latest. Wow. It sounded pro. Just the way it is. Say it like you would have back then, though. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey, hey, hey Bruce Hornsby. <laughs> Check out the empties, man. Check out the empties, man. Bruce Hornsby in the range. The way it is. On CQ 102. Oh, Hit music yeah. and more. It's a shit. 50 degrees going up to 58 this afternoon. I could do that all day long. How hard is that? 30 minutes of non-stop music for your ride home. <laughs> Shut up. Um, it's a good they? song. No, it's not. I wouldn't listen to this. You caught the old lady's it. eye? I wouldn't listen to Get this. a job. Yeah. yeah. Did he get back into the Escalade? Yeah. <laughs> Throw home and screamed it out the window? <laughs> get a job. <laughs> you people will never change. <laughs> Shaking his fist out the window. <laughs> this is the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> no, a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Look. The song isn't that bad. It's a good song. Yeah, I would not get over to it. Is a horrendous song. Yeah, this isn't oh, that bad. The others go. I would listen to this though if it came on the radio on the way home. I would just I would change the station. Did you listen to the Tupac version? Oh, How's that? Diddy, Diddy. Oh fuck yeah! Was it was a good. Yeah, it's a very popular this. song. Yeah, what? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. The Tupac yeah, version. It was way better than this. Yeah, Let's hear the Tupac. I, when I hear this song, I just Tupac. think of the Tupac song. Yeah. I, wait, do I know Tupac song? It's I don't a, know if I, I mean, know it. Yeah, You'd you know, know it you because it? it's the yeah, same yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Same uh, okay. uh, Does he go, uh, uh, I in the beginning? Not. Wait, it is, wait, it yeah, is. Yeah, 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 Tupac, Tupac. Oh, please. This song was so dope. This is a good uh, song. Uh, uh. Ooh. Ooh. 
R and B shit. On I used to sing this song in my car. Uh, did you? Yes. I wish you. I wish you was singing as you were hitting a tree. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard this. This is really good. Uh, it's just too many words. Uh huh. I hate That's wordy songs. That's what happened to him. Yeah. West Coast. West Coast, nigga. This is the black version of the way it is. Oh, uh, yeah. This is good. This is better than Bruce Hornby. It's yeah. way better. You like this? <laughs> yes. So much better. I don't mind it. No. Yeah. I want to pop lock to this and be really with the youngsters. <laughs> <laughs> There's a line in the song of people being jealous when they see him with his mobile phone. No, it's with his wow. mobile phone. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. People, people ain't jealous when they look at him like a piece of Swiss cheese, though, huh? Yeah. Fucking lead poisoning. Who's this, who's this guy? He should get the credit. No. Two uh, gets the credit. Uh, 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 the ladies. Uh, uh, uh. All right, enough. I do enjoy that. I like a good cover, as I've been known to say. That isn't even a cover. I don't know what that is. It's a sample. It's ripping yeah, off a yeah. uh, song. We got a Bob Saget story coming in. What? Which is going to okay. prove that oh. not only is he a family man, he he could get a bit dirty at Can times. Can he? Yes. Wait to talk to him about Richie that. Richie on Long Island. Go ahead, Richie. Richie. Hey, first of all, morning, fellas. How you doing? All right, Richie. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Anyways, I in 2002, I, I made a little mistake. I married Satan's sister. <laughs> I took her with me on a honeymoon, which turned out to be terrible. Honeymoon, right. <laughs> Making a joke. Give me a second here. Oh, yeah, yeah. So then, <laughs> then <laughs> I get back. I'm in Kennedy Airport. I'm online with the bags. We're standing there. My, my brother came to pick me up. I got three brothers. Two of them turned out to be women. One of them's all right. Uh, the one that came to meet me at the airport, hmm. we're standing there. We're getting the luggage off the carousel. We see him. I didn't know what to say to the guy. I didn't know to say to him. What am I going to say? Exactly. My brother turns. And says, oh, you ever think about getting those two twins in the bed at the same time? Yo, there had to be no joke. So the entire flight standing there. This oh. guy didn't give a shit. He turned to my brother and said, yo, why don't you go fuck your dog? <laughs> oh, shit, I think, no. I, yeah, I think, you know, I think that has to be one of the best lines I've ever heard uh -huh. in my life. One shot. That's just my, my personal opinion. And it uh, proves so, that he could be a bit dirty, this Bob Saget. Oh, there it is. Cool. That, that just might be, unlike dad. you see him on TV, he <laughs> right. really might be that dirty guy. There you go. You know, and one more thing. Uh, you were talking earlier look. about the Al Sharpton. If I heard this right, you said a guy named Pistone wrote the article, correct? Uh -huh. Right, but not the same Pistone. I know where you're going with this. I was going to say, doesn't that a little strike you a little fucking ironic that uh, the last name of perhaps the biggest mob rat, and coincidentally there's no such thing as a mob, the biggest mob <laughs> rat in history. That's the last name, and you write an, art an article about that guy. He's not a rat, though. Joe Pistone was a cop going in. But cop, you no, idiot. No, 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 Jimmy, you're not Italian. Joe no, 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 no. I know I'm not Italian. Hey, you got no but... business fucking talking about it, Jimmy. If you're no, that's not what right? I mean. That's not what right? I mean. I mean, no matter what. All right. You are. He never should have got involved. He should have got involved. Should have left it alone. That's a not paisan. true. He's a cop. That's his job. A paisan ratting out his own kind. I disagree. But not really. But do uh, you want to know the truth about it? Today's mob, they're all mad at God. So it, it's all... It's all ah. down. What's it that mean? mean American. Okay. They're not like right. the old country. American. Absolutely. There used hey. to be rules. Now all there's right. no rules. All right. No yes. rules. Yes. The rule. Hey, it is what it is. Hey. All right, Rich. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Long Island, just like yesterday. Of course. No, I remember you. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to figure out what town. What town? Uh, I'm from farming there, Long Island. Farming. I was going to go oh somewhere in that area for you. All right, hey, Richie. How they going to farming there? They suck. All right, Rich. Go All right, take notes. We're gonna. We're gonna I'm going to fucking eventual end. I'm going to get your you number, You ever Rich. been there? Eventual end's terrible. <laughs> All they do now, they crash 32,000, um, what do you call, orthodox with the camps. You can't do an effing thing, and they don't like the regular population. They 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 they, uh, they cower away from us in the corners. It makes the kids very uneasy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, adventure land is what? It's what are they doing? It's a bunch of uh, orthodox Jews? Yes, sir. Not, not there's anything wrong with that, and I do not blame them for Jesus. But uh -huh. I, uh, my thing is is that we can all share the same space, but when, when you bring, like, 400 kids with you, and they're all looking at me like I'm about to strike, 
the kids, you know, the kids get a little nervous. My kids do. Orthodox and Jews and off. Hasidic Jews and stuff, they just kind of look silly on amusement park rides. Wow. A little bit they do. A little <laughs> bit they do. They got, you know, they got a whole big costume that they got. I don't even say costume. It's very disrespectful. Costume. But I got no better word. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? They yeah. go on there with costumes. They get on the rides. You know, the curls can get caught and shit. You know what yeah, yeah. It's very dangerous. The white things. The white yeah. things hang up their sides. Right. They get caught too. And, you know, I got to tell you, American kids, boys in general, they think those white things are starting to flag football, you know? They start to ah, like that, you off. chase, you try to rip the flag off and you what I'm saying? You know, get it down. Thing, right? I hear you. I, I hear, hear you. <laughs> God, I love Richie. I saw. All right, Richie. All right, hey, Paisan. Have a great day, all right? See you, man. Hey, yeah. yeah, you too, and Richie. Remember, and remember, nothing can be wrong. You guys woke up white. <laughs> right, thanks, Richie. Somebody tweeted me the take it, but yeah. the beginning of the Fox beating. So I, I didn't see it yet, but maybe oh, Sam can look it, it up on the computer. It's uh, the lead up to the driver's beating. Is there actual video of the you, beating? Uh, yes. Oh, I'm about and that. I said this on Twitter. I am blocking anyone yeah. who at mentions that stupid Bobo to me. I'm tired of those at mentions oh, and his whole. Dro I'm sick of it. Yeah. Right. Anyone who at mentions him to me is being blocked. Blocked. I'm just letting you know. I'm not even being a dick. What? I'm just simply. Bobo? Enough with this guy. Oh, yuck. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, all right. All right. Well, for, well, Good first, timing, first, man. Well, I literally just tweeted that. Uh, oh, my God. Not knowing this guy. Was, I have zero interest in this guy. Bobo. Bobo. Uh, all, right, all right. Well, first, 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 first of all, I'd like to say, J J Jimmy, I'm very sorry. All right? Let's just stop it, dude. I'm not uh, really... I don't. I don't want to have this discussion. <laughs> We're not in some relationship. But did you hear that he was going to boycott your show? Yes. I don't if care. If he didn't, no, you don't no, care. No, it's not even him. He was just blocked immediately. And then it's the people who are at, blocked immediately. And then there was the people who are at mentioning like, what about they're, they're uh -huh. in a drama with this guy. I, I actually blocked him uh, probably a year ago. Yeah, wow. I had. I don't yeah, unblock him. I'm to. not unblocking him again. And I will. I will block any person that mentions <laughs> wow. him. Wow. Okay. Any person. All uh, uh, right. Well, please. Please, the way to tell I get the news. What did he say? Tell I get the news about Jimmy. Yeah. All right. Please, please, all right. I won't. I won't bother you, Jimmy. Too it's late. It's too late. You have been incessant with your nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Right. Well. All right. Well. All right. Well. All right. Well, yeah. And, and I, 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 I called off that, that, that boycott of you, all right? <laughs> I, 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 you he know what? Called it off. He thinks he has power. I love it. You know what? He's got a lot of followers, though. The greatest shit. A lot of followers. You know what? Put the boycott back in effect. I prefer it. <laughs> <laughs> I preferred when you were boycotting me. <laughs> ah, this is great. So, uh, huh. Bobo, what's, what, what's on your mind? Why are you calling? Yeah, please. All right, I'm calling for. First of all, that yesterday I had got woken up. I was in like a deep sleep when you guys had woke. When you got when when I had called, and second when I called when I called. Is that how you justify it? I'm in a deep sleep. Deep sleep. And and also when I had, when I had called Lady Di, I had just she was just asking me how to get it, how to get a ticket and everything. She was just bothering me every way, asking me every question about it. So what do and you did, what do you want to what why 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 you calling though today? Yeah. To say that I they they told her I didn't I didn't tell her I had a ticket I just told her that this is how you how you yeah you went to her. So why would you call us to tell us that? Yeah. All right, because people because you because I thought you guys got mis misled by misled by who by. I didn't even think about you two after I hung up. Yeah, yeah. It's... How are we being misled? Yeah. No, but what I said. There is a, there is a ban of you and uh, Lady Di at the Unmasked, which is happening a week from tomorrow. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, but the thing is, I think it's please, please, guys, I don't do this, right? I've done, I've done a lot for you guys. Uh-oh. I've, I've done a lot for you guys on the show. On the, the, the show. Yeah, but you're you might be a distraction at this one. Yeah, not yeah, saying but I won't, I, I we're not won't. banning you from everything, but this one is yeah. a little rough. Yeah, we only have a quick hour. Yeah, but I'm gonna be I'm gonna be quiet. Yeah, we well, gotta go.
Oh yeah. All oh, right, right, and please, Jimmy, un, un, unblock me. It's consider. not happening. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I am blocking. Uh, I've already blocked like uh, eight people, and I'm never going to yeah. unblock them. Right. I'm going to. Not that that's a big threat. Some people don't give a shit. Right. So if you want to get blocked, just do that. I'm, I'm sick of my timeline yeah. being tied up with this dreck. <laughs> and believe me, I can tolerate a lot of dreck. Drek. I can tolerate a lot of dreck. Yeah. A drama with this moron, I cannot tolerate. <laughs> hey, what are you going to do? Shut up. I'll see. I'll see you at Carolina. Feel, yes, you're welcome oh. to purchase tickets to any show you want. And if you talk during my show like you did last time, I will have you thrown out immediately. <laughs> if you're a paying customer and you're watching, you're welcome to attend any show. I'm not gonna, I can't do that. Uh, I, I won't ban people from paying for tickets. Yeah. But you will not be comped in. And if you are talking during the show, you will be thrown out immediately. But, but were you talking during Jimmy's show? He has done that, yeah. Right up front with some oh dumb my God. broad. Right up front. Yeah, you just, like a, just like a sociopath. A typical self-centered ass who has no regard for anyone but himself. Why would you oh, talk well, during the show, Bobo? No, what wasn't me. What happened was my mom's friend who, who begged who begged to go. She begged to go, right? That time and uh -huh. my... And I told my mother, I said, no, I don't trust her. I'm not paying her. She says, oh, don't worry, she'll behave. But she didn't listen. Okay. Well, oh, boy. That's how it is. Guilt by association. It's called the RICO law. <laughs> <laughs> you just got busted by RICO. Sorry. I, 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 was, I, I was mad. I was scolding my mom for her. How could you tell me I could trust her? Like, why? Mom. Right. I, I said I told. I they said I told my mother. It's an excuse for everything. That, that, yeah. that, that she was. That she. That she was. Oh God! Yeah, Listen to this rambling. Oh. Yeah, I just can't take it. No. You know, I, I just no. please, please put the boycott back in place. I would appreciate it. No, no, no. You and your eleven genuine followers, <laughs> please, <laughs> please put the boycott. Back. Jimmy, Jimmy, please, Jimmy, unblock me. No, I'm not going to unblock you. It's not going to happen. It's not going to hurt Jimmy. you. Me blocking you. I say nothing of relevance anyway. It's the same six racial points and fucking pictures of me with celebrities that died recently. Trust me, you're missing nothing. Jimmy, unblock him. What's the matter with you? Jimmy's going to unblock How's he going to get his Jimmy news? Yeah. That's how he gets his Jimmy news. That's true. Find message boards and read them. I'm sure they'll fucking be happy to update you on what I'm doing. Uh -huh. I, 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 don't, I don't deal with those idiots, that, those, those animals at Whackbag. I hate them. Um, okay, I'm going to find another message board. But we're thinking animals, right? At least you guys, you know, I could de uh, deal with less the animals. It's worse than than, the, than anyone that hates me on Twitter. Uh, uh, which is everyone who sees everyone, you on Twitter. Pretty much. Right. It's, wor it's worse right. on Whackbag. It's worse. Right. Uh, That's why uh, I Your self-centeredness is your undoing. Yes. People, you know, it's amazing how people don't know how self-centered they are. Right. Like, we all are. He Every performer know. is. You're right. He does. But there are people that are know. blindly fucking yes. self-obsessed. Yes. And so, uh, you're saying Bobo's one of those. Mm. Yeah. But he's not the only one. I, and well, I don't even hate true. people that are like that. Uh -huh. I, I had a thing with a girl uh, last night who's, I've never, it's not a sexual thing, uh -huh. but just, just one of these people that begs for attention on Twitter. Oh, God. And it's like, I almost feel bad for her. Oh, it's boy. It's so needy yeah. and psychotic. I can't even. Who is it? Uh, I've, I've uh, you, you guys know her. Uh-oh. And uh, I've texted with her. She has a boyfriend. It's not we've never hung out and fucked around. Uh -huh. But she just repeats what you say in text on Twitter, oh. and there was nothing. Believe me, she sent me a, a picture of her ass in uh, in clothes, uh -huh. and I just wrote nice. You know, what, what I, Is that it? Yeah. And then she she goes on Twitter with that, and it's not a a big deal because I've said a lot worse in text, and it's not my real number. It's my old number. Oh. But it's just so in principle irritating oh. that I'm just like, why would I? Right. And I wrote her back. I'm like, you're not a bad person. She's not a bitch. She's not a... Uh -oh. and really, honestly not. But sociopathically fucking detached from how other people see her. I wonder who it is. I I'll tell if you. I got the same problem. Who? Oh, yeah, you, you've, I mean, I'll just, you've seen it. Okay. I'm not going to say her name on the air just because she wants you to. So right, bad. right. Let me say because I, 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 I love when we have sure. the, the common names. Oh, yeah, but you'll, you'll know. I will. Uh, right, no, I will. You guys have right, a it's a shot it. Bobo, right. Bobo, Bobo. I just want to be allowed to be unmasked. What? We're not talking about that right you now. You see what I mean? We're talking about something that has nothing to do with you. Right. Let's. No, I don't. Oh want... God! <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't block her fast enough I don't years know that ago. One. 
like last year or a year and a half ago, whatever it was. Yeah. Ball locked. And, I, and it's funny. She had emailed, and I I wrote to her nicely. I'm like, the problem is you want to be known, but you're not really offering anything. Nothing. Like, do something. I wrote her a nice email back because uh -huh. I'm like, because again, I don't hate her. I uh -huh. don't think that she's an awful person. Mm. But it's it's this blind desperation to be known. Right. With contributing nothing. Right. Yeah. Horrid. Oh, oh, the God. worst. So, I blocked so. that. Yeah, I'll never. Wow. Yeah. So, Bobo, I guess you got to accept the fact that you're banned from the Unmasked. Oh boy. No, I, I've I've been a part of your. So we got to go now. Um, yeah. Well, could you please consider letting me? In I'm not. I'm not. I'm not I, right? I, I, I got to be honest. I, I'm not convinced that you even want to go. I, I do want to go. All I right, really we got to go. go. Uh, I really want right. to go. I really want to go. It's good talking to you, Bobo. Uh, have a good day, Bobs. I, 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 I all right. Really want to go to the unmasked. Later, Bobs. All right. Thanks Any for calling in. Take it easy, Bobs. I wish you showed a little more passion for us, the show, bit. and unmasked. I really do. And, all right. I would never uh, do it just seems lackluster. A little bit. A little like bit. Like you're not really into it, and we just want people that are really psyched we to need, be there. We need those people that are over the top excited that yeah. we're doing this at Caroline. So. Really all right. Down. Have a good day, Bobo. All right. Later, Bobs. <laughs> oh. Holy. Is he calling everyone? Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. He He's called Ron and Fez too. Oh, called yeah. Ron and Fez. Some Roland was just saying in the office that somebody gave Bobo his phone number, so Bobo called oh, Roland. Someone gave Bobo. He called me twice yesterday. He he's called Sal a bunch of times. All right, all right. could you just uh, think about it? What about Lady Di? Did oh. she call the pre-show? No, Marion called the pre-show. Oh, God, what did that babbling idiot have Lady to say? Lady Di's an obnoxious fuck, because she was saying, like, oh, well, someone said, like, something like, uh, do you have Sirius XM? She goes, no, and I don't need it. <laughs> like, like she's just disgusted with us and, and the fact that we, you know, aren't giving her tickets. Fuck her. Do we have the clip of Marion? <laughs> yeah, Marion was r really babbling today. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear the Marion uh, clip? Yes. I do. Oh. Marion is Lady Di's best friend forever. <laughs> Eric should have pulled it. Uh huh. Do we have Did it? he pull it? I don't know. I'm checking the five different folders he may have saved it in. Oh, okay. oh no. Is oh, Eric here? Eric, I'm going to miss you when we fire you in 20 minutes. Oh, E Rock. Hang on. He's probably calling. Woo, cool. Cronuts. Woo. Woo, Cronuts. Never mind. He didn't pull it. Uh, Why not? He didn't pull it. So, he just told so how are we going to get this where, on the air? Can we get, where is he? He's he's in the office. If you want to talk, what's he to him, doing? I asked him to pull it two hours ago. I can, oh I no! You, you asked one him one to minute. pull it. Yeah, and he said he would, or he said no way. <laughs> he said he would. Oh, okay. oh, no fucking way, man. dude. Not doing that. Now that he's the star of the Woo Cronuts video, Woo Cronuts. he feels like he doesn't yeah. have to do anything today. Yeah. He's trying to parlay that into a career. Right. Yeah. yeah. The fuck. There was an E Rock sign on wrestling last night, so I'm sure that's given oh, him a big head. Oh, there. It said E Rock comment or something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> which is which is technically an Anthony sign anyway. Right. right. Yeah. Know, yeah. Whatever. Are right. we going old school? Are we going to start getting signs on uh, wrestling shows? And there was. A, are we going to start assaulting the media again, even though it's not an assault? Uh -huh. We had Raw in Brooklyn. There was a Stephanie McMahon was walking out, and there was a big sign behind her that just said, "The Todd Show stinks." <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, I think we fool around with some live TV again. Yeah, we should. I, I think, think it's, it's time to start fooling around with some live TV. Bring that back. I think the Hawk is we, the guy to get it done. We oh. were the kings of that shit. Yeah, Everyone Hawk's knows amazing. it too. Oh, yeah. He is good, right? Yeah. What do you say? Should we start fooling around with that again? Yes. All right. Don't don't uh don't touch anybody, please. No touching. No but touching. Just watch the hawk. No watch touching. how the hawk gets it done. Well, he got it done for uh, ten out of the eleven seconds on video. <laughs> the last second is him with his tiny fist <laughs> trying to figure out what to do next. That fist move is classic. <laughs> Fuck. That's on our Facebook page, probably. Yes. All right, go there if you want to see uh, Woo Cronuts we have that, starring the Hawk. That Marion clip, if you want. Yeah, that's why I was just babbling. I was yeah. just waiting for you guys to find it. This, this is, is how dumb people are on Twitter, by the way. Yeah, guy goes, you do Twitter. realize the guy had issues. You act like he's all there. First of all, stupid, I know he has issues, but I talk to him like he's a regular person. I, I, I understand uh. there's issues there, but the self-centeredness is mind-bending, and I can't take it. Yep. He's not. He's not a blithering, retarded person who doesn't know right from wrong. He, yeah. You know. I, I think we should talk to Dennis Falcone about this issue because uh, Jesus, please no, <laughs> no. <laughs> what? You sure? Well, uh, Marion, please.
Here's from the pre-show. Oh, yeah. I want to talk to Marion. Marion. Hey, Sam. Hi. I want to ask you something. Is yes? this about the Ultimate Warrior? Yeah. No, no. It's not about the Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> it's about this uh, get-together next Thursday. Get-together. I can't go, and I'm not, I don't really, you know, I'm talking to you. is because Diane called me up crying, saying that... Ultimate Wait, Warrior was she crying about the Warrior? <laughs> no, no. You guys don't want her next Thursday at Caroline's. Right. Now, I can't go, and I, I'd so big. Quite frankly, I think we'd rather have the warrior there. But the thing is, though, why are you saying you guys don't want me there? <laughs> um, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yesterday. We'll get into oh, my this is, God. This, we is gotta, that where we, she went? We gotta immediately. Pull, we got to pull all the layers away. They're all so self-obsessed. That's where she went. I thought she was going to say... Hey, right. you know, could help, could help lady die out. Do me a favor. She can't even go. Like, she can't go yeah. anyway. Right. But just the idea that we said that she's she on the go. Bobo list. Right. Wow. There wow. is a Bobo list. I didn't see that coming. That was a, that was a fucking sixth sense ending of a, a phone <laughs> call right there. Wow. If I was what a Bobo, twist. I'd be proud that there's, uh, there's a Bobo list. Bobo law. He's made an impact. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get back to Marion now, making it about her, herself. I forgot about this. At show events and asking them not to go. Stay on the well, line. I understand. I understand oh. about Diana and that Diana and her drinking and right. everything like that. But me, I can't go anyway. But if I wanted to go, I'd go. <laughs> I don't make a scene. Right. I, I, stay I, on the line. Let me let me strong. let me bring everybody up to speed oh, on what we're talking about. You stay there, to, uh, uh, Marion. Yeah, because she, she's right. blasted. I think she was there <laughs> Just after yapping. After, and she's crying and crying. That doesn't sound like her. It, yeah, it does sound like her. So oh. if, no, really, Sam. Yeah. And you know what it is. She is very upset that she can't go. You guys don't want her there. All right. Well, let's hear how the Lady Die call went yesterday, Sal. So let's. Know. Okay. I don't really know because I was at work. Oh my no, God! No, no, Almighty! I'm going to play the clip for you so you can hear it. <laughs> How's that sound? All right. Do that. I oh. have my radio. I'm at home. Oh. No, you just listen in the phone. You just it'll you'll hear it. You'll be on the phone and you'll hear it. And I don't understand. <laughs> why. Of course not. Well, all right. I'm going to play the clip. You stay on the phone, okay? Okay. All right, here's track 16. You and called yesterday the during the show, and then you asked where Sam is because you wanted to call the after show and ask Sam and beg for tickets. Yeah. When we told you Sam wasn't here, you called anyway. You called fucking right. uh, Denny and E-Rock and begged for tickets. And when they wouldn't outright say, oh, we'll get you tickets, you were like, I don't know, maybe maybe I can get some tickets. You, 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 you're a grub. A grub. And then they no, asked you, I wanted grub. to go to the show. <laughs> You're not going. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> After all that I just How said, she goes, no, I wanted there. to go to the show. What? How come you don't want me to be there? Because you're going to interrupt everything. Because y your seat's good for three fans that I don't want would show up in any way. I don't want... No. Here's the list. Yeah. I don't want Bobo there. What? I don't want Lady oh. Die there. I don't want Marion there. Bobo already has his ticket. How does he got it? How, how did he get a ticket? I'm, I'm he being told me. He told me he has a ticket. If Bobo does not have a ticket. Nobody has a no ticket No one has yet. a ticket yet. Those guys oh. have got to stay out. They can join us afterwards. I think we're going to try to right, get something else going. Party, but... I could join you afterwards. Oh, oh, thank you. thank <laughs> the Lord. Thank Jesus Christ on the cross for that one. I want fans there that rarely get the opportunity and to fan, hang out. And fans that aren't going to interrupt and talk right, over right, us. Right, like this. Exactly. Oh. This is what we're going to get. Ronnie B. So, you guys. 20 years, <laughs> 20 years and, who's that who's talking right. you're not going i'm sorry no persona oh, non grata so marion you're brought up to speed a little bit this yeah, is lady dies best friend why marion. me though why <laughs> if i wanted to go i feel I, I think that you were probably categorized under the column of People who have a tendency to interrupt and maybe aren't uh, wow. aren't aren't the quickest on picking up the vibe of the room. You know what I mean? I am a lot of fun to be around. Okay? I was just thinking and that I'm not a drunk and right. I don't and I don't embarrass myself. Okay, right. I go out and I have a little bit of fun. Mm -hmm. 
and you know something, if I if I can get there, I would go anyway. I don't know. Maybe but, maybe people are but, offended about that N word thing when you said it on the video. Oh, I don't know for too sure. Bad. I don't care what they're offended of. But let me tell you, I say it like it is. I tell it like oh, it is. Right. Oh. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm not that upset because I I do have other, other things I have to take care of next Thursday. Well, of course. And Who cares. And with Diana, she's crying and crying and crying. She would love to go. We were part of the show for 20 years back in the day. No. It was fun before right. Diana. I became a full fledged alcoholic. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of fun before before that. All right. Well, but let me. Now, but now it gets out of hand. When, right. When she did the internship, she had a good time. Even though I don't understand what happened with the crap. Listen to this. Throwing up. Who gives a stuff. shit? Yeah, she made a mess of the bathroom and was banned from and using the bathroom. We had to take her on walks. You guys yeah. are trying to help. Like her a dog. Out. I right. know you guys are trying to help her. No, we're not that, trying to help her. But I'm telling you, woman it, in her fifties, it ain't happening. Jeez. Okay, it ain't or not happening. Right not now. with that attitude. Let me. Maybe this will clear things up for you. Bobo called in uh, after we talked to uh, Lady Di. Marion, yeah. you stay on the phone, and this might clear up a couple things as to how the decision making. How come Patty gets oh. to go to war with these things? <laughs> she keeps her mouth shut. <laughs> Yeah, what she yeah. does. The self-centered. Like oh, well, that's a good Why? counterpoint. That's a very good I mean, counterpoint. She does not talk too much. She does this not is infuriating. <laughs> this so is why don't we hear when Bobo called in it. yesterday? We'll listen <laughs> together, Marion, and then maybe it'll help bring well, us up. Me. To speak. Now, what's wrong with Bobo? Why can't he go? Okay, let's find out. Let's play track 17. Hi, who's this? Yeah. Yeah, this is. I'm running circles that way. Holy Hi, Bobo. <laughs> Hi, Lady Di. <laughs> you, you called me a million times. Lady Di. Yes. Shut up while we talk Look. to Bobo, okay? Sure. All right, All right. Bobo. Hey, hey uh, Bobo. Take it, yeah. Bobo, we got something called the Bobo rule for this unmask. Is that it cool? Is. It's the Bobo rule. We're naming it after you. Is that cool? It's like Megan's law. Right. Something. It's Bobo's well, rule. That's unconstitutional. <laughs> well, the Bobo rule is simple. We really appreciate you guys. Says that you don't care if she comes, stays, leaves, or breaks. Her toes are still tapping. We support, you know, the support you guys have given us and the great radio over the years is terrific. But we just feel like this event is not for you or Lady Di or Marion. Is there anybody else in there? Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Bobo. I really want to quick get to this. <laughs> Is he crying? Bobo, Bobo, are you crying? No, but I really want a ticket to this. Why did you tell Lady <laughs> Di you already had a ticket? Yes. Why? No, oh, I didn't know what to do, right? I, I... <laughs> Why'd you lie? How come you don't want us there? Oh, my God. Because you're a babbling no, I idiot. Not, I, was not I wouldn't I was not battle if you're on stage. It's not about you. you. That's true. She it's behaves. a very <laughs> important... But you'd never behave yeah, at anything. Yeah, she'd be all right. I think she'd be You've okay. never behaved at anything. You'd be good, right, Ty? <laughs> Wait, wait, hold on, hold on a second. Okay. Uh, uh, Jimmy said I never behaved in anything. No, Anthony yeah, Jimmy said, that. said that. After all these years, you don't know the voices. Holy fuck! See, Marion, my only problem yeah. with—you're still there, right? Yeah, I am. My only problem with that clip is that since you're on the list of people not invited to the unmasked yeah, event, but why me? It makes it sound like Opie is describing you as well as a babbling idiot. I'm not a babbling idiot. Why? Because I talk. Right. And that's... I like to have fun. Uh huh. And I'm the not gonna idiot stand thing at, too. I, all these events that me and Diane went to in the past. Right. We had a good time. We talked to people. Now I wasn't at some of these events. Were you a, a babbling idiot? At the I'm events? I'm a babbling idiot, no. but I do talk a lot. Right. But what am I going to do? Stand there and not an talk idiot. to people want to come and talk to me? Right. Yeah, I during a show. I understand. Don't. Well, I don't get loaded. I don't get drunk. And I don't make a fool out of myself. Shut up. No, I've never seen you make a fool out of yourself. But I'm going to tell you, I wish I can go, but I can't go. But on the other hand, I'm calling. I, I love the fact that she's she can't even go when she's arguing. <laughs> and she's arguing why so. she should be able to, even though she's not. Yeah. Unmasked. Uh, a week from Thursday. There is a Bobo list. Bobo, Jeez. Lady Di, and Marion are on that list. They will not be there. But if you want to be there, go yes. to SiriusXM.com slash Unmasked. Right. All right. Um, and by the way, as far as not talking, when I did the Beacon with Dice last year, yeah. I come off stage and I went outside into the showroom a little bit to watch Andrew. Sure. And those two are sitting not far 
And they both just jump up and go, hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, how are you? They're yelling at me. during. It's like, this is a show. They think that's totally acceptable. <laughs> right. And, and I can't understand how anybody is that devoid of, of social mm. common sense where you think during a show it's okay to do that. It's, it's great, though. They're all just self-centered, battling oh about going God. to the unmasked. We're a big get. Yeah. I like that. Uh, we got Danny Trejo. He's he's a bit early, so why don't oh, we get him right okay. in? Nice. Yeah, let's bring him in. Yeah, Danny Trejo is outside the studio. And a little later today, Bob Saget. I might have to go to the bathroom, though. Really? Yeah, I have to go to the bathroom. I thought we would break before Danny Great Trejo. Word. Danny, hey, he welcome is. to the Come show. On. Take a seat over Loving there. Loving it. Nice. Oh, yeah? How was that? How'd that go? Jim. Jim. Anthony. Opie. Opie. That's uh, Sam Roberts, but you don't have to remember his name. Yeah. <laughs> He's just, you know. How's your day going? Good. Oh, awesome. Man. Yeah? yeah? Sitting in the Big Apple. Yeah, huh? You make it to New York a lot or, or no? <laughs> Whenever I can. I yeah? Work and stuff. You know? Yeah, yeah. You're in the Muppets movie. <laughs> I got a kid. I love it. I got a kid, hey, I got to tell you. Wait a minute. The most. Let me pull this up. Yeah. <laughs> What's Sal? Whatever you need to do. Uh, Where's that? Hey, 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 hey. Sal, they... Sal, help him out here. I know. What's well, the matter with you? Phone. I was just looking for my phone. A little phone? Well, there it is. It's ringing. <laughs> <laughs> nice ring. Oh, my tone. God. That is an old school phone. Why are you going old school? Don't make fun yeah. of me, huh? Oh, no, <laughs> shit. It's a flip phone. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> you're, not, you're not in with the smartphones yet? No, hell no. Man. All, I do is, all I do is phone. I don't text. Watch it. They don't text. You don't tweet. And you don't. Yeah. Take pictures. That's it, huh? So All you just right, need you just take a couple phone calls. Basic phone for calls, <laughs> right. and that's it. Nice. That's uh, it. I hate phone calls. Oh, do I love a good text? Yeah, I, I can't with. use the phone anymore. After texting, I have no interest yeah, in talking yeah. to people on the phone. I don't talk to people so, on the phone. I can text really fast. Yeah. Call me, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. call I, I me, can't. that's it. <laughs> I can't do the calls. I yeah. just can't do it anymore. Yeah, do you not like what you say to be saved? Is that what it is? Like you yeah. know, People can save every text. Is that? Yeah, I don't know. Don't don't uh, like yeah. You don't never put nothing on paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that trail, right? <laughs> never please guilty. I hear, I hear you. I hear you. How's the Muppets movie, man? That is so awesome. That is so. You know what? It's doing great, and I, I, there's no greater compliment than some eight-year-old kid coming up going, "I need this job." Right. <laughs> you know my line from the Muppets as well. Yeah, you're that great. Man. You're singing in the Muppets. Yeah, and Danny dancing. Me and Ray Liotta. And dancing. Yeah, that's it, hilarious. You're a Hollywood bad boy. <laughs> yeah, right, right. They were in a coming. They were in a prison camp. Yeah, in yeah. Ru I guess the Russia, gulag. the Gulag, and, right? And uh, and uh, uh, Tina Fey is like just awesome. Uh huh. God, boy, she's Beautiful. Did you ever imagine you would be in a Muppet movie? I mean, always playing the heavy. Uh, you gotta remember, I never imagined I was going to get out of prison. You know? That's true, <laughs> yeah. When you really go back into your history, you know, yeah. you had a little shaky yeah. uh, shaky so start like, there, didn't you? How long were you in for? Yeah, 10 years. You, know, you, you did 10. 10. I did five the last oh. time, a total of 10. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's some, uh, yeah, what, what, a, what a comeback, though. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is yeah, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. How did you survive in jail? Were you, were you like, was it personality? Or did you have to fight a lot? Or what kind of got you through it? Uh, deciding every morning you're going to be a predator instead of prey. Mm. Like, you know, so wow. Huh? Whatever you got to do. Well, can I read something from the Huff Huffington Post? Your story's amazing. Are you going to yeah. write a book? They want me to. Oh, my God, you gotta. Smoking his first joint at the age of eight, heroin at 12, and that's after his first arrest at the age of 10 for assault and battery. After grade school, he was robbing liquor stores with live grenades and become a hardcore gangbanger <laughs> with shootouts from car to car in his hometown out there in uh, Los Angeles. Yeah, Pacoima. You started early. Yeah, well, I had an uncle that was my mentor, you know, I mean, my Uncle Gilbert. He was... He was just awesome, and he just gave me everything that I was going to need right. huh. to survive anywhere in the world. Right. Tough neighborhood, obviously. Yeah, Pacoima was just you know, yeah. pretty tough. And you rob people with grenades? Well, no, you, if you walk into a liquor store and you're holding a hand grenade and you pull the pin and say, look, give me some money. <laughs> They're going to the 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 give the money. <laughs> They're going to give you some money. They're going to give the money. I would gather that's uh, that's a good ploy right there. Were they live grenades or was it a bluff? Yeah, no, I had a live grenade. When I went to prison, I buried uh, a couple of machine guns, a shotgun, thirty-eight, 
and a grenade in my mom's backyard. And then I remember her writing me in prison saying, we're going to put a sprinkler system. And I'm, he said, don't get near the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. so you did five years and... Uh, the last time. The last For time. sale and loot of narcotics. I sold a federal agent four ounces of sugar. Whoops. Yeah, so. What year was that? Bunko sales, 1965. 65, yeah, because they say uh, you hit uh, rock bottom in 68. Yeah. yeah. So well, you pretty yeah, much... That was in solidarity, yeah. You were mm. in solitary confinement. Yeah, yeah. We went to the whole... Me, Ray Pacheco, and Henry Quijada were involved in a prison riot. And wow. Jesus. Sent us to the hole. How often did you fight in jail? Uh, oh, boxing every month. Yeah, every oh, you boxing? Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You don't fight in prison. Everybody thinks you have these... You don't fight. It's easier to get away with a stabbing. You know? Yeah. Fight. You know? I mean, if I sock you, you're going to sock me back. You know? Yeah, yeah. We're going to grab, we're going to wrestle, and we're both going to get arrested if i sneak up behind you and hit you in the back four times with a knife i can walk away you know while you're like coughing and spitting and <laughs> so uh, so basically I mean, it's just easier to get away right with a stabbing than it is a, a fight mm -hmm. what would you use to stab somebody anything yeah well it is make, make you know, now they're making knives out of five plastic spoons they just Melt them all together. You, you gotta, that would be pretty, yeah, pretty stout. You, if you do that, sharpen it up. Wow. And then 1968, you turned it around. Obviously. Yes. Yeah, now, how did you? Man. How, how did you get uh, get yourself together and actually pull out of that? Well, me and Ray Pacheco and Henry Quijada went to the hole for inciting a riot, Cinco de Mayo, 1968, and uh, everybody thinks Cinco de Mayo means a. Uh, 5th of May, but for a real Mexican, it means you better get bail money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you're going to do something wrong. <laughs> so we were in prison, and, and we, you know, we, Ray socked this free guy that was playing baseball. You know, he came in from the outside team and ended up socking him, and I ended up throwing a rock, and the rock uh, ended up hitting a lieutenant. Oh, Gibbons and mm. Henry Quijada ruptured the coach, kicked him straw iron. Anyway, we we all went to the hole, and basically, those are gas chamber offenses. You know, they'll, they'll kill you for them. You know, Jesus. anything. You hit a free person, and go to the gas chamber. You hit a guard, you go to the gas. So, wow, wow. So, uh, I made a deal with God. I said, if you let me die with dignity, I know I couldn't get out of it. You know, what I mean, so I just said, because I remember seeing this movie. I can't remember the name of it, Castle on the Hudson or something, where where uh, the hero of the neighborhood goes to the electric chair and, and he ends up going like a little bitch, you know, screaming and crying and pissing uh -huh. on himself. So, oh, shit. I, I thought I was going to the gas station, so I remember just asking God, let me die with some dignity. And I will say your name every day I'm alive and I will do whatever I can for my fellow man. And that was my deal. And I thought it was only going to be like four or five years. And then I was going to get the gas chamber. Huh. You know, God said, well, screw you. <laughs> wow. So you're saying so God I every day. He, you know, I, in, the, in the report, Lieutenant Gibbons wrote, one of the three individuals threw a rock. Well, first year law student. You know, that's out. You know, he didn't mention any names. So. Uh -huh. And then... Uh, huh. The free person that Ray hit wouldn't come to court, and then the coach Strawmeyer was in Europe or something. I don't know, but so DJ reject. So kind of lucked out. Yeah, yeah. So by the grace of God, yeah. you know, wow. I've been saying his name every day and doing whatever I can for my fellow man, and I got to say that it's paid off because everything good that has happened to me in my life since I've gotten out of prison has happened as a direct result of helping someone else. Really? I got into the movie business by help of someone else. Yeah. Really? Yeah, because I was going to ask you about that. You get out of prison. Now, a lot of people, when they get out of uh, prison, kind of go back into the same world, you know? Uh, same habits. Yeah, yeah. same I, things. How so, did you... Same friends. How were you able well, to you step know, away from that? First of all, it's like I started going to 12-step programs, AA, mm -hmm. and A, and, and it kind of like pulled me out of the environment of, of, of drug addiction and, mm -hmm. and people that wanted to stay clean. I mean, it's like... If you're trying to stay clean and you're around people that are using, you're you're dead. You know, no sense right. going to do it. So, so I was around nothing, people that want to stay clean. I was I was uh, going to meetings and uh, it just 
kept I just kept staying out longer and longer, and I just started working mm. in drug abuse, you know, helping people, and that, you know, when you go into a house and you're gonna like pick somebody up for detox, and you see the living conditions, you see mm. the kids, it's like I don't want to go back to that. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's a constant reminder. So, so it's like it was like, like uh, for the 17 years that I was out, you know, to 1985, I was just helping people, and then I. I was helping this one kid, and at night, I remember I was getting ready to watch Johnny Carson, because it was about 11 o'clock at night, he came on at 11.30, and this kid calls me up and says, hey, there's a lot of blow down here in my job, 1985, he said, can you come down and just hang out with me? I go, yeah, so I went down to hang out with him, I thought he worked in a warehouse, because <laughs> it was in the warehouse district of LA, so I thought we were going to sit in the parking lot smoke cigarettes, drink coffee, you know, and then, and then he was going to go back in at break and everybody's going to think we're gay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Two guys sitting out of the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it wasn't. It was the movie set of a movie called Runaway Train with John Voight and Eric Oh, Roberts. yeah, I remember that one. Sure. And I walked onto it, and this, this guy is funny because this guy says, hey, do you want to be in this movie? <laughs> and I says, uh, what do I got to do? He says, do you want to be an extra? And I said, extra what? <laughs> and he said, can you act like a convict? <laughs> I think I got that down. Right? I've been in every prison in the state of California. You know, so I'll give it a shot. You know, I took off my shirt and I have that big tattoo uh -huh. on my chest. You know. This guy comes over and says, hey, you're Danny Trejo. And I go, yeah. And he goes, I saw you win the lightweight and the welterweight title up in San Quentin. I go, yeah, you're Eddie Bunker. I knew this guy. Oh, wow. And I said, Eddie, what are you doing? He says, Danny, I, I adapted the screenplay. Because he was a writer. You know, he used to write. He got real famous in the joint writing writs. Because writs have to be grammatically correct. And, and, and they have to be, like, you know, according to law. And he got uh -huh. famous doing that. Because wow. he knew how to do it and he could spell. And, uh... Because if you have one word spelt wrong in a writ, they can kick it out. Right, you know? right, so, right. So um, he says, hey, are you still boxing? And I says, I'm, I train, you know. And he says, we need somebody to train one of the actors how to box. Wow. And man. I said, what's it pay? And he says, 320 a day. And I said, how bad you want this guy beat up? <laughs> I, I thought, I wasn't making that a week. Right? Uh, <laughs> and he said, no, you got to be careful. This actor's really high strung, Danny. He might sock you. I said, Eddie, for $320, give him a stick. <laughs> <laughs> I started training Eric Roberts how to box. No kidding. Uh -huh. The movie Runaway Train. And Andre Kozlowski, the director, saw me. And I guess he did. You know, Eric was a movie star. You know, mm -hmm. so, yeah. So he saw that Eric would kind of do what I told him to do. And, and uh, he came over and said, you be in movie. You fight Eric in movie. The Russian, right? You fight Eric in movie. I'll never get you. And I go, okay. All uh, right. And then, and then he kissed me. He like, and he walked away, you know, and both cheeks. And I told Eddie, look, Eddie, I'm going to train this kid for 320, but if I'm going to be kissing that guy, I want some more money. <laughs> he goes, no, no, he's European. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I never kissed a man in my life. <laughs> and so he was like, but me and Andre just kept kissing, and they're like, cool. I just went to Russia on, for his 75th birthday. You know? Wow. He called me, and his dime took me to Russia. So he's we became the... really good friends, man. He's a brilliant, brilliant director. Runaway Train was one of the best movies that uh, the who the two brothers ever did, man. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, I remember that movie, yeah. yeah God, that great. Wow, that's, uh, and that's how it amazing. started. That's, that's right. how it got in. That's then, how got in. So, you, so you get in, you get your foot in the door there, and then what, other well, roles just I got, come I got Taft Hartley. I got all that shit, right? The first time I'd ever been on a movie set, and, and uh, I didn't even know what it was. Huh. I didn't even know I had a trailer. I dressed in my car for two days. I remember about my first... Uh, I was I, my kid was about four years old, and I used to go to craft services and make these big sandwiches and take them out of the car and stash them. And then I was a single parent, I'd take them. You know, we hey, what do we got, Daddy? I have all this candy and shit. And uh, and uh, this one girl caught me making these sandwiches. She says, "Danny, uh, you know you have a meal penalty." And I says, "Oh no, no, no this isn't all mine. I'm going to make some for the crew." You know, I thought I thought she was busting me for eating too much. Right, right, right. I said, yeah. "No, no, no." 
no, you, we didn't feed you within six hours, so you have a meal penalty. She says, who's that for us? Well, I was mainly for my kid. Here. So she gave me a case of Coke. And we just <laughs> 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 you know, so. It was God cool. damn. Whatever happened to your friends, the guys you went to the hall He's still clean. He's, he's no, clean. No, the guys right? from the, in jail that were the, oh, no, the riding guys. Oh, yeah, the two guys. Bunker, he just passed away. He passed away a few years ago, mm. and uh, you know he was what? Oh, God, eighty. He was about mm. close to eighty. Um, passed away. And the guys wow. you, you you were rioting with? Is that who they were? The, the oh, guys? They're all dead. They are dead. Oh, yeah, yeah. Huh? Dead. yeah. Ray Pacheco, Henry Gill, they're gone. And you, you Ray probably... got killed in a robbery. You know? Really? Yeah. He was committing it, or he was robbed? No, he was committing it. Yeah. And you think, you know, obviously, if you stayed in that life, you probably would have been the in the same boat, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Be, yeah. 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 Buried. Well, yeah. the parole board, when the parole board let me out, they said, Danny, bring us back a life sentence. Don't, you know, don't even. Don't, don't right. fuck around anymore, yeah. right? Yeah. With this so petty good. bullshit. Yeah. Get us up. Wow. <laughs> we just want to tuck you away yeah. and leave, you, leave you there. You, alone, you, know. <laughs> you ever go back into that world at all? Just Oh, yeah. No, no. I, 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 I go back all the time. I talk. And mm -hmm. No, I, I meant, did you ever, you, you stayed completely. Oh, yeah. No, I've been completely clean. Yeah, Amazing. yeah. Amazing. There's no way, there's no way to stay out of jail using drugs. There's mm -hmm. no way. Right. Especially if you, you've touched it before. You know? Uh-huh. Wow. wow. You yeah. kind of write the book, Danny. That's an amazing that's story. Yeah. That's an amazing, and you're open about it. A lot of people maybe would, you know, kind of downplay it or well, not give know, the details. Lot, well, a lot of people are, 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 are uh, you, if you played with it, you don't want to talk about it. But mm. if you, you know, owned it, <laughs> then it's like it's there. You right. know what I mean? And it's like, you know, it's like people, I've, I know a guy that's got a, got a tattoo of, of uh, the gun tower in San Quentin right here, right? Huh. His neck? Yeah, and I said, oh, you've been in Quinn? He goes, no. <laughs> well, what the fuck? <laughs> okay. Uh, why would you do that? Wow. You, you know, it's like, you know, so it's, you want to identify with that. You know, nah. when, did you, when did you get the tat uh, on God, your chest? That was 1965. 65. Yeah. Was that in, in prison? or In prison. Harry Super Jew Ross. <laughs> yeah. Line. Yeah, we went to three different prisons doing that tattoo. Jesus. Wow. How many different wow. prisons were you in? Uh, about five. Yeah, How, institutional convenience, you get in trouble, they kick you out. <laughs> How do they do a tattoo in prison in 1965? With, with and with, uh, with, uh, Was it homemade stuff? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Indian, Indian the big rap. pens and stuff? Well, now, now they have machines. Now they make uh -huh. machines, they make their own machines. Right. But in the 60s, they used to have the needles and thread and tap, tap, tap. Oh, tap, tap. wow. That's yeah, it was old school. It was yeah. pretty painful shit. No was, shit. That's why I anytime bet. I walk into a, uh, a tattoo parlor, everybody knows. And, right. Oh my God, please, it's kind of like it's famous. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, an old yeah, Buick. Yeah. <laughs> it's still running, tattoo. yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's made the rounds in movies, too, and that's yeah. for sure. And you've been working so ever since. <laughs> the first five years of my career, I was basically inmate number one. You know, I mean, and, yeah, and yeah. I never even had a name. You know, it was. I thought I, I thought I was doing great. You know, I, mean, yeah. I kept movie after movie as inmate number one, badass number one. You know, right, right. And uh, <laughs> and then I remember the first time I was going to be interviewed. This little girl, fresh out of college, was just so worried about being stereotyped. And she says, "Danny, aren't you afraid of being stereotyped?" And I said, "As what?" <laughs> And she says, well, you're always playing the mean Chicano dude with tattoos. I said, I am the mean Chicano dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know how yeah. you do Somebody got it right. You know? <laughs> and it's so funny. It's like in, in, in badasses, you know, badass. Yeah, yeah. Um, Danny Glover is like, I'm, I'm, this, I'm this badass Vietnam vet, man. What a blessing to be uh -huh. able to you know, play one of them guys. It's like, what an honor. You know what I mean? So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the uh, the movie. Obviously, yeah. uh, when's that too? When's that coming out? That's on Blu-ray now, right? Oh, now. it's in Blu-ray. On Blu-ray, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, what man. was the first? What was the first movie you did that was more than just being the uh, the inmate number one? You know what it was? Uh, I, let's check this out. It was a movie called Death Wish Four with Charles Bronson. Oh, shit. I got to play with Charlie, and I met him, and we became buddies. It's like you know, he liked my style. I loved him. You know, he's my hero forever, yeah. man. But I get to like. Like, even talks, like, you grab him, I go, hey, don't I know you? You know, and we talk, and he ends up blowing us up with a wine bottle. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I got to talk to Charles Bronson. Uh, Paul Kersey. Were you what, you're obviously one of the bad guys that he had to uh, yeah, do away out. with? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and he's so considerate, because he's supposed to throw water in my face, right? And so, so we're setting up like this, right? And 
I'm just sitting like this. And then he goes, he goes hey, hold it, hold it. Because they just said rolling, hold it. He says, uh, come here and uh, get the ice out of this uh, out of this glass. And so, because there was ice in the mm-hmm. glass, right? I didn't, I didn't even write down. And so I'm wondering what the hell's going on. So he made him take the ice out. Oh, ice so it wouldn't hit you ice, in the face. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. You know, so he wouldn't, you know, the yeah, ice yeah, was, yeah. And I thought, Wow, I would have taken the ice from Charles Bronson. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah. And so, but but he was considerate to not wanting to mm. throw the ice in my face. You know, so right. so yeah. then he's so sharp. He says, "Okay, Danny, look, look. Uh, what we'll do is uh, write that uh, count of three, one, two, three, and then I'll throw the ice." Okay, so you know, and uh, so he's like, "Okay, ready? Okay, ready? One, two, three, oh. two, and whoa!" Like because the surprise. And, yeah. And yeah. Everybody thought. Great acting job. Ah. That was really surprising. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. But he was and also he was smart like, enough to take the ice out. That wasn't yeah, being no, considered because really you did five years in prison. Yeah, you didn't want to throw yeah, ice in his face. That was really considerate. I mean, I didn't even, I didn't even think about it. You yeah, know, I thought yeah. they were throw you okay. But that was just really, and he was that kind of guy. Yeah, he's just a sweetheart. You, man. you, you've always been uh, like, oh, that guy from the movie. When, <laughs> when did it change where people started knowing your name? Because there's so yeah. many character actors so that funny. you look at. That's and just true, go, though. I've seen that guy. I know that guy. That guy. That guy. I've been that. Guy. It's so funny. It was for uh, a long time. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, God, man, Cornejo from Venice is a good, good friend of mine, man. Uh, uh, Ricky Mejia, he named me that guy. And, and that but, guy. Uh, I was on a plane once. I was on uh, Southwest, I think. So I would, they didn't have a first class. Yeah, Southwest. So I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm flying and and I look at one of those magazines and it's got that guy and it had all the guys that are that guy. That, are that guy. <laughs> and so my picture was there. Uh, so people so. started. I ended up signing every one of those. Oh, <laughs> man, right. this, this, this one of the stewardesses, Mr. Trejo, do you want me to have him stop? I go, no, 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 it's fine. I hate to No, I don't want to. And I got to yeah, sit there. Yeah, there's yeah. the flight. So, so I, I said, uh, 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 no, no, it's okay. Okay, well, here, will you sign me? Yeah. <laughs> I signed one verse. Who else was in the article? I'm going to guess J.T. Walsh yeah, was they, here. Oh, yes, yes. He's yeah, the guy yeah, who yeah, always knew his right. face. Yes. Always knows. And uh, uh, J.T., I loved it. Man. <laughs> yeah, there was a whole bunch of, a whole bunch, I don't remember. When did you was. start being known as Danny Trejo? God, man. What movie? Was it like Tarantino throwing in movies? Blood In, Blood Out oh. that I did. Oh, know? right. And it, was, uh-huh. it really became a really, really popular cult movie, you know, and uh, it was Taylor Hackford's amazing director, and, <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and he did it, and I loved it because it wasn't, it was about three different Chicano kids that grew up the same but ended up different. In other words, you know, uh, uh, I think another actor did one at the same time, but it was basically your... Here they're all bad and we're all killers. You know, so this one in 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 Taylor's he did it like he was a one was a cop, one was a artist, and one was the leader. Was Blanco one of the guys? His name is that the movie I'm thinking of? Where he had a blonde hair? No, that was a uh, uh, Miklo. Miklo was one of the guys, and it was a uh, a movie called Blood In Blood Out, and the uh, and the uh, the gang was La Onda, which was you know referred to mm, as right. And who's the guy that's in all of those movies? He's he's a short. Uh, Latin guy. He was uh, yo. Uh, he was Danny in uh, Colors, too. He played like the, the. Oh no no! He passed away. I know who you're talking about. That was oh, one of Dennis right. Hopper's friends. Oh, God. Hey home. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. His shirt yeah. buttoned up top, yes. the top button. Yeah, yeah he, was, he was, good. was good. God, what was his name? There was not Google it. Two one, two one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was not a gang movie that he wasn't in. <laughs> yeah, from like 1950 right. yeah, to yeah. 1998. <laughs> yeah, Google that. In fact, Dennis, me and Dennis talked uh-huh. about him. When he was doing colors, Dennis is a good friend of mine, and uh, in fact, I was Dennis's sponsor. But oh wow, Dennis uh, Hopper, yeah. But huh. uh, you know, when he got clean, and and and, uh, and uh, we talked about it, and we, that's who we picked was him. Was oh it? I wow, can't remember his name is great. He died in a car crash. Oh shit! Damn. Wow. Oh, yeah. trying to find his name. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow, what a friggin' career. Holy shit. What, what do the movies get wrong about, like, when, when you talk about a guy who's a tough guy or, or, or prison? What do movies typically get wrong? Well, well, you know, movies have got to be fun, okay? First of all, they got to be in. So, it's like in prison. I think I was in prison, or well, 10 years. I think maybe I saw two fights. Mm-hmm. Two actual, you know, boxing matches you have all the time, but yeah, yeah. but fights. Mm-hmm. I don't care. I don't care who you are. 
you know, you would rather stab me than fight me. Uh huh. Because you're going to get caught in a fight. Right. And I'm going to hit you. Your eyes going to be black. <laughs> if I'm dead and your eyes black, you're going to the gas station. Uh huh. You understand? If somebody gets stabbed and I got a, I, I got a, a drop of blood on me, I'm, uh, it's mine. You, you understand? Right. So, so it's so much easier to get away with a killing than huh. it is a fight. Jesus. I, mean, that's I, I would reality. assume also in movies it's all very exciting uh, in, in, in prison uh, scenes and whatnot, but it's probably very mundane on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, you, uh, in prison, you have to create your own excitement, whether mm -hmm. it's in your own head or right. whatever. You know what I mean? but, Do you play chess? Uh, yeah, I know how to play chess, but I wasn't like a real chess player. Mm. So a lot of those guys get really good because well, they, yeah, they yeah, got they, time. Yeah, these Did, guys are play chess all the way around the world did you so. ever run into any of the wardens or any of those guys that yeah actually i did that, I ran after, into, after you were I famous into, i mean i ran into uh god captain rogers once up in lake elsinore and he was there with his family i'd been out and i was clean and right i was off the old toy i'd been out about five years <laughs> and he was on one side of the aisle and i was on the other yeah. side of the aisle. i remember going captain rogers and he looked at me like Oh shit! <laughs> and but he was, you know, he was, a, he wasn't afraid. He was just his right. family was a little a, shocked. <laughs> he was tough, man. He was not. No. Why did you know him though? What uh, was what was the story with Captain Rogers? Captain Rogers, his? he's the one who sent us to the hole when we had that riot. But, oh you know, wow! He was San Quentin he was captain. Yeah, yeah. He was a captain and, solid. Ass. And now you're famous, and and you're running yeah. tall. Well, you That's know, I great. run into him sometimes. They go, God, Trey, oh man, he says we well, you know you had something. We know huh. what. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. As a leader, it's kind of you know, it's kind of a. I guess a, somewhat of a leader in prison. You know, yeah. But you, you got to, you know, you just got to, it's weird. It's like, you know, prison basically is a cesspool of society. That's hmm. what we're, and so, you know, what do you want to do? You want to be on the top of a cesspool or the bottom? You know? Yeah. <laughs> the child molesters really, can we see how rapists and child molesters get, have problems in jail? Yeah. But like, see, I don't, I don't hear about them getting it off and enough. They really do have a hard time in jail. Yeah, they, they PC up. They get protective custody. Oh, they do. Yeah. 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 Otherwise, they just get killed. Because you'd like some of that prison justice on some people. Well, you, you know, know, it's it's uh, <laughs> you got kids. You know, yeah, you 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 got kids, man, and your kids. Ah, so they have a, they have a big big bad mm -hmm. stigma, right? Yeah, would I do well, well in jail if they were going to fight me and I just said, I'll, I'll report this immediately? <laughs> would, would, <laughs> would that be frowned on? It? Oh, boy. Yeah, I don't think that would. Don't worry, I'll protect you. Yeah. 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 He's, he's, he's putting his hand on my right shoulder and immediately I'm sinking and accepting his protection. <laughs> we got you know, uh, it's we had, cost you. We, yeah. There was a few of us that had a protection uh, protection <laughs> thing going. Yeah, so. We got a huge fan on the line. They want him bad. Jason and Bayside. Uh, you don't have to put him like on, but just put him close to your ears. It would work. I guess. Jason, what do you got? I just want to say, Mr. Trail, my favorite scene is with you and Heat and Robert De Niro. Oh, uh, Heat, yeah. Heat of my eye. Uh, that last scene where he uh, gives you him the mercy shot. Yeah. And, uh, that, that, that's, you, you really are a good actor. And, uh, Thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's uh, that, oh, God working with him. He's the king. Everyone has... Um, yeah, everybody has such a. You, you had such like, memorable scenes and lines. I, 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 one of my favorite is uh, Dust Till Dawn, of course, with "Welcome oh. to the Titty Twister." Oh, yeah. This bar, <laughs> this bar is for bikers and truckers only. I've heard that every club, every Home Depot I've ever walked into. This bar is for bikers and truckers only. I swear to God. God, man, <laughs> that's yeah, gotta man. be cool, though. Yeah. yeah. That was and like um, your stuff. That was like Clooney's first real, real that movie, was man. The sweetest guy in the world. That's a yeah. jokester forever, man. Don't don't even try to out joke Clooney, okay? Yeah, yeah. And I'm a jokester. I can you know threaten or whatever. He is the best. Yeah. And uh, and the nicest guy in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Tarantino's yeah. been uh, pretty good to yeah. you, you yeah. know. Yeah. Well, uh, and Rodriguez. Robert, oh, he's been awesome. Yeah, I've yeah. I've done eleven movies with Robert. Rodriguez. Eleven. Yeah. yeah, we had him in just recently. We loved him. He's Fantastic. Awesome. We love yeah. talking to yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. I think Robert Rodriguez has done more for the independent film community mm, sure. than anybody has in the last fifty years. Yeah. You know, he just he showed my son Gilbert, who right now is actually co-producing and, and directing. Oh, I interviewed your son at uh, Comic Con. We interviewed your son when we were doing. Um, 
That's not the, he was really nice. Right, that, right, that's right. what that name is for oh, me. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And and they just did snapshot and they're finishing it up. And he had asked Robert, "Can I can I shadow you?" You know, and, mm. and sure. So Robert on machete just t- just taught him how to make a movie. And literally, he brought movie making out into the general public. Uh huh. Yeah. And he's got the new uh, Rodriguez has that new. Uh, what's the network? What's yeah, it? El Ray. Yeah, El Ray. Are you yeah. part of that? Yeah, yeah. You part uh, of El, El Ray? I better, Robert. I better be. <laughs> 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 yeah, and my dog right there. And he's a he. He's got the new from Dust to Dawn series. Yeah, yeah, so that I will be on next season. Oh and, man. <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah. So right now we're doing that. Right now I'm doing a uh, uh, Saint George with uh, George Lopez on FX, and that's what's wow. that about? It's a comedy. Oh God, I love doing comedy with I mean, George Lopez. Is a, one of the funniest guys in the world, man. Yeah, and he's actually from my neighborhood. He's actually from San Fernando, he's right there. And, uh, uh-huh. I'm from Bacoima, which is right down the street. You know, but was he a fighter too, or did he just joke his way out of problems? Huh. No, I think I think he was more of a joker. You know, I think. He, but we knew about each other for years. You know hmm. what I mean? And, and uh, uh, I got all the respect in the world for him because he grew up in pretty, you know, pretty. That's not a that's not a, a, a lightweight. Neighborhood, San Francisco, mm-hmm. man, and he uh, through comedy he was able to you know work his way out. You know, the actors must love working with you because you're one of those guys that has a more interesting story than they do. <laughs> like you know, like actors, we always want to ask them questions. Like there's nothing you're going to ask an actor that's going to be more interesting than boxing in San Quentin, or <laughs> almost in the gas chamber. <laughs> it's, it's, so funny, like, it's so funny because I like it when like actors start trying to impress me with. Yeah, I grew up on the streets. You know, I mean, oh yeah, they I, I, try, I try to tell them, I, yeah, but okay, but Broadway two shows on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's okay. You know, I, don't, I don't care. I mean, it could be a yeah. tough life for all I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know Have they tried to do that and impress okay. you? Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. you know, with, while they grew up. You know, <laughs> okay. <laughs> How many times you go to San Quentin? Yeah, yeah exactly. Are there any other, other, other actors that have done time like that? There are. I'm sure I'm trying. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Deep know down, boxers. I can't you remember fighters that come hand, out. But. And uh, why didn't you pursue fighting? Were you, were you... Well, I, I, I came out of the penitentiary in 1969. Uh, I, 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 uh, I tried to get a boxing license, but I had uh, too much violence, and they wouldn't give me a license. That's, so, kind of that's what boxing does. Yeah, they put me. Yeah. On, they put me on probation for two years. So I fought club fights with a manager named Howie Steinler that I used to send me on box mm-hmm. just in the club, kind of like uh, smokers, right? You know, and and. Uh, Made a little wow. bit of money, but yeah, a lot of gambling in those places. Yeah, right? yeah, it made a little bit of money, yeah. but but basically, there's in the '60s and the '70s, it was kind of a really outlaw. So you know, you're fighting lightweight, 137 pounds. The guys you're fighting 160 or something, you know. So mm, wow. So you had to be pretty good at. Stay and you did well on well, that yeah, circuit. I, I, I did real good yeah. until you start talking funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You knew it was time to move on, right? Uh, 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 yeah. Really? You know, so yeah, you find something else here. Yeah, we had Joe Frazier in. Yeah. Oh, oh right, yeah, Joe. yeah. Smoking Joe. Smoking yeah. Joe. God, I loved him. Yeah. yeah, he was he was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah he was kind of in and out. Like there was, he was really it was fun to talk yeah. to him, and then he just started kind of singing Mustang Sally. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what do you want to do, Joe? Yes. Yes. You're Joe Frazier. If you want to yeah. sing Mustang Sally, we're going to shut ahead. up. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do backup. All right. <laughs> but you see these guys that get fight for a long time, and they come out of it, and they're all messed up. It's always nice to see, uh, you know. And then there's guys that go through it all, like Bernard Hopkins, who's been fighting yeah. for all these years. That's it. Bernard's and, cool, and I. You you know what? It's like He's you know, I gotta say it, and I hate saying it, but one of the greatest fighters ever lived is uh, is Mayweather right now. Mm-hmm. He's f- unbelievable. Yeah, he's unbelievable. And it's like I I watched him. I watched him with the last uh, uh, Canelo fight, and I was there with George Lopez right at the fights, and I was telling George, uh, what what uh um uh. God, man, Mayweather was gonna do, and he said, "How do you know?" I says, "I says he's telling you. He knows what Canelo's gonna do before Canelo's doing it. He, the the difference between Mayweather and any other fighter right now is that everybody is playing checkers, <laughs> and he's playing chess." Mm. He's playing chess. Is that you watch him? He's two steps ahead of everybody. I mean, here's a guy that's been fighting. He's never been caught. So it's like, wait a minute, man. Huh. Never caught? No. I don't think he's ever Did been we know caught. that? No. Wow. And he's he's, a, he's 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 just you know God just touched him and said, okay, you are going to be one of the greatest. All that other bullshit. I'm the great. All that shit. All that <laughs> bullshit. But he is basically you watch him. 
you watch him fight. And if you're a real fight fan, you love watching him. If if you like brawls, you, he's boring. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. If, if, it's strategic. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, okay, okay. Oh, here comes. Ooh, boom. Yeah. Right, right. And it's like you know, if, if you're a real, real fight fan, he's 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 wonderful. But if you're not, yeah, yeah. he's boring. Who, you think, who's your uh, top five boxers of all time? We we throw this around. Uh, uh, you know what? But then, but see, the, the biggest problem with that is that first of all, Mayweather is number one, and, and of all time. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. You watch him. You watch him. And. Uh, you put him here, okay? Now, now, that's just fighter. Now, uh, personality, the guys I love, uh, Roberto Duran, loved him, right? Uh, uh, Joe Frazier, unbelievable. I just got, I used to love smoking mm. Joe, man. And, uh, uh, Bernard. Bernard Hopkins. Mm. I love him. He's, he's going to be 50. Right. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still fighting. Crazy motherfucker. <laughs> Bernard, I love you. Got, he's going to fight. Keep it up for the old guys. He's going to fight at 50. You yeah. know that. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. So, you know, so, and, and I don't hear Muhammad Ali on that last day. Eh, well, uh, Muhammad Ali, to me, was, was the absolute best uh, mental fighter. Mm-hmm. You know, mental fighter. He would get into your head, and that's the way he'd beat you. But as far as, like, like smoking Joe, not you know, boom, smoking yeah. Joe was a fighter. You right. Know? And and I think I think Joe, when Joe beat him, they were still friends. Mm. You know, they, they were still friends. And a lot of people disagree. But then after that, in order to beat Joe, Muhammad Ali had to make him mad. Hmm. And so he started talking really bad about it. He started saying stuff about Joe that me and you couldn't say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you understand? We get sued. <laughs> so now all of a sudden, Joe is furious and he's angry at him. And once you get angry, took him out of his game. You're yeah. fighting two people. Right. You're fighting yourself and you're fighting your opponent. So Muhammad Ali was the best uh, hmm. psychological fighter ever. And what about Tyson? To finish this up, Mike Tyson, he was great. He's become a friend of ours. He comes he, on a Mike lot. Mike Tyson was absolutely... <laughs> Mike Tyson could still be fighting if he didn't get involved mm. with Don King. Yeah. That's so, simple. Right but now, I, he could still be fighting. I don't know Don fighting. King. I don't know Don... I, but I just know from what I heard from the people around boxing, what what Mike was doing with Don. Right, right. You know yeah. what I mean? So until he says, no, we weren't doing that, then uh, you know, all I know is that Mike Tyson could still be fighting. He, he wrote a book, you know. The, Tyson's book is amazing. Oh, it's one of the mm. best uh, autobiographies I've ever read in my life. And you didn't realize that he was deep into the cocaine during his, oh, whole, yeah. his whole career. Mm -hmm. Well, when he was with Cus, he was he was doing Clean. pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, and then uh, uh, I, think, I think he mentions that Cus... See, Amato told him never get involved with Don King. I'm not sure. Oh, boy. I think so, yes. Do you, you think? Know? And yeah. not that Don King's a bad guy. Don King just looks out for Don King no, he's like he's supposed to. He's a bad guy. He's a, <laughs> he's a, he's a bad guy. <laughs> but he's a lot of fun to be around. Yeah. We've had him on a couple he's times. A How, yeah. He's the most charismatic guy. You live. It's like you know this guy has been horrendous to the greatest fighters of all time, and he's basically a shitty human being, and he comes in, and you want to just hug him and hand him some cash. <laughs> right. He's yeah. yeah. It's amazing. He has yeah. that ability. Yeah. Yeah. He really does. Uh, Anthony's brother wants in badly. Uh, brother Joe on line we got danny uh, uh trejo in studio what's up joe joe hey what's going on guys Hi, joe. Danny, i'm a huge fan huge fan of your work always have been Thank i you. um in fact i just wanted to say that you're one of the guys that uh, as uh, you know early in your career as a character actor um i would see you on screen and you know uh, recognize you immediately but i actually know your name now <laughs> that's, a huge, that's a huge thing for uh, you know for, for an actor as uh, especially someone who's done as many roles as you have. Um, I, I just have a, a question about a movie called Badass that you did. Yeah. Um, I just saw that. I just saw that on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I know it was based on the incident that uh, that happened in uh, in L.A. It was yeah. a um, guy on a bus yeah. that uh, you know, t took on a tough, a tough guy and uh, got kind of popular doing that. How much more of that movie was actually based in fact? Because I never read anything about it. I never actually... Uh, 
Right, it, it got into like one of your, one of your best buds from the yeah. you know from the army being, uh, well, being killed. Well, I think I think it I think it, it basically took the idea, and that's after that after that Craig Moss, a brilliant director and great writer, he uh, he uh, and my buddy, he um, I think he 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 took the liberties of, of making that a movie. Otherwise, it would have just been a mm-hmm. you know. That was a guy kicking it. some guy's yeah, ass yeah. on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was, it Entertaining, was awesome. though. I yeah. loved it. And now we got Badass 2 on Blu-ray. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. See? <laughs> Available now, Badass yeah, 2. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> nice way to bad get that plug in. Badasses. And you <laughs> yeah. also... Be a Daddy Glover. And you'll also be in the new Muppets movie. Oh, it, man. It's out already. Yeah, he's great. He's great. He's great. It's, it's weird seeing you singing and dancing, I, I know, Danny. with Ray Liotta. <laughs> oh, my God. Hilarious. The of your ability is amazing, man. Yep. It really is. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, Thank you. Uh, awesome. I'm a huge, huge fan. And you sound like, uh, if Anthony would, Anthony would probably agree, you sound like... Uh, a guy we used to call Tio Mondo out in uh, out in Southern California. Oh God, out in, yeah, Tio yeah. Mondo. Hey, uh, yeah, George yeah. Lopez, I played Tio. Tio Mondo. <laughs> yeah, we used to live in San Juan Capistrano, and uh, really? a lot of uh, yeah, I grew up around so many Mexicans. Oh my God, <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, it's, it's funny. Like, I always know people that didn't know they were they weren't Mexican until they were about nineteen years old. <laughs> you, know, they, you mean I'm not now? No, no. we been calling you Wedo because you're light skin. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, Joe, we gotta we gotta get him out of here. So. You, by the way, you, uh, hey, thank you very much, Danny. Thank you. It's an absolute honor and pleasure, man. All right, brother Joe. Later, Joe. You have fourteen uh, movies in post production. What an amazing yeah, yeah, work right. schedule! <laughs> fourteen movies yeah. in post production. That means Crazy. it's just coming out soon. <laughs> That's, I've been working really, really. No shit, yeah, man. man. It's great. Well, we got to get him out of here. He's got other Thank things. You, Danny yeah, Trejo. This was, God bless you. Yeah, you're this great, was man. great. Thanks so much. <laughs> what a blast. This was a lot of fun. Absolutely. Don't forget, Badass 2 is out now on yeah. Blu ray and DVD. And the Muppets. And, yes. and the Muppets. George Lopez, St. George. Right. My buddy. On FX. <laughs> Busy. On FX. Yeah. He's got a lot going on. And yeah. official Danny T on Twitter. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Thank Danny Trejo, everyone. Thank you, guys. More Opie and Anthony in a minute. On Sirius XM. In celebration on their 20th year in radio, Opie and Anthony will sit down with fellow Sirius XM host Ron Bennington for a live unmasked at Caroline's on Broadway in New York City. If you'll be in New York City on April 17th, you can be in the audience for the live broadcast and have the opportunity to attend an exclusive meet and greet immediately following the event. Only open to subscribers since before March 14th, 2014. For official rules and to enter, go to SiriusXM.com slash unmasked or SiriusXM.com slash the Opie and Anthony channel by April 10th at 3 p.m. Eastern. Peter Gabriel, Paul and Oates, Kiss, Nirvana, and the E Street Band are among the select few who have earned a place in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame class of 2014. Hear all the inductees exclusively on one channel. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Radio. Available anytime with Sirius XM Internet Radio. Hear a sneak preview on Channel 26 starting tomorrow. Hey, wait. 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 Pacific, and continuing through the weekend. Data is everywhere. It doesn't care about borders or boundaries. Data doesn't care about anything, just the truth. And that's a good thing. Because the truth is, data helps us do a whole lot of things better, from getting healthier to closing more deals. It helps us delight our customers and increase conversion rates. Data helps us generate more revenue and resolve tickets faster. Data helps us engage our audience and launch better products. It helps us build better software and make better business decisions. And yes, for those of you keeping track at home, that's a whole lot of better. Every single day, data helps you, data helps us, data helps everybody. And that's why at New Relic, we're proud to say, I'm a data nerd. You are too. We are all data nerds. Come join the modern software movement and see how data helps you at newrelic.com. 
Are you ready to start your second career today? With Coach Training Alliance, train to become a coach and make money as you build your new career. Your opportunities and niches in coaching are unlimited. Be a career coach, an executive coach, a spiritual coach, or coach serving the niche that is your passion. Through CTA's social learning platform, you can work from home or office while making a difference with others. Be your own boss, set your own schedule, and help people find success. Find out if coaching is right for you. Go to ctanow.com and take our free assessment. And for a limited time, your first class, Become a Coach, is absolutely free. Visit ctanow.com for the free assessment and free initial class or call 888-432-4121. 888-432-4121. Bob Brenner, record holder from ABC's Extreme Weight Loss, is a CTA graduate and professional coach. My coach, Chris Powell, inspired me to become a coach myself. Today, as a life coach, I'm excited to be able to help others change their lives too. Go to ctanow.com today. Calling all makeup lovers. Bare Minerals Foundation just won its ninth Glammy Award for Best Prestige Foundation. And to celebrate, we're offering risk-free trials to all women nationwide. That's right. Every woman who calls right now can get a full-size risk-free trial of our number one selling foundation. Plus, a free five-piece makeup set. For yours, call 1-800-953-6233. This is an exclusive radio-only offer you don't want to miss. Bare Minerals Foundation gives you flawlessly beautiful coverage with a no-makeup feel, and it's clinically proven to promote clearer, healthier-looking skin for all skin types. No wonder it's won nine Glammies in a row, and now you can try it for yourself. Call now to find out how you can participate in our nationwide risk-free trial and join the millions who've already tried Bare Minerals Foundation and fallen in love with their skin again. Plus, we'll send you a free five-piece makeup set, our gift to you. Hurry, don't miss this exclusive radio-only offer. 1-800- 953-6233. 1-800-953-6233. Did you know you can run your business using your personal mobile phone and still sound like a Fortune 500 company? With Grasshopper, the virtual phone system designed for entrepreneurs. With Grasshopper, your small business can sound professional from anywhere in the world. At home, in the car, on vacation, with an 800 number, multiple extensions, call forwarding, voicemail to email, and much more. Turn the world into your office with Grasshopper. Sign up at grasshopper.com, the entrepreneur's phone system. Not all meetings can be planned in advance. No, things come up, last minute opportunity, maybe a work emergency. Great idea you got to discuss with people uh, working from different offices. Maybe they're on the go. Oh, my God, it's impossible to get everyone in the same room when you really need to meet. But uh, you can be prepared with GoToMeeting by Citrix. Start hosting a meeting in seconds from your computer or mobile device just by signing up for your free 30-day trial. It's easy to get started. The powerfully simple way to meet and collaborate online with GoToMeeting by Citrix. You can share screens so you're working together on projects in real time. And just turn on your webcam to turn your meeting into a group HD video conference. It's like the future, isn't it? It's uh, like meeting in person. You could start or attend a GoToMeeting from any Mac, PC, smartphone, or tablet. It's so easy. Try GoToMeeting free for 30 days. Visit GoToMeeting.com. Click on that Try It Free button, and then use the promo code OP. That's GoToMeeting.com. Click on the Try It Free button. Enter promo code OP. GoToMeeting by Citrix. Meeting is believing. It's Masters Week on Sirius 208 and XM93. Adam Scott has made Bernie a 10. Adam Scott looks to defend his title against Phil Mickelson and the rest of golf's elite at the season's first major championship. Bubba Watson will have about 12 feet for Bernie. Bernie for Mickelson. Oh, wow! In your life have you seen anything like that? Live first round coverage of the Masters begins tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern on Sirius 208 and XM93. Effective April 1st, 2014, Creek Carriers increasing pay two cents per practical mile for all national over-the-road drivers and owner-operators. Bigger paychecks drive us, so now is the time to change lanes and join the Creek Carrier family. You deserve a pay raise? Call a recruiter today at 888-995-5807 to join the Creek Carrier Hall of Fame. Again, that's 888-995-5807. We all want a home that's ideal, in the right area with curb appeal, somewhere that's serene. Yes, that's the one we see in our dreams. But there are things that can affect you later, like an inspection, closing, or noisy neighbors. You need someone there the whole way through, not to find the perfect home, but one that's perfect for you. 
Find an agent who knows at Remax.com. Remax. Dream with your eyes open. Each office independently owned and operated. Not all meetings can be planned in advance. Things come up. A last-minute opportunity, a work emergency, a great idea to discuss. But with people working from different offices or on the go, it can be impossible to get everyone in the same room when you need to meet. So be prepared. Start hosting a meeting in seconds from your computer or mobile device by signing up for a free 30-day trial of GoToMeeting. It's easy to get started. It's the powerfully simple way to meet and collaborate online. With GoToMeeting by Citrix, you can share screens to work together on projects in real time. Turn on your webcams to turn your meeting into a group HD video conference. It's just like meeting in person. You can start or attend a GoToMeeting from any computer or mobile device. It's so easy. Try GoToMeeting free. Free for 30 days. Visit gotomeeting.com, click the try it free button, and use the promo code Sirius or XM. Remember, use promo code Sirius or XM. Go to meeting. Meeting is believing. Big news, the government needs money, but so do you, right? Problem, especially if you've fallen behind on your taxes. The IRS can garnish your paycheck, they can levy your bank accounts, even your home or business could be up for grabs. Don't take on the IRS alone. You need to act now. Call the experts at Optima Tax Relief. Their attorneys and agents will work to get you the best possible tax settlement. Call Optima now. Call 800-613-8836. 800-613-8836. There's an oil boom going on right now, and you're missing out. Own your own oil well at OilBoomUSA.com and take advantage of one of the remaining successful tax shelters with up to an 85% write-off in 2014. That's right, 85% this year. Get the facts at OilBoomUSA.com. Invest in America and boom. OilBoomUSA.com. OilBoomUSA.com. Own your own oil well at OilBoomUSA.com. Accredited investors only. Individual results may vary. There's no guarantee that past performance will be indicative of future results. Invest wisely. I need to control internet usage in my office. Do you want to pay a fee for every user? No. Do you want to pay extra to protect remote users? No. How about a product that's difficult to install and use? No. Offshore automated phone tree support okay? No. Then yes, we can help. The Barracuda Web Filter. Content filtering, application control, and malware protection with no per-user fees. Available as a hardware appliance, virtual appliance, or as a cloud service. And live humans to answer your calls. Try Barracuda Web Filter free. Go to barracuda.com slash yes. You might think you can sing, but you're wrong. Come to Joe Frazier's Karaoke Camp Go smoke, baby. and learn to sing like a champ. Ooh, making love to my old lady while I'm out making love. Joe doesn't just teach you to sing the classics, he beats the awful right out of you. When a man loves a woman. Words is the, the most important thing to, let's say, song, because sometimes, you know, that yeah. After a few short weeks with Joe's unique approach to vocal training, you'll be belting out tunes just like Smoke and Joe belted Muhammad Ali. Ooh. Or you'll have brain damage. Ah. Spend two amazing weeks in Joe Frazier's 700 square foot apartment above his Philadelphia boxing gym and floor your friends with your amazing vocal chops. Joe might have high blood pressure, diabetes, and needs to carry a cane to stand upright, but his magical voice will bring you to tears. Mustang selling now, baby. Oh, yeah. Think you better slow the Mustang down. Ow! And if that doesn't, his left hook will. You'll be hitting the high notes faster than Joe Frazier hits the canvas. Come to Joe Frazier's karaoke camp, where our motto is... Me, you ain't used these as you may, dog. <laughs> Hopi and Anthony have been creating radio gold for 20 years. Not bad for children of the 80s. Digging through the history. Here's a 20th anniversary Opie and Anthony radio gem. And then I went into that bathroom. Yeah. Jimmy, what the f- That's not one dump. Yeah, it is. Jim, there is so much shit in there. <laughs> it's filling up. It's like it's like a big pot full of meat. Just is say it. it. Is big that- boy made a duty. <laughs> this thing is above the water line. It's mighty yeah. like a glacier. It's above it the water line. You, you can't see how much is below it. It's, it's like, like an iceberg. It's raising towards the heavens in a statement. And the statement is, big boy made a duty. <laughs> <laughs> can we put a party hat on it or something? Oh, oh. I'd love to. Hey, can we oh. do like uh, Mr. Potato Head with uh, Mr. Jimmy? Shithead? Yeah, let's do Mr. <laughs> Shithead. Could, could the interns maybe make little like dang 
things, get like eyes and stuff. Get in there. Breathe it in. Enjoy it. Be a part of it. Sure. <laughs> How much for someone to pick it up in their hand? What, what we need done is... Your hand would have to go underneath <laughs> the duty in the toilet. Pick up, pick up as much as you can in your hand. You don't have to close your hand. You just got to kind of scoop toilet, it up straight out of the toilet. A loose little holding of it, and then go. <laughs> Big boy short did make a duty. Short. And did. then when you drop it, you have to say bye bye. <laughs> and then drop it back into the bowl. You uh, I think I'm gonna pass on this. Two hundred bucks. Me a Three hundred dollars. Here's my hundred. To talk to the duty. Let me see how you that look with the duty like... hat on. Put the duty hat on first. All right. <laughs> look at him in his duty hat. Oh, Wait, the duty hat has to be bigger. <laughs> All right, the duty hat has to be bigger. Can you make a duty hat a little bigger? <laughs> and you gotta like get. Uh, we gotta like uh, pin oh, it down. Oh. We, we got a pin. big duty hat. <laughs> yeah. I, I like, oh, that's not a bad duty hat. Which one? I prefer the white duty <laughs> I like hat. I like, the, I like the big duty that, hat. <laughs> that big newspaper one is just silly. I like it, though. The big duty. And it <laughs> says big duty on it. No. Now, you do understand, the hand has to go, I would say, from the front of the bowl. You have to scoop under. To the back, and, and your knuckles must slide along the porcelain. You're trying so to... So you're getting underneath. You're going for uh, a classic scoop. You're, like you're not going a, in the middle. Yeah. You're not cutting the middle. You're like going, a steam You're shovel. getting underneath this thing. When you feel the heaviness of the duty, then you lift Then up you lift. And you present to the camera. Keeping it above the toilet at all times, but out all of right. the water. All right, let's... And, and above the rim, and then you talk to... You address the duty. Duty had Jared has to come out of nowhere. <laughs> He's just got to come out of nowhere and walk into the bathroom. And then Sam follows him in. <laughs> Wait a minute. How about his first line could be he runs out of the office and says, did someone say big boy made a duty? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like that. All right. Ready? Hold on. Good, Ant? Ready. Action. Hey, Jimmy, what happened in there? Big boy made a duty. Did someone say big boy made a duty? Big boy sure did make a duty. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Give us twenty dollars. <laughs> Oh, and scene. Wow. That's a wrap, people. Bravo! Oh, Jared! Oh, my God! The Opie and Anthony Show is back on Sirius XM. Oh, yeah. You forget how good this song is until it pops out of your iPod. You're like, fuck, yeah. this is great. Oh, it's just I like the best. Yeah, Why wouldn't it be? Which, since we're on terrestrial. Danny Trejo was terrible. Simply ah. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> God, I love that good. one. Yep. We're just bitching about guests, and then we <laughs> we have an amazing no one. one. Always brings me down. <laughs> but that's why I hate what, having him in here. Is why I hate most actors because yeah. none of them are that open. Right. Like you ask the guy a question and he answers it. That's it. Hey, what was prison like? Well, it was like this, and he was open <laughs> about his no, life. I don't want to talk about that. He wasn't a fucking baby. Oh. All these baby actors that have a sex thing. Uh, we don't uh, want to talk uh, about uh, that. Uh, Paris Hilton. Oh, she's well, yeah, she's just worth. She was stuff. so great. That I disagree. Oh, God, awesome. he was good, man. Might have to throw that on the podcast. Uh, this week's podcast, by the way, Wednesday is Opie and Anthony Podcast Day. It's the Iron Sheik peeing his pants. Wow. We went uh, old school. Because yesterday was a nice interview with the Iron every Sheik. Every Wednesday. It was nice. Uh, podcast Day at Carvel. Yeah. 
Remember that guy? Tom Carvel yes. every Wars. Wednesday is Sunday. Fudgy yes. Wudgies. Fudgy every the Eric. Wednesday is Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, E Rock. Poor E. But he's a star today. Is the, he? The video's doing very well. Which is video? The, woo, woo, the Return of the Chrono. Hawk. It's doing very well. Go to our Facebook Chrono. page. It's up there somewhere. Uh, o and Day Show on Facebook. But uh, get to the, this week's podcast The Iron Sheet Pees His Pants. Podcast number 48. Wow. Yeah. Should we check our... No, we can't check our numbers now. I don't know. People go crazy. This we got to tease the checking of the numbers. We can't just do it. So after the Bob Saget interview, I hear Bob's here. <laughs> Did you guys know that Bob Saget is not only kind of a family man? <laughs> uh-huh. He can get a little dirty at times. Can he? Yeah. Is that what it's all about? <laughs> yes. Wait, 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 sorry to interrupt you. I got a text from Iraq. Really? Sorry. Really? I hate when I'm caught. Uh, you know... <laughs> Where's Bob, our old pal, Where Bob Saget? Where is he? Did some of the comedy shows uh, for us. Yes, he did. He did. did you know that was 2007 already? Mm. Damn. We had Louie on some of those. Uh, Caliendo did a couple. Berbiglia did one. Fucking Otto and the George, future. Bobby Kelly, Voss. Where's uh, Berbiglia these days? He's, did a, he's doing well. He did something called... Uh, uh, the Sleepwalk With Me, I think he made it into like a short film or documentary. Right. He's doing great. Bob, Bob Saget! Hi, Bob. Hey, Hi, how, are how are you doing, Bob? How are you? What's been up, good? Bob? Good to see you. We love Bob John Fox Friends. Yes, yeah, the best show I've ever Oh, I get we the hug. Saw you. See? Because well, we went and... Oh, shit. I did it once. Yeah, it's okay. Twice, how are Twice you? maybe. Good. Did you, I know you just got the book, dude. Did you read it? It's no. amazing. We, uh... Yes. Actually, answer that seriously. I got it don't minutes ago, him. and, uh... <laughs> no, that's the right thing no, to but, do. No, but he walks in, he goes, Hey, I know you just got the book. Did you read it? I went, No, like a fucking asshole. <laughs> I read it. No, you're perfect. I read the first love page you. and the last page, and then I just speculated what happened but in yeah, between. I'm going to read the last sentence of the book. Oh. oh uh, no, no, because he's dead, right? Everybody dies. It just says, oh. I wish that even for the guy in the audience with his arms folded... That's wow. nice. That's the last line. But what you don't say, right? I said before that was cancer. Oh, shit. <laughs> and the opening line of the book: "Cock, it's delicious." Oh, what an Jesus odd opening. I was actually, "Call me Ishmael's cock." Was the beginning. <laughs> I think I'm proud of it. You guys actually like it. Yeah. Are we in it? Uh, uh -oh. That's a no. Oh, oh wow. no! Heartbreaking. Oh, oh Bob. Bob. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Bob. Bob. It was good to stop by. Like thank you to. That's true. Thank you for coming might in. Be, I don't remember. Book is I don't called Happy Endings. Oh, <laughs> the book is called I'm Not in It. Fuck you, Bob. You don't have one story with us. Well, like it's not. Lot of, it's not that many stories. It's a lot of dead people. Oh, Bob. Really? If you'd have killed my uncle. Or, or buried my mother two weeks ago. Oh, well, God. two weeks ago she died. No, it was no, it was it was eight weeks ago, and she was wow. alive when I buried her. Jeez. Oh, that's, see, that's <laughs> what did she die of? We don't know. Jeez. She watched Full House. And uh, she, that'll do she it. went to a rest. She uh, had uh, cancer. She ended up Ouch. with pancreatic cancer. Oh, wow. That's, uh, that's a fast one. That's pancreatic yeah. is a, is like, they're a, all bad, but that's a brutal one. It is. One, right? It's like the Israel of the body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You nuke it. The whole thing just goes. How, how old was she? <laughs> wow. Uh, we don't know. No, she was 89. Hmm. Still hurts, though. It does. It, it doesn't hurts. matter how old the person is if, they're, if you love them. And mm. I didn't even know. She said to me one day, you didn't even know you loved me this much, did you? Oh, and I man. said, I said, who told you? <laughs> I was in a moment of vulnerability. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. How uh, <laughs> how, how long did you guys know? Because like you said, that's a really fast movie. Like, it was fast. It was uh, less like than a year, four months right? or something. Yeah. 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 She would, you got to get a colonoscopy, and she didn't want them. And I was trying oh, to give boy. them to her all the time. <laughs> oh, I'd come after her with a rolling pin and gloves. Because oh, I wanted to use the rolling Ouch. pin she used to make uh, holly with. Yeah, holla bread. Holla bread. Holla bread. Roll that, yes. roll that dough. Wow. But she uh, didn't want to get it checked, and then it just mm. it, it, then she had one in there, so they they oh, didn't boy. even do surgery on her. Why? So no. just, Did, why is that such an evil one? They can't cure that for the most part. No, it's weird. It's one of those filters. They say they can take out the gallbladder. You can do anything with right. it. You can butterfly it. You can saute oh, it. Oh, that's yeah. nice. It's, Stir fry. It's tasty. You, yeah. you basically don't need a gallbladder now. That's what they say. My yes. dad had his taken out. Yeah, I, don't, I don't even know if anything changed in his life right. without the gallbladder. Yeah, It's a tiny little thing. <laughs> right. It's like plankton or something. From uh, You heard that. I didn't hear it. I'm going to listen Who's to the replay. We've got some gall. Oh. What did I miss? Gall? No. Yeah. It was a uh, gall joke. I, I think. said gall. A a are your parents alive? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, no. One. My mom. 
My dad, though, uh, back in, uh, what, 94, something like that. Yeah, but at least he got to see Anthony become famous at a radio star. No, just missed by about four months. <laughs> okay. that was wow. He saw none of it? That was a good one. Not Spends even. eternity thinking I'm still a fucking tin knocker. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. What well, were you doing? So. Uh, air conditioning and heating installation. You know, so? just like making millions on the on the air. So you had the same exact career. You had no filter. Good night. Yeah, yeah. That was it. No filter. Ah. Filters Nobody's, and... Nobody would ever say that to you. Yeah. Or why would you even ah, put that in ah, your brain? <laughs> yeah, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Jimmy's yeah, parents life. are still going strong. My parents are still alive and uh, and, and pretty, More than pretty healthy and, and, and married and disappointed to each other. <laughs> yes, they are. They, are they, they, they disappointed with you? Do how they, could they not be? <laughs> I I would be proud of you, my son. If you know, if my daughter was a porn star, I'd right? Be happy. Yeah, my my mother doesn't understand most of my tweets. She's like, "Why does Jimmy always talk about transmissions?" My father's like, "All right, oh, well, no. whatever, you, whatever, whatever you need to get you through the night, mother." <laughs> mother. Do they see it? <laughs> Yeah, they see your stuff? Oh, yeah. They're, they're, it's really, they're oddly non prudish. You know how you look at your parents a certain way and you think, I like, can't because they're, you know, they're gone. Oh, well, yeah. Shit. Well, I mean, when I looked at that, them. hurts. Yeah. Yeah. I try Sorry. to avoid eye contact. Yeah. <laughs> but they, uh, no, they were surprisingly non prudish. Uh, like with my act and my Twitter and my, this radio show they listen yeah. to. And none of it shocks them. They never That's once like, hey, you shouldn't, uh, which is nice. Right. So they supported you through the whole comedy through thing. The they whole cool. thing. They've been Lucky. 100% supportive. Yes. A lot of people are don't they, get that. Are they in the arts? Or they, did they, just, no, they just knew that I was on a bad road, and the fact that I started cleaning up at a very young age, they were just happy for me. They're right. just really nice people. It's nice to have parents that are supportive. Yeah. You yeah. made a good point there. A lot of parents aren't. No. Because they want their kid to do a safe thing. Yeah. And How get, about your parents? Uh, my mom's still hanging there, sort of. Was she, is she supportive? Oh, yeah, she was supportive. She was crazy as all hell, though. Right. Could yeah. I ever sell? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, we got to mention really fast, because it's breaking everywhere. There was a mass stabbing oh. at a Pittsburgh area high school. We need some knife control. I 20, think is what it is. 20 victims. How do you stab how, 20 people? That's an, I don't so know. It's like, how is that possible? They were online for something. It's like West Side Story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Four students in critical yep. condition, 20 injured in PA school stabbing uh, near Pittsburgh. I oh bet he's God. one of those assholes from Call of Duty that just goes around knifing people <laughs> and annoys them. Man. Yeah. So they brought in their own knives. Yeah, was it like knife day for the kids? Because Maybe it was knife day. Right. I so they, they frown on that now. It wasn't from the cafeteria. Uh, no, no, the plastic no. ones. This is not good. They, yeah, yeah, that's going to be uh, an odd thing to do. Yeah. Couldn't get his hand on a gun, I guess. I don't know. But, and in similar news, Dirty Daddy. Coming. Yes. Dirty Daddy. It's dirty about time you tell the world that daddy. you're a bit dirty, when is this You know, people are still surprised. <laughs> I mean, they? Fox and Friends was shocked. Why I are they heard shocked? that. Dope. But it was funny. I was, I was <laughs> sitting Warm next to dope. Matt Lauer yesterday, and he's like, and we were on a bus. Yeah. Oh, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> we, but I was, wait, but you weren't, because Bob, oh, no. they actually shoot the Today Show on a bus now, because they, oh, they want everybody to see it. Mm. Uh, he, uh, every, you know, he's got a brain, so he's like, you know, it was amazing that you've, that you you know, it's not shocking. You've always had a, and he didn't go, you're dirty. I'm not really that dirty. Mm. Right. right. I mean, you guys know really dirty people. Sure. Oh, yeah, you're, uh, you're a little shocked. I you're guess. A little shocking. I mean, I say fuck a bunch, but I don't yeah. go gynecological. I've seen your, I've seen your stand up. You just said you chased your mother with a rolling pin yeah. to put in her <laughs> yeah, What are you talking about? Just right. put that. The colonoscopy, though. I'm trying to do medical help yeah. on her. Right. You're right. Jeez. Yeah. Who talked about <laughs> fucking their mother with a rolling pin? I didn't yes. got, uh, Jim, that is not about <laughs> fucking my mother. That's simply just put in See, that's the difference. Oh, okay, right. fair enough. I didn't mean it's all medical help. See, that proves Bob's point. He gets dirty, but not that dirty. He's misunderstood. So deny. Acceptance has nothing to do with this. Book. I just used to love going to see you and, and the people that would walk out, not because you weren't funny. I want right. to make that perfectly right. clear. There, there were plenty of those. But those are not the <laughs> ones you mentioned. Right. Right. Your parents but, walked out but, on my show, Jim. <laughs> but they, not that's enough. not our Jimmy. <laughs> but they couldn't believe that you were actually edgy and dirty in your stand up. Yeah, it's so strange. But is that still happening to this day? Not really. Not kind as of the much. Kind of figured off. it out. Yeah. Okay. The kind book's not completely right. shocking. But this is funny that they wanted the byline, which is the chronicles of a family man turned filthy comedian. No. So it's kind of like, okay, it's kind of obvious, didn't really need it, but yeah. it kind of helps because it's kind of funny to hear someone very officious on the news read that. But you yeah. I was on Bloomberg yesterday, and he goes, Dirty Daddy, the chronicles of a family man turned filthy but comedian. But you, you didn't turn <laughs> filthy. You were no. always kind of well. Let's just call it edgy as or, a, a stand-up, bluish, yeah, and bluish. And then you got the whole uh, family thing because they have to brand you with something, right? right, right. Otherwise, yeah. that came after. Yeah, I'm really proud of the thing. It's very hard, Jim. You've done this, right? Written the book and Jim get it all books. gutted. A How couple. many books no, have you written? Get them gutted by who? 
got to get a book written yourself. It's hard mm. as hell. Yeah, I um I did too, and uh, none of the uh, the editors didn't fuck with any of it, which I, which was nice. Right. So I was happy with how they came out. Mm. What are their titles? Happy endings and uh, I hate your guts. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to do a third one. I want to do another one, but I never did one like this, just totally Tunnels autobiographical. Maybe you should. Yeah, maybe. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of writing one that's, uh, or like you know, if I ever get off all the sex stuff, I would love to emotionally vomit all that stuff on paper. Oh yeah, well, because it's a combo good. plow that you're so good at. So maybe you, that would be. I would love it. I mean, yeah. it was what you do on here naturally. It'd yeah, be, but there's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff I've never talked about on here. But, uh, I don't name names, but but you would name names. You would no, say. I, I would never. I've never in my even in my uh, never outed people as far as hey this girl. Never. I've mm. never spoiled names. I won't do it. Like it's to me, it's a no. it's dirty thing. It's I, all about me. That's smart. I didn't do that. I didn't name my kids in here or uh, or my ex-wife. And uh, there's no. some stuff. There's like the setup to the aristocrats in here and how that came about, which is a pretty foul story. Yes. And uh, I didn't. I named, you know, I'm a name, name dropper, I'm, you know, like uh, Richard Pryor and Rodney Dangerfield and that kind of thing and people that mentored me. But I don't uh, name. There's a chapter called Relationships I'd rather not talk about. Huh. As my mom was dying, uh, she was. I gave her the manuscript to read. I wanted her to read it. And she starts reading it. And then she's, and with this pancreatic thing, you got like weeks once, once you get diagnosed. Jesus. So she was on uh, no food, no water, and no IV. Wow. And she decided to do this thing. And I'm like, she was really cool. So she got, we, her name was Dolly. We started calling her Dolly Lama because she was so in interesting. And then I, I never had that much clarity. So she read 111 pages. I'm going to read your book, Bobby. And she starts reading it. And then her eyes started to fail because, you know, she was starting to just go. And it's really weird that I give my mother, my dying mother, dirty daddy to read. <laughs> it's like before you die, I'm right, going to read this, you know, Fifty Shades of Grey, Mama. Oh, man. And, and she's reading it. And then I come in the next day. So sweet. She goes, I could only get to 112. And I say, okay, you don't have to read it. And, uh, it was about to be the chapter, things I shouldn't have done. And a lot of it was mm. about shit I did, like try to set my grandmother on fire and, you know, bad, bad shit. Right. And, uh, Is that a real story? Yeah, kind of. Because I never know when you're kidding with no. some of these things. You actually try to set your grandmother I didn't really try to, but it, kids just do dumb shit. So I took a Band-Aid box and I put, like, gasoline in it. Jeez. And, and I was fucked up. Well, I don't know. I wasn't... Uh, I didn't have a gun. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. Nice. And, and so I put, my mother was walking by and I lit it on fire and my grandmother, I put it under the bed, but she was sleeping in it. She was taking a nap. <laughs> so it started to smoke and it, it was getting the bottom of the box spring started to turn like black from it. And then my, I blew it out real quick and my grandmother woke up. That's <laughs> yeah, fucked God. up. I, yeah, I know. Fucking Malcolm X had a better grandson. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> Speaking of your mom, this was a, this was just pure luck. I just opened up your book. She gave birth to twins two years before you were born. Yeah, and they didn't make it. No, I they, never knew uh, this about you. Yeah, it's. Uh, that Have she you had... ever told that story before? No, not till this book. Wow. Uh, she had two full term. Maybe I did somewhere, but I, you know I don't think it didn't get out anywhere. She had two full term uh, babies, seven and eight days old, in the hospital had wow. dysentery, and I didn't know what that was wow. for years. But that's you know diarrhea and you die. Yeah. And uh, seven other babies died too, and the hospital closed after that. I wonder why. So how how, yeah. how far ahead of you were they? How old? Exactly two years older. They were born on the same exact day as me, two years before May me. May seventeenth. And the boy was Robert, and the girl was Faith. Did your you, did your mother always like did, like remember their birthdays and stuff? I mean, seven eight days. That's they're actually kids. Their birthday was my birthday. Oh, right. So she they she didn't even she, she got over it. They they buried them. But then I was this amazing thing that got born. And you know, I had, I had you know, I wasn't normal. I had a vagina and, uh, <laughs> and a unicorn head. But she, uh, I don't know what that is. But but then uh, I was the baby, and then my two older sisters. One died of scleroderma, and the other died of. Uh, I always say in the book, hold your laughs till the end of this chapter. Oh, you know? Right, right. And the wow. other one was uh, brain aneurysm. So it was thirty four and forty seven. They both died. So my mother, I was it. She was in a hospital. We were in a, a beautiful hospital. Uh, 
Catholic Christian Hospital in uh, L.A. And there's uh, Mary and Jesus statue, beautiful one. And I was wheeling her by it in a wheelchair, and I said, "Look, Mom, they made a statue of us." Because <laughs> you know, she, <laughs> she thought I was better than Jesus. She told me, I said, uh -huh. "Please don't say that in here." What did your dad die? Uh, he died eight years ago. You would have loved my dad. You all would have loved him. He was really, really funny. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of dick jokes, and uh, really never bothered anybody either. He was just a cute little man with a small head that was in the meat business. <laughs> <laughs> so I could tell a good joke. Your wow, you had a lot of tragedy. Yeah, yeah. And, my, and he lost. That, that's what sparked the book. That's why I wanted to do it, because I was like, how do we get through it? And why do I have such a warped <clears throat> sense of humor? Not right. that I needed to figure that out. Right. <laughs> you know, I started asshole and then ended pee hole. Right. I don't know. That's how I, that's how I work. A man, yeah, yeah. A, a man. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but then uh, he died and then his brothers died all his childhood it was weird a lot wow, of fucked man. up shit so that's where my fucked up stuff comes what was, shit. what was the first death you remember like the first uh really sh jarring one uh, i guess it was my uncle manny i was like six or something he had a double heart attack he was smoking tons of cigarettes his, his wife's in the book because she was a hottie so i just put my aunt millie's picture in it <laughs> She was a, I say she's a hottie. And she was. She was really hot. You got to find her. Page, it's please. in the early on. There's only early one on? chapter that has all the dead people in it. Okay. Oh, There's a chapter to my two sisters. That's a different dead chapter. Is it death and comedy? That it, it, it is. Are closely related, that uh, chapter? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got to find You'll see Aunt Millie. She's hot. I got to find Aunt Millie. Is that uh, Aunt Millie? Is that yeah, Millie? So, no, that's my Aunt Timmy, and I'm looking like, uh, you know, oh, yeah, I she... got a comb over. Yeah. No, that's my mother. Oh. Well, she's hot too, Bob. That's really uh, nice. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> that would spark some interest in her. She likes attractive people. You look like Harold she, Ramis in this. I, I, it's a, that's a compliment. Yeah, you're young Harold Ramis. Is this Aunt Millie? Uh, no, that's my Bobby. She she wasn't hot. Well, then Aunt Millie's not in that chapter. Yeah, she is. She's Ooh. it's really, before that. It's the brothers. It's brothers and go before that. All right. Uh, Aunt I'll, Millie. Uh, no, that's Aunt no. Tammy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Jesus. All right, that's chapter before. Uh, yeah, it's chapter before it. Here's Aunt Millie. Aunt Millie. No, yeah, that's Aunt oh, Millie. We got to be hot. Yeah, yeah, Aunt Millie's hot. hot. You'd jerk off to that. <laughs> yeah, I gotta right. be honest. I'd give Aunt Millie a deep dick and <laughs> I know. I, I know would you would. Deep dick, Aunt Millie. You, you'd like her a lot, right? It's Betty Page kind of shit, yeah. right? Damn, yeah. Like yeah. good hair to pull. <laughs> well, what happened was she's she, pinup material. She she was, and she was she wanted nice. also she wanted to get a better offer, and she got my uncle. And he was kind of good looking, and he smoked cigarettes, like tons of them. And she just, I think she just yacked at him a lot, and he got upset, and he had a double heart attack Jesus. in the front and the back. And then they just wow. got him out of there. And she talked to his painting for 70 years. Wow. She was sweet. I never tagged her. Did she really no, talk huh? to the painting? Yeah, she talked to the painting. Oh, the fire alarm. Oh, yeah, the fire alarm. Does that, but you guys don't care if the fire alarm is No. We've got to show it. We just always hope somebody opens the door while it's happening yeah. so we can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> but what if there was a fire in the building? What would you do? Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> so just the, the easiest way out of here? How else is this going to end at this yeah, point? Exactly. This is never going to try to run. God. What happened here? I was, you know, I don't I've known know you guys happened. forever. Well, this now, is never going to end. It ended in 2008. <laughs> <laughs> this was, this was <laughs> through nine incarnations. It's going to be never on, supposed to last this long. It's going to be on wireless. It's going to be like a Marconi shit. In this form, I mean. Yeah. We, we always were great about... All right, this is getting boring. Let's blow ourselves up and reinvent ourselves. Yeah, but this right. one has been way too long. You were so excited when you came across the street, came to this place. Oh, yeah. This was like the That's thing to come to. Four years ago now. I know. Well, you could, you'd be like 90 doing this show. Well, yeah. because people will just call in and go, fuck it. you. They'll be like this old, old angry people. Why is everyone running in the studio? Fire. What happens? They, <laughs> someone pull the alarm. What happens? There's a fire drill. So, <laughs> but the whole Everybody's thing running going, in the studio. If you have to get in the studio or they don't let you if stay you're in the, the studio, building. you're right. allowed to stay. Oh, wait, it's a fire drill? That means they gotta. Oh, everyone's leaving, look. They're doing this during morning fucking. <laughs> what <laughs> fucking <laughs> asshole? Right. <laughs> what would happen? Oh, yeah, what, children? Yeah. What if it's no, a... <laughs> how about that? Fucking no. <laughs> no. <laughs> we have a fire. Do you? <laughs> See you down there. Because they have nothing else to do, these people. There are people that, that work on this floor. I don't know what they do, so yeah. I guess they gotta do the fire drill thing. I think they, it's the building, justify, though, right? Justify their jobs. It happened as I was coming in. And uh, yeah. nobody seems to move or care. <laughs> no, it's just, I mean it's just it's New York City. We're used to, but you gotta be you gotta be ready for something if something. I happens. figure I can find That's a stairwell and, and knock a few people yeah. over if I have yeah. to. I it's know not what like to do. It's not like there's a lot of people with with knives in the lobby. <laughs> right. I don't. 
Mm-hmm. So a lot of um, so Bob, there's going to be some jokes in this book, right? Yeah, there's a lot. All there's right, a, good. It's a it's a funny book. So that when is it out? It's out uh, yesterday. It started. It's How can a, we it's all have over. These copies? We, we don't have real copies. I got real copies. We brought them. Oh, okay. There's a hard one right there. Oh, that's my cock. Sorry. No, that's oh, my <laughs> yes. Um, my right there. He's pointing at my ass. Yeah. <laughs> because he's putting it in. I never saw your ass. I might have though. Tonight. You've shown your ass. Uh, please, yes. You've shown everything. Yeah. Shown yeah. You've an seen ass. every body part <laughs> of Jimmy. Yeah. You yeah. like you like uh, being naked around people, right? <laughs> Not necessarily. It all depends. Mm. You what? know. But yeah. porn people and stuff, you've done a bunch. You've, you've hosted those shows and everybody's naked. I've hosted two porn awards. He, t- yeah, but... he, he tagged some girl with Ron Jeremy. Yeah, mm-hmm. that I have a picture of. Wow. Same time. I saw that picture. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. I, I, I know, Well, you know, the famous, not famous in my life, my kids uh, know the story, which is that when you texted me thinking I was some Uh-oh. girl that was going to jerk you off. Yes, that's uh, right. It's a popular story. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Excuse me, man. Renowned. I think it was in Highlights Magazine. You need to get the uh, security people. Oh, hey, what happened? Hey, tell me. I wish they would tell us not. This to is the, this is is going to be wild. I just want to let you know these guys are all hiding from the fire drill. Yeah, I oh, think you need man. to know that. that. that, that kid, leave the this building? guy, the, fat, the one behind, behind the, door. the door, he's hiding. He's, I was hiding. He's hiding. I was on Full House. Can They're I say? They're hiding. Yeah. <laughs> Full House. They're not even so. on the radio show. Is this? Yeah. Are you making people leave? No, no, no. Oh, oh, so it's one of those. Okay. Could you make some people leave? Is it just so talent will perish? Yes. Not me, no, but a couple of Make sure of the people go. that need to know know that there's three or four in here that are hiding from they, the they fire. They do yeah. not need okay. to be in here. They're avoiding the fire drill. Let's get and back to our They're fucking around with matches. Interview. Thank you. But it's <laughs> safe, right? It's safe. <laughs> it's safe. Thank you. Uh, Dirty Daddy's out by Harper Collins. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, there there's you go. a copy. Nice little plug. <laughs> I, uh, we'll I give her this got, copy. We'll give her the No, that's a good one to keep. That doesn't have the dedication of my mother, so it's even more moving when I give you a card. And the thank yous to Opie and Anthony. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna. it's coming out in the reprinting. There's going to be pictures of you running. fucking my Aunt Millie. <laughs> <laughs> is there, is, where's, where's the hard copy? Do we it's have right one? out the door. There's a yeah. nice publicist from we Harper know. Collins in the building. Now, you were part of the Aristocrats in, yeah. what year was that, 2007? Seven, seven? Wow. That's when we all realized you were dirty. Yeah, so I don't know right. why but they you, still... You knew that before that, didn't you? Or was that was the um, first time I was started to hang out more? No, I did the virus tour. That was after. Uh, yeah. after All that. around that same time, we realized that wow, this guy is actually you know a blue comic. And I, but I didn't even. I just wanted to be funny, and I guess right. I'm, uh, that's what I thought I was. Oh, what is that? See what happened? Oh, look at the difference. And I'll wow, sign them. It's actually good. It's all nice. the pages are laminated, so you can good. come on them. That's, yes, <laughs> I made the book out of wax. It's coming out in the suppository too. That's, that's lovely. Yeah. I love a good smelling How, book. How's Thank the, you. I love asking you about your love life every time you're in here. Yeah, where, there's, where there's nothing. There's nothing. I, I just nothing trying to meet on. people, but I've I've told a friend of mine that uh, we can double date with in 2014, but that's the ages of the girls that were dead. Oh, <laughs> right. See, that's what I was trying to do. That that's yeah. all I do is write pedophile jokes. That's <laughs> literally so. I guess if I write those jokes, it's not right. It's not writing. It's just yeah. saying bullshit. Exactly. But it's if I reciting, if I reciting, you're just saying some. Yeah. Dumb shit Being that comes facts. out of my mouth. Oh. <laughs> I just uh, I just watched an episode of Full House the other day. It was an early, very early one. Why did you watch it? I don't know. It was on, and I just was like captivated by watching you. Were you alone? Doing things. Yeah, I was naked and just jacking. Of course. Uh, you can only watch the first couple of seasons to get. But Stam- Stamos is fucking hair was. Yeah. An ama- it was an entity unto itself. It could have had a spinoff. It was so he- just big. It was, it was Brenda Vaccaro. Hair. But yes. yeah. Joan Jett. His yes. hair was Joan well Jett. thought out, though. Yeah. It really was. He worked on it so long. Did he? It, oh, my God. He, he flipped it under. Have. He had brushes with different kinds of attachments and shit. Curlies and things. And yep. Yeah, yeah. He rolled it under. It fantastic. And you were, uh, apparently, uh, you had to clean the house. Well, that's all I did And you were there. dancing to some song and, oh. and, 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 and bumping each other's asses. And, I can't even believe and doing, that. It was like, I was just looking and going, wow, he made a lot of money doing that. Well, <laughs> I, I watch it and I can't even think that I... Did it? That you, know? you did it, yeah. But then I, there's a thing in here about that. About it's called parenting my own and other people's kids, and they're making me tell this one story, which I can tell it right here as it is in the book. But yeah. I couldn't tell it. I've been having to tell it all, you know, buffered for oh, all right, this. I was right. on the View yesterday. They wanted me to tell it, and I told it. They, they uh, it, it, instead of uh, Ashley and Mary Kate for Michelle. Uh, as a three-year-old kid, they oh. gave me a doll to talk to for rehearsal. A rubber doll, not even plastic, like a test dummy. Like a, it looked like a like a porn doll. It uh-huh. was just missing the 
the stuff. Sure. You know, all those things. You ever done that? You ever been with one of those things? Well, not not one that I would hold that would mimic a, a four-year-old, but yeah. I've, uh, <laughs> good have, I, have I ever? Yeah. Sure. I, 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 yeah. I mean, You're I, not I, attracted I, to young kids, right? Not even, not even his friends. Bob, come on, this, I haven't been with the guys in a while. This Fair is, question. It's just us, right? Yeah. I'm, the, I'm asking Jim. Uh, I haven't seen Jim in a while. The oh guy wrote, God. "I want you to jerk me off." That's oh, sorry. I thought you were a chick. No, but I jerk think me I told off. the story about awful club soda Kenny one time when I was opening for Dice in the late nineties. <laughs> Vegas shit. was the family weekend where the Dice and Kenny would bring their families. So Kenny said to me one time before the trip, "You would never hurt a child, would you?" <laughs> Holy shit. What do you think you Why were? Why did you feel like I literally almost, that, that would have changed. I almost quit the tour. I almost quit working with Dice. Uh, wow. That. That's Maybe funny. it's your look. I know. You yeah. know how hard it was to not yell yes into a bullhorn? <laughs> no, I'm not attracted to children. I can't so stand them. I'm happy. I'm sorry I asked you that. That's a great <laughs> question. No, that's a fair <laughs> question. I was, I'm going to actually put that on my sampler. I'm going to get a, uh, put that in my car as an audio who button. answers that any other way? But <laughs> exactly. I think you know, the tent in my uh, pants is the answer yeah. you're looking for. <laughs> well, who told you? So back so, to that story. Yeah. Right. So uh, it, all the kids that were on the show were very young then. Yeah. They were like, yeah. you know, sure. young, young. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were up in their schoolroom or in the trailer. And uh, I was there with just the crew. It was mostly guys, a couple of ladies. But uh, I had the rubber doll. I'm in the bedroom. I have to do the, to, you know, Anthony, the, oh, the, yes. the, the, the morality play at the right, show. the little speech. Shit, the size of music comes in. You start <laughs> talking. And so there wasn't at that moment, but that was the scene. So I'm sure. in her room, and I'm going, honey, you know, I'm holding the doll. I'm looking into a rubber doll's head. Now, I'm, you know, I was always a comedian since I was 17. So I said, I can't do this. Can't we just read it? Do I have to do this? I went, no, we need it for blocking cameras need to see it you need to see it so i'm like oh, talking boy. to it you know you can't do this you can't do that and then i just grabbed it you know and i just threw it on the bed and i just started pretending you know that <laughs> oh i was my God. right so the crew's watching this and they're laughing their asses off but i did it kind of slow i didn't do it you know i took my time with uh -huh. it i didn't want to do anything to offend anybody <laughs> At first, I was like dancing with it, and then I was like, you know, laying in the bed talking to it. Well, foreplay, sure. Yeah, exactly. And then um, and it was very lifelike. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? Come on. That's crazy. Uh, you, you, can, you can cut this out, right? No. no so I like it. so one of the moms this is a punchline. So one of no. the moms comes down, and this is all true, and she goes, uh, you got to stop us right now. This is on the monitors. The kids can see this in the classroom. The kids are watching you do this. <laughs> oh, and I'm literally just, I'm just going, you know, like Lenny and Mice and Men. It's not right. a good thing when I'm doing it. Wow. And she has a good reference to it. It just gets worse. Uh -huh. Sure like is. Doing it. There's something wrong with me. And then, and then she said, the kids are watching this. I said, well, turn off the monitors. I'm working. Right. right. And that was my, my yeah, excuse why? was that I'm working. I, I consider that You're to be working. Instead it was of, work. And, and instead of stopping. I did stop after them to she turn came off down. the monitors. What but class? Kept, what classrooms? Uh, they would have a, the kids on a sitcom or oh, a they're television getting, show. Okay. They're yeah, getting, yeah. They're getting uh, learning. Yeah, I thought mm. it was they're doing book learning. I wasn't sure yeah. of some weird closed circuit thing with public schools or something. No, that would have been awesome, <laughs> that would right? Be amazing. So on some educational channel. <laughs> Bob is famous too, man. If you walk around with Bob Saget, oh yeah, it is unbelievable how uh, recognizable you are to everybody. It's, and it's gotten more because I'm older and because it just happened. And the shows, new well, audiences like. A three-year-old, sixteen-year-old, an entire family demo yeah. to the dying grandmother will have different things that they know me from, and then the father will say something like, "I like your entourage." Hey. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh -huh. hey, don't fuck my daughters, and and he says, uh, "Guys have said that to me. Don't fuck my daughter and their daughters next to them." Jesus, wow. and they're young, and I'm like, uh, "Dude," because then I turned. Then oh, wow. this. I bet your father said that to you. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he said it uh, earlier in my life. <laughs> Not. Later would not have worked. <laughs> Does that I, a lot of tragedy? <laughs> and I want a real, I want a real answer. Does that ever get bothersome? I mean, you can't, you just can't walk around. I, it, I've gotten kind of good at it, yeah. and it was funny because Stamos and it, it's cool. Forty five minutes. I'm in a program to not drop his name, so it's been, <laughs> it's, a, it's a long time for me not to mention him. Because it is fun to be recognized, obviously to a point. It, but. It's nice, and but it's not. I mean, people go, they want to be a celebrity or something. That's just like mm. fucking stupid. I mean, what do you, what do you want? You want to be famous and rich, which is what a lot of people want, right? Instead of maybe be funny or be talented or yeah, do yeah. something. Well, so you don't need any talent now to be famous. No, though. you don't. You just go on something and give somebody a rose or Kim Kardashian. What, yeah. what, what does she? Do? I don't know what she does still. She well, got I guess porn she, tape. She took Ray J's. Is that Ray J, right? 
She yeah. took a big yeah. penis. Oh. Right. She earned her fame. That's yeah. almost like being yes. at the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Yeah, I mean, it's sure, like a balloon sure. coming it's down Main <laughs> earning it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it, her and but, Harris earned it. But she's a uh, she does. Uh, I guess she's a fashion. No, person. she's not. I don't know. Everyone else does that stuff for her. I've known her since she's a kid because I was at the. Uh, oh really? I, I hosted the uh, Winter Olympics. Remember, I Tracy did it one time. Do you remember this? Uh, there were like different mm -hmm. comedians that came in. I hosted the first four nights of the Winter Olympics oh. right after 9-11. So it was like at, in Salt Lake. So oh. she was there with her whole family. She was a kid, you know. But I have the video of what I did to her. Because <laughs> uh, nobody cared. It was just <laughs> right. my, my Jewish wiener didn't mean nothing. Hump, hump they wouldn't even put that on the web. <laughs> they didn't even care if they got a sex tape out of me. <laughs> my penis is already blurred. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just naturally. Yeah, you take it out. Yeah, it's yeah. like scrambled eggs. Flurry. Scrambled eggs. <laughs> <laughs> we had a. Uh, somebody <sighs> called earlier with a, uh, a sighting. Oh, right. Yeah. I wish they that guy would call saw back. you at JFK. Uh, and um, yes, in the knoll. Yeah, <laughs> and you, <laughs> he he came up to you and said, "Did you ever think of fucking those Olsen twins?" I don't like that said, one as a verb with them. Well, yeah. Oh, we warn people. That's that's the yeah. one thing you can't joke. I get the with Bob about. about. I know. We, it's well, because I actually show. know them. They're actually smart and, yeah. and nice. So but there's like, more to it than that. Guys, just, sorry, he sorry. Said, and then he said, you. "You turned around and said, in front of everybody, why don't you go fuck your dog?'" <laughs> I did not. That's, that's what, what he, he said. said. It's impossible. I would yes. not say. No. It. Yes, I see him alive, but not lie. You sure? Yeah, he swears by it. It's a lie. I would never say. Why don't you go fuck your dog? He's a blind guy. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> well, no, I don't think I said that. No, I don't think I, I don't right. come back with that. I usually say something like, especially in public, I go, I, I can't, I can't go there. Sorry, yeah, something what like that. Do? Right. I don't even want to get caustic with people because then they get all creepy and weird and upset. I don't yeah, want that. Yeah. That's I want to live the dream that I'm just a nice person. That's yeah. one of the few things that's off limits with you, right? The yeah. Olsen twins. What else is on that short list? Well, I don't really like cruelty and stuff. I don't like do racial stuff. Right. It's funny that Don Rickles is a friend of mine, and his whole thing is like, hey, the Chinese guy, look at the Chinese yeah, guy. Yeah, and yeah. you look at the audience, and there's no Chinese guy there. So oh, you realize so he's just spotting the person. When I say that, I mean the actor spotting. Not uh -huh. right. And he just picks on a guy, and he goes, oh, my shirts will be back. And the guy's but not there's there. There's no Chinese guy. He's so fucking funny. <laughs> Rickles is amazing. He's so funny. Did you see him when he was here? I have not. I've never seen Rickles. No. If he's coming back, I think. He wants TV to do some and all that, obviously, but... Is I'll, he still I'll, doing I'll set it? you up with all that. Is I he still do doing that. it? It's the least I can do for not putting you in the book. <laughs> yeah, you exactly. might be in the book. I'm not. I don't remember. I swear to God, the oh, virus no. might be in there. I don't. Oh, I think I had it. Uh, yeah, Bob. the editor. Bill about. Cosby, I, Jeff Ross. Okay, okay. Please don't read the book. <laughs> I saw um, Ed McMahon. I, I did see but Rickles. I, I love you Dolly, guys. Dolly Sagan makes the book. That's my mom, though. <laughs> oh man. You know what? Everybody that dies. Right here, right here, right here, right here. Listen, everyone that dies is in the book. You guys have never died. You died. Nice. And we, every day we do. <laughs> Hot Millie. Aunt Millie. The building's on fire, by the way. Yeah, yeah, the building's burning, and we're talking about Hot Aunt Millie. But, I, but he's, uh, he's a. I'll, uh, you got to see Rickles if you can. He's I just, saw him once. Where'd you see him? In Vegas. We were doing, me and Jim Florentine were working with Dice. There was three of us doing the Stardust. And we saw, uh, one, one time table? we were the late, what's that? You heard us? A crap, are you saying Craps Table? Yeah. No, we were doing the, uh, I'm just going to ask that a little bit. No, we were doing the, <laughs> at one point it was Corman, Harvey Corman and Tim Conway doing the early show. We were doing the late show. Wow. And then one time it was Rickles doing the early show. So me and Florentine went in and, uh, we watched some of the show. And it was so funny when the yeah. black guy who works, I guess, works with him, came out or whatever, and he just he probably went the bags, and it was just oh, so yeah. fucking funny. But he took a photo with us backstage, and he was really nice. He's, he, he's an unusual guy. Is he one of those guys that hasn't really has been working the same act for like fifty years? Yeah, he That's adds very to it. Rare. He's got songs in it that he does, but yeah, it's just tiny little mm -hmm. changes. And then he says stuff to the audience that no one else can get away with it, or, or uh -huh. I wouldn't want anybody else to. He calls a guy for some reason. He goes, "All right, shut up, you fag werewolf." <laughs> and I'm like, shit. and I'm sitting with Stamos. We're like, what? What, what does, does he that just mean? say? Right. And then we I talk to him after, and he's like, "Yeah, people are laughing at that." They like that one. Fag werewolf. <laughs> what does it mean? It means that the guy gets like with 
with uh, hair like Wolfman Jack yeah. or something. Uh, yeah, okay. It's a werewolf, but he's a homosexual. Right, okay. <laughs> and now that's it, the only way to insult a werewolf. Now it makes sense. <laughs> I, I, think, I think that's what he's saying. Werewolves are notoriously homophobic. Right. <laughs> they don't, you call a werewolf a Jew, it doesn't matter they to them. If you call him a fag, they immediately get angry. Are you yeah. saying there's no gay werewolves? Well, you know, kind of like Ahmadinejad said about Iran. We know that they're existing, but werewolves deny that they right, exist. Right, right. There's no yeah. homosexuals. <laughs> And then there's uh, the, the book has the uh, Rodney stories in it. You know all those fucked up things. He was he, good to you, right? Yeah, really good. Uh, it was if you got too close to them, then it would get kind of weird because he because he, he would you know he smoked a, a lot of dope and he was yeah. and and he was a friend of mine and we would talk about real stuff if he would if he felt insecure and stuff. But then he would uh, I don't know he wanted you to do well, but then he had you know he was competitive in some ways as mm -hmm. much as he was also kind of like a godfather of taking care of young comics he really loved young comics wanted to help Jim Carrey he had Jim Carrey open for him once and Jim was just trying to experiment and not do his impressions mm -hmm. not do his all of his rubber body stuff and uh -huh. and he said uh, he, he said he would, you know let's gonna try some new stuff man and he, and he, he went up and just bombed before him. And it was a big show, somewhere big, and Jim did like 20 minutes and just bombed, and Rodney was like, that's okay, man, because Rodney didn't really care. <laughs> <laughs> he, just he was happy and, when you bombed. He slayed afterwards. Right, right. He just fucking destroyed. He was like, the funniest thing he would do in his set when Rodney was having a good set, which was a lot, because the jokes were so fast, and he, he would take a couple things about it. He was self-aware. He was like, I got a lot of fucking jokes, all right? That was one. And the other one, he would go, I'm fucking funny, all right? And then he'd say that to the audience. And people would just cheer. Yeah, he, was, yeah. he just knew he was just knocking every ball out of the park. Dice said he got weird with him, though, because like, you know, he helped Andrew so much. And he yeah, said that he, he wanted him to, to do something with him at, in the arenas, work together. And Roddy's like, what, you think I need you to help me now? And oh, I said, no, I want to just do right. it. I yeah, love you. Yeah, that was that kind of thing. But he was like, he kind of got like, well, I don't need you. Wow. We did a, we did a thing once, and I, I didn't have a gig or anything. I was just trying to get somewhere. And it was me, Harry Basil, who did a yeah, lot of yeah, stuff, I'm... and Bob Schimmel, and... Um, Bobby, wow. Ah, uh, yeah. He was funny. <laughs> he was really funny. So we're standing out, and Rodney had us play Long Beach. Rodney hosted the show, so it was kind of like a replication of his young comedian show. Mm. And there were four of us. We're trying to think who the fourth was. It was a funny person. Um might have been Slayton, but I don't know. But B B Schimmel and I and Rodney are talking. Rodney brought, all he wanted to do was bring a hot dog cart with the hot dogs with the skins and serve them to us before the show. So we had, the prerequisite was you had the two hot dogs with chili. He had the person, that was his way of treating us. They're going to be good, man. They're going to have the you know, chili in them. <laughs> that was, he's excited. <laughs> and then and Schimmel and I were talking and with Rodney, and, and we were just talking about going on. Rodney was like, well, why, why am I fucking doing this? I'm hosting the show, and these, and these guys think they're stars. So he was kind of putting us down while we were eating hot dogs. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and then he worked. He did it like he was doing some live television show. It was in Long Beach for like right. a thousand people. <laughs> And he was killing himself. He was he was sweating <laughs> oh, out shit. hot dogs. He eat a couple of hot dogs. He got on stage. He said, "Oh, this next guy is really great, man." And then <laughs> Schimmel goes up. He goes, "What the fuck did I do this for?" <laughs> <laughs> I feel sick. <laughs> funny guy. Very funny guy. <laughs> yeah, I, we met him. I mean, they interviewed him. Uh, it was yeah, Ron's new on the show. And yeah, yeah. I, heard, I said mm -hmm. nothing during the interview. There's no time I ever met him. I wish I would have known him. Kennison, and I wish I would have known him too. I was. I actually. Met Sam before uh, anybody in L.A. had. I, I I met him in Houston, so I actually oh, wow. helped tee up his first in, uh, spot at the comedy store. I told mm. him, sat next to Mitzi and said, "You got to watch this guy. He's really good." I mean, he didn't need me to do that, but uh, but right. he, he he got the it spot. Didn't hurt though. No, it was it was he was so fucking funny when I met him. He had just been in the Houston Chronicle because he chained himself to a telephone pole in a diaper and a crown of thorns. And he was on the front of the entertainment section that said he'd been persecuted like Christ by the club owner. Oof. It was the Comedy Works in Houston. And he was like, he literally was, he did the whole thing where his eyes were rolled back. Wow. And he had, had blood coming down his head from a comedy club. <laughs> but what did the comedy club do to him? They wouldn't put him on. They got mad at him because that's of it. What he oh, was. So it wasn't his material. It, it was. It, it was. was. It, yeah, that's why they wouldn't put him on. Oh, he was, they were censoring his actual act. They just felt like it was too edgy for the. Club. He was saying it was so weird because when he started, you know, he was a, a you know the whole story about him. He was a you know did gospel tent things, mm -hmm. he, fake healings and shit. You know, he and his brother. And yeah. Is there all any that. footage of that anywhere? 
West I don't something, think right? so. Fuck, would I love it, to see that? Yeah. It would be VHS. If, I don't even know if it would be VHS. Mm. It would probably be like, right. what the fuck beta. would it be? <laughs> beta. Yeah. yeah. Is Bill still real around? To real. Yeah. Bill's around. They're supposed to be doing a movie about it. Right. Yeah, who'd they get? They got, uh, was it Josh? Oh, Josh they, Gad? Oh, yeah, yeah he talked about it? that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I heard of. Yeah, Josh, Josh Gad. Gad. Okay, he was yeah. in here telling us. Yeah, he's taking that on. And I heard yeah. Jay Roach was directing it. I think that's what I heard, but I don't know. Oh, he did the Borat movies? Yeah. I loved uh, Kennison growing up, man. I, oh, hope, I hope they so do a good job with funny. that. It was unbelievable. I was on that first Young Comedian special. Yeah. Room, and I, I had like a 12 minute killer set. But Sam had a a, a fifteen minute killer set, and it ended up being twelve minutes, and uh. it ended up being three minutes. Oh shit! And so that was kind of interesting, and I went right before him, so that was kind of the way the show went. Oh, it started wow. to like That's escalate, and then Sam just took the show in, in post. I remember and, that. He, and and in the room, I'm not yep. saying, he just fucking slayed the whole it was room because you live in the desert. That was that whole. It was thing. one of those things too. The next day, we all were just quoting Kinnison's act from that night. He it became was, an an overnight since not just a star he was out of just yeah. huge no one had ever seen that and, 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 and it was like a prophet because he had taken all that ministry stuff and this was the resin of it right. this was the shit yeah, that yep. came out of all those years of having to go if you believe in the lord and then he <sighs> turned that into the hypocrisy of the whole thing the cameraman can give him a sandwich right. you know all that shit go to where the food is right huge anyone else have a better night than him going from almost like <clears throat> Nobody uh, or Dice whatever. Was Dice, huge. Dice, Dice had a fucking Dice, lit it up. A big night too. A lot of guys on overnight. Carson, probably Freddie Prinze. Right, right. Man, Dave but Cook kind of happened. He worked really hard for a long time, but then it kind of happened fast. Mm -hmm. But I mean, one night where all of a sudden everyone right. the next day yeah. is talking about you, and uh, you yeah. can't have that nowadays because it's all on demand and this and that. Yeah, we come from a time where you all watch the same fucking show at the exact same time. Yeah, you can't. I mean, uh, Kevin Hart was like this long process to become. I mean, right. that guy sells movie. Yeah, he's, concerts. he's great. He really is one of the genuine articles that right. exist. Mm -hmm. He well, Kevin. I was just thinking about him too. But he did the Shack roast, and that made him big. Like that helped him with he had big black crowds, and then he started crossing over with the films. It was like, a, but it was a slower build. Like Kevin wasn't one event and done. Like, you know no. what I mean? He was just a bunch forever. of things, cumulative. Yeah, it's just hard to do now. There's too yeah. many channels, and people are watching whenever they want. It makes it yeah. harder. And there's no sitcom person that comes out because nobody <laughs> really gives a shit. Mark you know? Price. <laughs> I hate sitcoms. I <laughs> I hate sitcoms. Is Skippy? Yeah. yeah. Skippy, yes. <laughs> I have his cell number in my phone. And I, I, sometimes I just don't take things out of my iPhone that I had on my Mac Plus. You probably <laughs> should. <laughs> and it just still cross-pollinates from things. My Palm Pilot. <laughs> Old contact. <laughs> yeah. Please call me. And then I would write Mark Price Skippy underneath it. Yeah. Under company. <laughs> right. You got to do it that way. Wait, what that? <laughs> Yeah. Or something else. Uh, oh, yeah. We saw Rodney at the end of his life doing stand-up. There was rumors his wife was feeding him lines and stuff, too. So. Really? And he was still pulling it off. Yeah, she was helping him do stuff. But mm -hmm. he I don't was know doing it. He was still writing stuff, too. Well, why wouldn't he just retire? People don't do that. <laughs> Plus, they he didn't make it till his 50s. In 59, he did Caddyshack. That's what's kind of the Is point. Is that how old he was when he did Caddyshack? That's, uh, it's in the book. That was like a poignant thing to me because I'm going to be 58. He was 59. Wow. Wow. That's a long fucking career. That's J Jack uh, Jacob Cohen and then Jack Roy and then Rodney Dangerfield. Wow. So he was three guys. And I he did aluminum siding. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't mean to put that in the air conditioning That's heating the same uh, realm. Thing. You're exactly. just fucking with metal. Did you ever go to Radio Shack? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it was always Granger. <laughs> Had to go to Granger and pick up some shit. Get some copper tubing. <laughs> get some fucking tar and get up on the roof and fucking they've got a leak under the unit and oh. Mm. Did you it like sucked. doing it? Like I was no. a deli clerk. <laughs> you hated it. I you didn't even pause. Hated it. I always knew I had to do something else. How lo how old were you when you started getting it? Was it like a dad's business? Or no, something? I just needed a job. You know, I was in my twenties and uh, my brother was doing it. Were you married? So I no, not yet. Not at that point. So I just went in and, you know, started started doing fucking air conditioning. And then you just get stuck in there. And you see the guys unloading the trucks. And they're fucking in their 50s. And you're just like, oh, God, no. And it's like no country no. for old men, right? You're climbing in an air vent. Yeah. And you can fall through the roof, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You're, all, you're in constant uh, danger of, of dying <laughs> or getting a, a severe injury uh, all the time. You're, you're working with... 
in essence, are giant razor blades all day long. And chemicals and shit. Yeah, you chemicals. Even... And then, and then uh, because you're putting in the heating and air conditioning system, there's no heat or air conditioning where you're working. So it's just either fucking blazing hot or freezing cold all the time. So it's the Holocaust. It's terrible. Yes, it was. <laughs> it was worse than the Holocaust. <laughs> I'm, I'm going on record as saying that. Did anybody ever accidentally turn it on while you were in there? Uh, no, I don't <laughs> think so. I, uh, Bob's hoping. I've had people fall Bob's through the ceiling. The worst, yeah. when, you're, when you're up in the attic, you got to stay on the beams. <laughs> yeah. Up there, the joists. And uh, if you hit the sheetrock in the middle, your foot just goes right through. And so, if a guy has girth to him, and, yeah. he, and some of these guys are big, uh huh, they they're like they can just fucking fall through fall the roof, fall right through, <laughs> right through. That's terrible. It's terrible. It was an awful job. Hmm. Awful. How long did you do it? Oh God, from my early twenties until my, uh, I guess, mid thirties. So a good, I guess, you know, almost fifteen years. That long, Jeez. yeah. It was just I, I went from one company to another company, and then you'd go to the next company and you'd talk yourself up to make some more money, make it sound like you know a lot more than you do. I did, I did as little work as I needed to do. Is it all freon? You just add freon. Yes, it needs a little freon. <laughs> and your compressor. It's always a compressor. Yeah. There's a compressor problem. It's your line set has a leak. Your your condensate pump your has coil, a leak. There's a copper coil that goes out. Yes. The coil is always the problem. Sounds like some gynecologist. Just your coil's frozen. <laughs> it's frozen. Your 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 fan, your squirrel cage isn't running in the attic. Squirrel so your cage. coil froze up. Yeah, they do get up there. Mm. They get in your system, so the squirrels. Well, they call a squirrel cage the fan in the blower unit in the attic. So uh, it's like when that, that breaks, before. the coil freezes up. Okay. And you can blow your compressor out because it he overheats. Has squirrels? I thought I had a squirrel fucking with my thing and trying to eat through it yeah. up there on the roof. Can they do that? Do they? Uh, yeah, they they could ruin things. The I'm gonna ask you a lot knows. of questions. No, I had this. the same thing, but it wasn't yeah. a squirrel on my roof. It was a gerbil through the toilet paper tube I was oh. holding. <laughs> See, that's different. <laughs> can a gerbil get into it? Yeah, because they can get in your asshole, so they sure. can definitely yeah, get yeah. in. You the have toilet to paper. lead them a little bit. What you do is you smear a little brie cheese on the inside of the oh, tube of the toilet right, paper, and you right. shove it in your asshole, and those rascals run right in. The can worst you? thing were bees, because you go up in the attic, and they were just like there'd be a bee's nest, and it means the, they're getting older. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the the homeowner doesn't want to hear like uh, there's bees up there I can't do this you know they just want the job done so you just go in and get so attacked get by there, bees and you'd have to go up with a can of raid and spray the bees and, and work in between them Jeez. trying to sting you and in the the reek Sounds of awful. insecticide it was terrible where would you see the bees the most were they inside the attic in or the outside attic. yeah inside how would you know you get up there and just start to hear zzz. yes. They just fly around you. Hornets, too? Yes, hornets. And it's all sticky shit. It's like a yes. little stalactite of rock or oh, something, right? Horrible. Yeah. Did you ever get stung? Yeah. You did? Yeah, it was awful. I wouldn't have done it. Job. I would have said, I'm not working with bees. I had to. Yeah. Get rid of the bees. Oh, I had I had a guy that skunk removed. That was his job wow. at my house. Right. I smelled like dead skunks. He goes up and he finds them. He's a tracker. He knows where it is. Coyotes had ripped open two skunks in my yard. Wow. Oh my god! Up the hill, and this guy comes in Damn. with hazmat bags, and comes in, and I said, "You're gonna go up there?" He says, "Yeah, that's what I do, Bob." And he goes up and he just takes the dead skunks and puts them in the thing, wow. and then goes home. I said, "How do you get rid of the smell?" He says, "It really doesn't ever come out." Wow! So that's never. Like, that's a fucked up guy. That's you know like, who I'd love to interview? The two coyotes guy. that made that mistake. Oh fuck! Have to sit down with them for a half hour. Right. What they happened? Don't know. I told him they don't look right. He said they did. I'll never eat that shit again. Right? Maybe they like it. No, they don't. No, no. It's the yeah. most abhorrent smell in nature. It's like it teaches no animal fucks with the skunk twice. No. That or a porcupine. Yes. You see them with the quills in their nose, and they're trying to get them out. There should be a the, combo of those two guy. animals. You can't, you can't feel bad. Fuck it or be around yeah, it. I didn't like, mean there's an animal you can fuck. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, well. There's not an animal you can't. You can hold that little rascal's hindquarters. Yeah, it's rat fucking. That's, a, that's where the term. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, uh, what is it? Pigeon holing. That's yeah, another yeah. one. I, I, I can quiet a room. No, no I'm actually, we're actually oh, thinking no, you're no. correct. I'm confused because uh -huh. someone said you had to be out of here at 10 for another interview. I don't know if that's true. You're doing press today. Yeah, I'm in press day. Oh, press. I like being here. Um, so, I don't know. I'll go away. 
No, you don't have uh, to. Trust me. We're, we're going to take a break either way, and you're either going to go on to another interview or continue. Well, I love seeing you guys. Yes, absolutely. Well, you didn't have to respond with that. I actually got a little early today because i got to go back to uh, the dentist. We're leaving now? Well, I have to. Yeah, after I you have to go to the dentist. Didn't Joe Rogan take over the show once, and, and you guys all left? Oh, it happens did. a lot. I don't yeah. Know. yeah. People <laughs> take over this thing? Oh, yeah. You want to take over? <laughs> I'll do it for like 10 minutes, and <laughs> you guys you are go. all leaving. Well, if he's leaving, then you got to stay. Gotta. Yeah, I'll Ants, stay. I don't, Ants, want, I, I don't want to go where I'm going. Uh, Wherever it is, it's not going to be this. Right, it's like it being out. with your family. Let's take a quick break. <laughs> Bob Saget, Dirty Daddy, is out. Uh, the Chronicles of a Family Man Turned Filthy Comedian. <laughs> they told me it's in Target. I'm like, it. I fucking... That's kind of cool, right? Kids can't... Re I was taking pictures at a book signing, yeah. and this little three-year-old's coming up holding the book. I'm like, get the book away from the kid. Right. It says Dirty Daddy. I mean, it's like, exactly. It looks like uh, The Catch a Predator. Yeah. And Bob, had... um, Bob is doing tonight a book signing at the 92nd Street Y. No, that was last night. Good, uh -oh. good, good. I got this good, yesterday. Good. It was good. It says tonight. Tonight is at uh, Barnes & Noble in oh, Union oh. Square. At yes. seven o'clock with Seth Herzog. Yeah, he's going to do the Q and A. He's going to do the moderating where he asks, he we talks about the book, and then we oh, I good. take questions from people, and then I I don't have sex with anyone though. Not, <laughs> this is not the reason for the tour. It's, okay. this, it's the book. What are you doing in Melbourne and Europe? Yeah, I'm going to Australia in May. I'm going to do wow. uh, Live Nation dates. I'm going to Melbourne, wow. Perth. Uh, Maybe you can find that plane if you're in Perth. Ah. Go for a swim they and said, see what you I can talk, find. I talked to a person there. They said that's where it is. It's right off the coast here. I said that'll that'll be fun, it's like Titanic. Yeah. Yes, so right. I'll fucking go, do my show in Perth and then go out to the ocean, try to save everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <Try to laughs> you, look for the kosher truck. meals. Right. In the, in the <laughs> <laughs> All right, we might continue with Bob Sag. We might not. I don't know. Well, in any case, uh, we'll good figure to see it out. You. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Dirty Daddy, go get Fuck. that book. Ain't it? Ain't it? The Opie and Anthony Show will be right back. On Sirius XM. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you'll be in the New York City area... No, no, you... Oh, sure. If you'll be in New York City on April 17th and want to be in the audience for the live unmasked interview with Opie and Anthony that Caroline's on Broadway, oh, go to SiriusXM.com slash unmasked or SiriusXM.com slash the Opie and Anthony channel by April 10th. To enter to win tickets. The, oh, it's with Ron Bennington. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be there with Slabo. Please, bring me presents. Check it out. Sirius XM invites you to spend your weekend with one of Hollywood's biggest players. Yo, what up? It's Jamie Foxx. All weekend long. It's your favorite moments from the Jamie Foxx Show. Welcome to my world. Jesse Jackson in the building, right? Chris Tucker's in the building. Thanks. Spike Lee's Spike in the building. Spike Lee's on radio. I'm your host, Jamie Foxx. Turn up. The Jamie Foxx Show Marathon, Saturday, 10 a.m. East, 7 a.m. West. On the Foxx Show. Sirius XM Foxx 96. Or listen on the Sirius XM app. It's the big tire event at your Ford dealer. And since Ford Techs sell a tire every four seconds, they could probably do their jobs with their eyes closed. Let's listen in on one and see how he does. Okay, someone's getting a P235 60R17, a perfect size for a 2012 Taurus. 20-inch, all-season tire, being inflated to the proper 35 pounds per square inch. Gotta be safe. Oh, customer, I gotta run. When you need tires, trust the Ford experts to know the right ones for your vehicle. During the big tire event, get up to $120 in mail-in rebates on select tires when you use the Ford Service Credit Card. And you'll always get the low price tire guarantee on the 13 name brands we sell, only at your Ford dealer. Subject to credit approval. Rebate by prepaid debit card. Competitive ad required for tire guarantee within 30 days. Other tire manufacturer rebate or offer cannot be combined with Ford Service Credit Card rebate or offer. See your participating Ford dealer for details through 53114. Hey guys, Tommy Z-Man here, your cigar guru at FamousSmoke.com with a delicious new cigar to tell you about called Kismet. Hey, I've been in the cigar industry for some time, and I know a great stick when I smoke one, and I know an even better deal when I see one, and boy, this is it. Now, the word Kismet means fate, and trust me when I say that the all-new Kismet sampler that we have for you is pure premium hand-rolled destiny. This awesome five-cigar sampler gift box has all five sizes. 
from a Robusto to the big boy 6x60. And to make it even sweeter, we're tossing in a Kismet cutter and lighter. All for the super low price of $29.95. That's 50% off retail price. This gorgeous stick is made from a blend of six Dominican age tobaccos and a shiny Corojo wrapper. The flavor and aroma is divine. Tempt fate and this deal may run out. So click the radio button now at FamousSmoke.com. That's FamousSmoke.com. Are you saving $1,000 a year on oil changes? You can with the OPS EcoPure, the best filtration system combining performance, ease of service, and rapid oil sample results in the industry. Your truck is your investment. Protect that investment. Call Artie at 203-346-1832 to find out about the OPS EcoPure, the only filtration system I'll use. Call 203-346-1832. Opie and Anthony are on social media, too. Now there's no reason to have real-life friends. Follow our hosts on Twitter at Opie Radio, at Anthony Cumia, and at Jim Norton. Their egos could use the boost. Every follower counts. I mean, when I was a little kid, I used to make believe, hey, the Billy Joel show. And now, here it is, for a limited time. Get 24-7 Billy Joel. The Billy Joel Channel. Five songs. Rare versions. I saw the lights go out on Broadway. Stories from Billy. All of the characters in that song actually were real people. John the Bar's friend of mine gets me my drinks for free. True. And music from his entire 50-year career. The Billy Joel Channel. Channel 4. And the Sirius XM app. Only on Sirius XM. Attention homeowners, Quicken Loans has some important information regarding the U.S. government's Home Affordable Refinance Program, or HARP. We've told you about HARP in the past, and nearly 3 million homeowners have already taken advantage of this money-saving program. But there are so many more of you who could be saving hundreds of dollars every month on your mortgage. Quicken Loans is here to help you save your money. The home loan experts at Quicken Loans fully understand the HARP guidelines. We'll work with you to understand your specific circumstances and strive to find the financial solution that's best for you. Then, we'll guide you through each step of the mortgage refinance process to make sure it's both simple and easy. If you weren't HARP eligible in the past, new guidelines could mean that now you are. Give us a call, and we'll give you a Quicken Loans mortgage review. It's simple and easy. To learn more, call 800-QUICKEN or go to quickenloans.com for a mortgage experience that's engineered to amaze. Important terms and conditions apply. Call us for cost information. Equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. Are you a smoker? Then this message from Smoke Remedy is for you. I smoked on and off for 30 years. I have a couple of young sons, and they were saying, Daddy, you've got to quit. We want you to live a long time. I stumbled on Smoke Remedy one day. I didn't think that something that you sprayed in your mouth would work after all the other things that I had tried. I started carrying the bottle around with me. I would spray when I would crave a cigarette. Everything that I tried to quit smoking failed until I got Smoke Remedy, and now I'm an ex-smoker. Smoke Remedy contains FDA-regulated homeopathic medicines that can stop your cravings for cigarettes and get rid of your desire to smoke. Smoke Remedy comes in an easy-to-use spray bottle. When you get the urge to smoke, spray Smoke Remedy into your mouth to get rid of the craving. There are no chemicals, no nicotine, no taste, and no side effects. With Smoke Remedy's guarantee, you will quit or get your money back. Go to Smoke SmokeRemedy.com today and save 20%. That's SmokeRemedy.com. SmokeRemedy.com. Be honest. Will owning a bigger TV help you get ahead in life? Will another pair of shoes make you a better person? Probably not. But what if you could speak another language? If acquiring a new language excites you more than acquiring more stuff, then wait until you hear this. As part of its biggest language learning event in history, Rosetta Stone is giving away demos of its powerful language learning software absolutely free. For your free demo, call 1-800-344-7270. And Rosetta Stone has made language learning more convenient than ever. Learn on your computer or iPad, then practice on the go with your smartphone or MP3 player without ever opening a book or memorizing boring vocabulary again. Do you want more stuff, or do you want a language that will last a lifetime? After all, it's all about priorities. To try a free demo of this powerful language learning software, call 1-800-344-7270. Again, get your free demo now. 1-800-344-7270. That's 1-800-344-7270. 
I need to archive emails to comply with business regulations. Do you have an IT guy to help search through thousands of PSD files? No. Got time to install a complicated product or create detailed reports? No. You okay paying storage fees to save duplicate emails and images? No. Offshore automated phone tree support okay? No. Then yes, we can help. The Barracuda Message Archiver lets you store and find emails fast to avoid compliance and litigation penalties. Easy setup and single instant storage will save you time and money. And if you need help, you'll talk to a live human. Try the Barracuda Message Archiver free. Go to barracuda.com slash yes. The Opie and Anthony Show is back on Sirius XM. Well, someone didn't get the hint. <laughs> Come on, Bob. Uh, we all want to go. Anthony's leaving. Wow. Bob, go away. Someone didn't see the signs. We said the name of your book four <laughs> times. We talked about the book signing. As we just had this very deep conversation that I come back on the air with that. Which is nice, though. Uh, no, of course we watch you here. Bob Saget, Dirty Daddy's uh, the new book. We only have a few minutes left here before we leave, Bob. Where do you guys go now? I'm going to go uh, home and I have therapy today. Wednesday's is therapy day, Bob. You always do it on the, exactly on hump day. I always do. Halfway gets me through the week. Yeah, yeah that's right there. I talk a little bit about the things I've done wrong and yet the things I hope to do right. Right. So you optimum day would be like Sunday, right? You would review the whole thing? No, that's the beginning of the week. I like halfway through the week. Yeah. I don't even want to go anymore. I'm so sick of it. Why don't you want to go? I'm sick of it. Do you want me to talk to your therapist? But it's not supposed Please. to be fun. I know, but it's not supposed to be awful either. Oh, I'm just tired. Are you of tired it. of your therapist? No, I like her. She's really nice. Does but... she listen to the show? No. Are you attracted to her? No, I'm really not. I wouldn't want Is to go to a sexy, therapist. Though? No. Not like a Tony Soprano thing where you got no. a hard on when you see her. No. Is it one of the few people you don't get a hard on around besides me? It's amazing. I always get a hard on. I know he gets hard on around here too. <laughs> it's really so there's, weird. A, there's like a little mushroom, but <laughs> yeah, there's just, no shaft at all. Just the head. The mush. Right. The head. The, the shaft thins yeah. out. It's really yeah. creepy. It's like a seashell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the smell. Um, <laughs> so maybe you take a break for a little bit. I might have to. If man. I put your uh, head of your cock up to my ear, do I hear the ocean? No, you hear syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> You've not had syphilis, had you? No, I haven't. Do you have little clams on your wiener? Things that grow on it? You don't never. What's the, what's the little clams that grow on it? I don't know. There's like uh, sea creatures, little horses oh, and stuff. Oh, warts and stuff? No. Yeah, warts. You ever had oh, uh, no. God. congenial warts? Oh, you're, I have happy, not. you're happy about congenial oh, warts. What are they? No, they're congenial, not congenital. Oh, okay. You're, they're your understanding. Consenting, I got you. consenting warts. My, yeah. My, no. uh, my therapist actually uh, told me I was ready to, to move on. Kind of like I was told that I could yeah. leave now if I she's, wanted. That's the I want to see other people. Of she's, like, <laughs> she's like, yeah, you're ready. You're ready to move on for now. <laughs> yeah, It was the best thing I ever did, though. And, yeah, and I, so you I go back every once in a while. But every once in a while I check in. But I, yeah, because after a while you're just like, oh, what? I'm, I'm going to make up a story why I didn't get a bike at ten, and, and, and right, what, and why this is an issue now. I had a fight with like, somebody yesterday. Right, you, you really run out of the things, like, right? The important things that you really do need to talk about. And then you just start like, going, what? I, I don't even mean what I'm saying to you. I just am filling up time now. Yeah, you're following the script. It's like an improv exercise. But she was like, you're ready. I was able to flush out a lot of stuff finally. I leave early sometimes though. If I go, yeah, my therapy is 45 minutes now and I'll, sometimes i'll do 40 with her 45 sometimes i'll do 20 minutes ago. i'm tired i'm gonna go You'll home. do a good 20 sometimes i'm so tired by that time it's like i'm exhausted i just want to get the fuck out of like it. stand up you're doing a good 20 for her at tight 20 i'll tight just, 20 yeah, exactly. <laughs> finish it up nice it is nice to close well when you're leaving if you leave and you're like have that look of them I mean, you're, you're yeah. just lost that's just well, sad we, we yeah. usually just make out you know that's, how we end our, <laughs> that's cool yeah we end our therapy by making out you know? so it's because other things so yeah. it's all foreplay all of it yeah i have a thing for all the women so so we try to help a little bit on the couch, oh, and then we do get you, out of there. Do you like older women? I don't mind, sure. So oh. it's any, any woman, any age. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of any. Yes. And Jim, you like older women? No. <laughs> you like them, like, over 60, 70? No, I like women. I mean, look, there's women in their 30s I'm very attracted to. There's women in their 40s. But I like women in their mid-20s. I don't want them young like a child, but I like them 25, 28, maybe 30. It, I have an uh, issue with that, too. I'm, I'm almost trying to get into double digits now with women. But it's... it's <laughs> 
It's I don't know they because I get it because I'm as old as I am right. that they always no do you want to get married again and I'm just and, yes. so I, and, oh. and, and, and I'm like I'm just and it's in the book actually I'm just can we just finish our beet salads you know it's like the first time I you met eat them beet salad well that was the, what, what would you have with them with you? Well, I'm, I'm beet eating beet salad you put them in a smoothie. Oh, well, I, I do that. Well, that some people would say, "What would I could drink them?" Yeah, but uh, that gives me uh, diarrhea sometimes if I have a smoothie with all the beets in it. That's beets the best go part right of it. Oh, dude, the best part of a vegetable juice is stiff legging down your hallway because you're gonna <laughs> shit down at both your thighs. But explosive if you're in the, this building and you got yeah. that in there, the whole place just smells yeah. like a fucking. It clears the beauty of it. It clears you out. The, the old uh, the old woman the old lady thing though. When you're younger. Uh, uh, yeah, I was into it to a point, not crazy ages. But then you get older, and then you start doing the math, and you're like, ah, I can't have that fetish anymore. Because right. now they're like, they got to be 60 or 70. What about like Raquel Welch or somebody you had a crush on as a kid who's like oh, 75 but still hot? Yeah, Jane Fond. I'd fuck either one of them. Sure. Jane right. Fond. She looks good, though, man. For a woman that old, I never I'd liked suck her. her tits. I, I, I mean, I didn't, what like, I didn't even like her in her Barbarella <laughs> days. No, no, I was never a fan of hers. No. I was a fan of Clute when she was I a hooker. A big, yes. and, there was I like was, Vietnam. There was a time I needed big boobies. <laughs> yeah. So Raquel there was a time Welch. I needed that. Raquel Welch was my go-to. Uh, the and, 1 million BC thing. Yeah. I'm just glad I didn't hit it from my bed because it was on the wall. <laughs> but that's another thing. You wake up one day and you're like, what are you doing? You don't need big boobies all the time. That's true, too. You're going to have... Yeah, <laughs> you I know. You look ridiculous. I know, but you wanted the, what was in the magazines. I, right, I, right. I, I smuggled Playboys in my house when I was a kid. What girl would you say you've jerked off most to in your life? Like, what celebrity or whatever? Um, was there a porn? I think there's a couple in porn that I might be my on my all time great list. It was like a, a long time ago, like old school porn. I um, I can't, I can't remember. But big, big, big tits though. It's okay to say tits on the air? Yeah, of course. <laughs> no. no, no. Oh, well, hold on, let me oh, let me hold on, let me read the cover of your book. Dirty Daddy, the Chronicles of a Family Man Turned Filthy Comedian. Yes, yes. you can say tits. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's a guy in the line, Kevin in Houston. Actually I, I I have to do this to you. Go ahead, Kevin. We got Bob Saget in the studio for a few more minutes. Hey. Hey Bob. How you doing? I just wanted to ask you if you knew about the phenomenon now with kids watching full house reruns. I have two little girls, nine and six. Yeah, and I kid you. Everyone in their age group watches Full House. It's. And, I mean, it is the the show to watch now. I know it's crazy. It's on two networks right now. It's like and and as the kids are discovering it at two three years old. Mm -hmm. I think it's because it's on videotape, so it's brighter. It's not. Uh, you know, the digital stuff, and it's also got a three-year-old going, oh, nuts. You know, it's like a characters that talk like they talk, which is right. almost kid show stuff. I mean, it is kid show. God, it's, it's so nice, though. It's a, it's a high compliment. I don't remember doing almost any of it. You really <laughs> don't? Well, I do. I mean, I, I, you want to block it out if you're dancing, you know, and running around like a geek and stuff, but I know that I had a lot of fun. I had but a lot you of fun remember with the day-to-day -day filming of that show? Yeah. A little the, bit. There's a story in the book where I made uh, Dave and John do uh, nitrous oxide off the whipped cream cans, and that, so we that was Michelle didn't have any whipped cream on her birthday cake, right? For the prop thing, <laughs> really, we <laughs> fucked it up. <laughs> but is, a, it is a, it is a wonderful show. And on the flip side of that, it was a wonderful. It's a wonderful show for kids to watch because it's you can let them watch that. You ever do the show high or anything like that? No, just influence? that one that one incident. No, no, no booze or nothing. And the truth of it is, uh, there were kids around. So it's, right, right. As much as my couple stories are sensationalized, I was going nuts. I was manic. I was going through a divorce and stuff, and I was kind of crazy. Mm. But and I had a, I would go do stand up at night and had a sister dying during it and all that kind of crazy stuff. But I, I, I actually love doing it. And I'm, I'm close with everybody that was on it. So I think that's the other thing. Kids see that they see that we all like each other. They can right. tell that. Right. They don't know about dramas of actors and what they right. act like. But that's really nice, sir, to tell me that. Oh, Thank you hung you. up a oh. while what was ago. That? I, I, what was the year the, the show ran? Uh, 87 to 90. Oh, I thought it was earlier. Okay. Four, I think. Okay. Yeah. And then you had the video show as well. Yeah, that started in like there. a year later. That was, I, was, I was in Buffalo just being a nobody on the radio. We'd, we'd all get together to watch that show. It was a Sunday night thing. It, it was, was just... a Sunday night thing. It was uh, it was Chris Shire, I remember. She was the morning girl. And she would have us over almost regularly on Sundays and cook a huge meal because most of us were, were from out of town trying to make it on radio. And we'd always put that fucking show on. It, we, wanted, we approached it. I mean, it's a blooper show, but we approached it like we were doing some variety show. 
know, and I was going, this is the, right. you know, why World of Disney right, hour. Right. And I was, that's when I grew up. So at 7 o'clock, we were doing really expensive bits that nobody would dare do. How many people were watching as Prime? Oh, do you, do God you know in heaven. Was, I, I know that it was like 25 million. Yeah, no times. one touches wow. these numbers anymore. It was number one. It was uh, 25 million every Sunday. In the beginning, it, it was gigantic, yeah. 25 million. It was, it was, there wasn't that much television. There wasn't that much cable. There was right. HBO. And I was like, you know. In the mid 90s? Oh, there was enough. That, that was this just. wasn't mid 90s. It was early 90s. It, it was 87. Oh, you mean a year after Full House that started? No, a, a video show also started. I think it was 87, oh, 88. Wait, which had the 25 million? Full House or? A uh, video show. The video show. Video right. show was number one for a while. So that's your number one. That was exciting, but, you know. That, I, that officially is your number one show you ever did. As far as numbers, numbers, but not, but in more people. I mean, Full House is around the world a lot. And then Tom Bergeron's had a big success, and he's leaving the video show now. Is he? So we're going to dinner to talk about what it's like at night to try to not have people get hit in the nuts in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Guys fucking get hit in the nuts. They, I wanted to leave the show when it was just old people falling on cement. They made a, they made a reel of just old people like falling head first on the cement, and they would cut. Right when the impact happened, and they cut to someone in the audience with their head flying back, laughing. Yeah, they just because that's what they would do. They would not show the impact, so you really? were therefore we're not watching faces of death. <laughs> so, hey, you know, you gotta redo that show. Those, with beheading videos. Right. <laughs> you know, oh no, I don't think he wants to cut a piece of cheese. <laughs> those gutted seniors. <laughs> <laughs> they never showed that. They would never show the actual impact. Oh that, my sometimes god! Sometimes they did editing. with a younger person, you know. But right. if it's an old person, you right. know, you know, a hip got broken or something. It's terrible. Did, did you see the video of the old lady that they're spinning around? Uh uh. I get upset at stuff like that. It's so funny. I talk I, like this and you know, I do the kind of stuff I, I do. But I, I can't asked, look at it. I ask because it's one of those videos that you're supposed to be really upset by it, but there's something. How's she spinning around? I guess you got to be twisted. They pick her up by the, I don't the know. top of her coat. They don't hurt her. They don't hurt who, her. Who does it to her? Some we local don't know. I, I feel like they know this lady, and they're just messing with her, knowing yeah. that she'll be all oh, right. Oh, so it was a hazing bad bunch know, of kids? I don't know, though. Could you show that video? It's going to bother them, I Did think. they swing her around? Yeah, by her clit. <laughs> but, <laughs> so it just kept growing and growing? Basic, you know, basically every so day. So it was a the camel through her. <laughs> every day there's a viral video, but it all started on on the video show with you. Bob. Yeah, it did, but they didn't swing no old way. women around. I, I, I want it's your Romanian. Uh, I want your honest opinion on this. This, 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 right? two, this is not two girls in a cup, right? No, no, no. That's right. a, you know, you made me watch yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a nice morning in my life. <laughs> then wonderful. you called Joe Francis in prison. It was a good time. Oh, you were there for that. I was too. there. I almost feel like we should uh, film him watching this. Hold on, uh, hold on, just in case. Oh my grandmother, really? I, and I want I want your real reaction. This I don't is want... this is what happens. I, I it don't know. back old memories for me. It was me and Jeff Ross sitting there. I feel like you might laugh at this. There's hold no on. nobody shits in a cup, right? Uh no. Hold on. All right. Hold on. Wait, where am I? Okay, hold on. Hold on. All right. These this is one of the bad cat guys. Yes. It's a bad person? I would say so. Yeah, check this All out. Right. <laughs> Oh my. Oh, it's about Cook. <laughs> She's just a crazy old lady running Was, away. Wasn't she on Benny Hill? <laughs> oh Christ. <laughs> they told her, they they chase her down into it. This is just not good. It's like a Lord of the Rings creature. <laughs> What do you think, Bob? Well, I don't think that should be done to people. <laughs> no, of course not. I don't think people should do that. <laughs> of course What I'm not. impressed by, to be honest with you, is yeah. her coat, her orange coat is tufted, and it yeah. seems she's like the Michelin woman. <laughs> she's, uh, she's, she apparently, <laughs> she's ready to go. I mean, she like, it's like a video game. It looked like the old Zelda or something. You just swing her around for a little bit, you set her down, you go get her again. <laughs> you let her, you swing her around a little. And she runs for a while, and then you pick her up. It looked like it wasn't even real. No. I, I'm not saying it's funny. They but, didn't uh, hurt her. They didn't hurt she her. She doesn't look hurt. No. And the screaming's lovely. Do you yeah. like that video? soothing voice. I really, I really enjoy it. Yeah. Where did it? It's Romanian? It's yes. Romanian, yeah. There's a lot of good stuff going on in the world. Yeah. So these guys, that's what they were doing. They they yeah. got fucked up with their problems. Would you put that on the video show? I, You like know, they, they, they would. Yeah. They would, put they would right? They, they might, but... I don't think so. That's abusive. With, with some wacky, <laughs> wacky voiceover. Yeah. <laughs> oh, put me down! Put me down! Right. They don't do those. Which is actually what she's saying. Yeah, that's what I would do. Like pushing yeah. a rock, you know, some dog. 
Uh, I think it's time to go. I think it, yeah. i got to get to the trainer. I'm trying, yeah. I'm I'm trying to get this mush pile back. You look mush pile. It's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> you, look, you look really good. That I've trainer lost. deserves a round of fucking applause. What yeah. a job I've lost doing. seven so far. I'm going for another seven. I shit five yesterday. <laughs> nice. I'm on this book tour. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it was a baby's foot in the toilet when I was done. And you're signing. Bob will be signing. Uh, Bob Saget's book is called uh, Dirty Daddy, The Chronicles of a Family Man Turned Filthy Comedian. And it's a lot about death and comedy. It's not. It's jokes, but it's also real stuff. And my balls. I do talk about my dick a lot. I would love to hear about your dick. I think, I think it, Bob yeah. Saget probably has a giant cock. I can't determine. Bob uh, either has five or 11. There's no fucking... There's no, Bob is not a seven. It's nice of you to say that. Are you, are you full Jewish? I'm going to say I am... Are you 100% I'm to, Jewish? I'm totally Jewish, but I say mm. I have the strength to... Pick that woman up with my dick and swing her around. Okay. And release, okay. release yeah. her, and then pick her up again, swing her for a little bit. Yeah. And, and, Bob, and is, Bob is all cock. I have no doubt that this big, tall guy with giant hands is a fucking cock. Uh, I'm, I'm a sexual person, though, so I could, I would, that woman I found attractive, so I would, I would mount her through her coat. I think the biggest surprise of women who slept with Bob probably after a full house was not his dirty act, it was his giant cock. This is I, the best time I've ever had on this show. <laughs> <laughs> I, you, you know I worship you now. I'm going to light the, the ninth Hanukkah candle. Handle for you. Thank you. You're carrying it between your legs. Absolutely. Right. Let's uh, get the, the plugs in. By the matzah. Bobby, uh, the book's going to do great. Bob Saget, Dirty yes. Daddy. Go get that. And the Please. signing is, uh, where did I say it? Barnes & Noble? Tonight. It, with, with Seth Herzog at... Um, uh, I'm Seven sorry. Seven o'clock but... tonight in Union Square yes. at the Barnes and Noble. On the third floor, they have like I set it up and I talk to people. I didn't know this happens when you write a book. You talk to people. That's a great that's a great place for Union Square is a very big Barnes and Noble, so people can wait inside. Like there can be a big line and you'll be inside. It, it's the last bookstore in New York, basically. basically. Left, and man. there's no Barnes and Nobles anywhere. It's creepy. It's really fucking weird. And the book's downloadable and stuff, but I, I like I love that it's a book. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice, because mm -hmm. Germans would have burnt this first. Right. Would have been right after, you know, I guess the Old Testament. <laughs> <laughs> and Jimmy's yeah, gonna, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. Uh, I was just uh, going to talk uh, about that woman getting swung around. See, I, I, we it wanted to shock you. Me. It we did shock you. me, but there's something funny about her voice being like a fire alarm. <laughs> right. It's like a house alarm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she only has two modes of panic. Right. There's not a lot. And she, she's handicapped a little bit too. She's got a, like a rigid I, upper torso. I, I feel like they know her. They probably know. I, I feel like the they knew her and just knew they could do that. It wasn't set up though. She didn't think this was going to be funny to watch at. Right. <laughs> she's no. not going to sit and watch the video right, later. Right, right. Remember that was funny when I did that. <laughs> <laughs> Poor woman. Look. Tampa. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm oh, yeah, where you go? Can I read your dates? Can uh, I plug it? It's just, there's not many. I like saying it. <laughs> Jim, Norton, Jim Norton's going to be doing his show, and he's one of the funniest people that, that exists. Thank you, Bob. It's the truth. Tampa, Florida, this weekend, Thursday, April 10th, at the Cowhead Rose. I like him. Yes. At the T. Pep at the T. Pepin Center, Friday and Saturday, April 11th and 12th, at Side Splitters Comedy Club. Tickets are at www.sidesplitterscomedy.com. And April 24th to 27th, Thursday to Sunday, he's going to be here in New York City at Caroline's on Broadway. Tickets are at TicketWeb.com or Caroline's.com. Don't miss Jim Norton because he's really fucking funny. Thank you. I'm just going to go up there and just give those people a gift. You're going to do gift that. of laughter. Are you bringing that woman that you swing around? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she runs away and, and you go get her and bring her back? Yes. I kick her. <laughs> we we love turning you on to the viral videos, Bob. Uh, That's I will, your new show. I, I will turning be, Bob Saget on to the new viral videos. I'll just do one video a year. That's, That's like one thing. But that that I'll, I'll be showing that to somebody. Unfortunately. All right. We Thank get you. Out it's here. good to see you. Absolutely, Bob. Bob. Thanks Bob to all Saget. your listeners too. And thanks to Danny uh, Trejo. Who's uh, what was he promoting? Badasses. Uh, badass. On Blu-ray. Badass too, right? Yeah, he was a great, great guest as well. So thanks. Yeah, he's yeah. a cool guy. Isn't oh, he? he's great. We talked in prison. I did time in prison. He did time in prison. We talked about it. <laughs> a couple of men. You did one night. For I the did a night. Bus. Yeah, well, that was okay. a night. What prison was it? Well, it was San Quentin for him. I, I've been to San Quentin. We do a show there. No, it was, I was a tour. It was a tour. He got a tour. Mm -hmm. what, what prison were you in? But in real prison. Uh, it was called the the tombs. I did the night in lockup, twenty seven hours. Yep. I did a bid. I did a club in Akron once. <laughs> <laughs> you got me and Danny beat. <laughs> Bob Saget, thank you, sir. Thank you. The Opie and Anthony Show is drawn to a close. Stay tuned to reflect, reflect, relive, and get the story behind the story of the finest moments of today's show. Sam Roberts, Opie and Anthony Post Show begins in moments.
celebration on their 20th year in radio, Opie and Anthony will sit down with fellow Sirius XM host Ron Bennington for a live unmasked at Carolina's on Broadway in New York City. If you'll be in New York City on April 17th, you could be in the audience for the live broadcast and have the opportunity to attend an exclusive meet and greet immediately following the event. Only open to subscribers since before March 14th, 2014. For official rules and to enter, go to SiriusXM.com slash unmasked or SiriusXM.com slash the Opie and Anthony channel by April 10th at 3 p.m. Eastern. The Frozen Four is on Sirius XM. Tomorrow, beginning at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, it's the NCAA Men's Hockey Semifinals. Here, Boston College versus Union. Gilmore now, the Hayes, he scores! Followed at 8.15 by Minnesota versus North Dakota. Ambrose with a steal, he scores! Rebound, he scores! Live from the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia, Sirius XM College Sports Nation, Channel 91. Be honest, will owning a bigger TV help you get ahead in life? Will another pair of shoes make you a better person? Probably not. But what if you could speak another language? If acquiring a new language excites you more than acquiring more stuff, then wait until you hear this. As part of its biggest language learning event in history, Rosetta Stone is giving away demos of its powerful language learning software absolutely free. For your free demo, call 1-800-344-7270. And Rosetta Stone has made language learning more convenient than ever. Learn on your computer or iPad, then practice on the go with your smartphone or MP3 player without ever opening a book or memorizing boring vocabulary again. Do you want more stuff, or do you want a language that will last a lifetime? After all, it's all about priorities. To try a free demo of this powerful language learning software, call 1-800-344-7270. Again, get your free demo now. 1-800-344-7270. That's 1-800-344-7270. Hi, this is Bob Diener, president of GetAroom.com. We've got an amazing spring sale going on all over the country, up to 40% off the rates. Here's how it works. Go to GetAroom.com. Enter your destination and your travel dates, you'll see the special sales come up. You'll see the regular rate slashed out, and then you'll see the new rate up to 40% off the rates. New York, Orlando, Vegas, Miami, D.C., Chicago, San Francisco, and more. Getaroom.com. I need a data backup solution for my business to replace my current tape backup device. Do you want to spend a lot of money? No. Do you want to store and pay for replicated data? No. How about a solution that's difficult to install and use? No. Offshore automated phone tree support okay? No. Then yes, we can help. Barracuda Backup. End-to-end -end protection for physical and virtual servers, including data deduplication, to significantly reduce storage requirements, and replicated cloud storage for assured recovery, and live humans to answer your calls. Try Barracuda Backup free. Go to barracuda.com slash yes. As a pioneer in distance education, California Coast University has been helping men and women meet their educational goals for over 40 years. With accredited online degree programs in business, criminal justice, education, psychology, and general studies, students complete their degrees in as little as nine months through flexible, affordable, self-paced programs. To find out how CCU can help you finish what you started, visit info.calcoast.edu. That's info.calcoast.edu. FreshBooks! Save time and get paid faster with FreshBooks, the simple solution that's helping millions of small business owners send invoices, manage expenses, and track time from anywhere in the world. For a limited time, try FreshBooks for free for 60 days by going to FreshBooks.com. Be sure to mention where you heard about us to receive your free 60-day trial. Valid only during tax time at FreshBooks.com. As easy as it looks, FreshBooks.com. Time for another OTC stock profile. Novus Robotics, ticker symbol NRBT. Novus Robotics supplies components and robotic modules to the world's top 10 automotive suppliers. Talk to your broker about Novus Robotics or enter ticker symbol NRBT. That's ticker symbol NRBT. See SpotlightStock.com for full disclaimer. Peter Gabriel, Paul and Oates, Kiss, Nirvana, and the E Street Band are among the select few who have earned a place in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Class of 2014. Hear all the inductees exclusively on one channel. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Radio, available anytime with Sirius XM Internet Radio. Hear a sneak preview on Channel 26 starting tomorrow. Hey, wait. 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 Pacific, and continuing through the weekend. 
If you're overwhelmed by debt and thinking about going to a credit counseling company for help, think again, because the majority of those companies actually work for the credit card companies, and they make the credit card companies a lot of money from people just like you. But there's another way out of debt, and it's not bankruptcy, a way to reduce your debts and save you thousands of dollars. Even better, you can find out how for free by calling 1-800-508-2757. At Freedom Debt Relief, we're not a credit counseling organization. We're not a debt consolidation company. We offer a unique alternative to save you the most money possible to resolve your debt in the shortest amount of time. If you're thinking about a credit counselor, ask yourself this. Are they working for you or the credit card companies? Reduce your debts and save thousands of dollars by learning the secrets to settling your debt. For free information, call 1-800-508-2757. That's 1-800-508-2757. 1-800-508-2757. This is John Greenhut, the CEO of Power Swabs. And I know that a New Year's resolution to lose weight is a tough one to keep. So let me give you the simplest way to look younger. Whiten your teeth in five minutes with Power Swabs. A recent study showed that people looked on average 13 years younger with whiter teeth Power Swabs gives you two shades whiter teeth in five minutes. Plus, it works on natural teeth as well as crowns and veneers. And it's easy. There's no messy strips or trays. Just swab your teeth for five minutes and you're done. In five minutes, you'll see two shades whiter teeth, and in seven days, six shades. See coffee, tea, and smoking stains disappear. Call for your risk-free supply, 1-800-663-7126. That's 1-800-663-7126. I guarantee your friends, family, and coworkers will notice your white smile. So call now, 1-800-663-7126. That's 1-800-663-7126. When it comes to getting the legal help you need, LegalZoom provides a great solution that works with your busy schedule. If you're starting a business, forming an LLC, or getting a trademark, will, or living trust, LegalZoom will provide the personal attention you need and help you take care of all the details. Call or visit LegalZoom.com today. And don't forget to enter SiriusXM in the referral box at checkout for a special discount. LegalZoom provides legal help through independent attorneys and self-help services, but it's not a law firm. Here's a direct oceanfront investment on the Florida Gulf of Mexico you'll want to learn about. A bank foreclosure allows you to buy for $0.10 cents on the dollar. Dockable Marina Bay lot sold for $800,000 April 12th, $69.9. Gulf Beach front lot sold for $1.6 million April 12th, $159.9. Skeptical? Take a tour at BuyGulfFront.com. That's BuyGulfFront.com or call 866 866- NFL land. Only 21 lots available. Gulf Atlantic Land Sales LLC broker. Are you single and using online dating sites? Why, that's a fine idea. Maybe you'll find just the right person using a computer. Maybe she'll be stunning and laugh at all your jokes and you'll fall in love. And it'll turn out she's really a famous Hollywood actress. Or maybe you should call It's Just Lunch. It's Just Lunch uses real dating experts to get you out on some real dates for some real fun, real fast. It's just lunch, a smarter way to date. Unfortunately, the Opie and Anthony show is over. Fortunately, we have a hard time letting go. The stories behind the stories. Behind the stories. The backstage drama. Everything that made today unforgettable. Call 866-WOW-1-WOW. Now, now, now. And look back on another legendary day of broadcasting. This is the Opie and Anthony Post Show. Post Show with Sam Roberts. Yeah, dude. Small balls. What'd you say, Roland? Small balls. We were just talking about Roland's Instagram to the Cronut guy. He basically wrote him a soliloquy. Can you say soliloquy? That's not a word, Chachi. Say it for me. Soliloquy. <laughs> All right, Roland. Give me a snack. He got... <laughs> here, boy. Here, boy. Here's a treat. He wrote a... He rewrote the whole speech from Rocky. Kind of paste. As if to, uh, to congratulate this stupid cronut guy on his on his return to making cronuts. Yes. It's pathetic. It's not pathetic. Say, hey, buddy, you're back. Did yeah. you copy and paste exactly what he was promoting? Of course he did. 
pathetic. That's sad. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You can find it on Roland's Instagram yeah. if you want to see it. Pathetic, you were crying over your wrestler, guys. When was I crying over wrestlers? Uh, well, if you want to not make it public, then I won't. I respect your wishes. You're an idiot. 866-WOW-ON-WOW <laughs> for the post show. 866-969-1969. If anyone was crying, it was Eric. He was very upset about The Undertaker losing. Yeah. Very upset. Um, and the ultimate war, you're dying. Yeah, I'm sad. I'm surprised you can come in with shoelaces around your <clears throat> arms today. I've never been the big warrior fan. Well, that's probably what killed him. Broken heart. Yeah. Yeah. Although Alex has his own theory. What's up, Alex? I uh. <laughs> Look, I have four I minutes on this post show today. I don't have time to wait around for Alex. Let's play line of the day. <laughs> here, here, here comes. Line of the day, line of the day, line of the day. I remember I was getting ready to watch Johnny Carson. Because it was about 11 o'clock at night. He came on at 11.30. And this kid calls me up and says, hey, there's a lot of blow down here at my job. 1985. He said, can you come down and just hang out with me? I go, yeah. So I went down to hang out with him. I thought he worked in a warehouse because it was in the warehouse district of L.A., so I thought we were going to sit in the parking lot, smoke cigarettes, drink coffee, you know, and then, and then he was going to go back in at break, and everybody's going to think we're gay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Danny Trejo was a great guest today, which is funny, because they started, and this happens every time, and, and Roland doesn't even realize it now, because Roland gets stressed out by the whole thing, but every time they start the show talking about not wanting guests... They have a great time with the guest. They don't want any guest ex until they actually have them in studio. They, I, they very rarely, Opie and Anthony, have bad have bad experiences with guests. But they never remember that they had good experience with guests. No, of course not. Uh, let's go to Kevin in Toronto. Kevin, welcome to the post show. Kevin. Hello. Kevin. Hello. Yeah. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, my name's Cameron. Well, look, Cameron, we don't have time to play the name game. Okay, I just wanted to say I don't want Lady Di or Bobo to be on the after the show today. to a listener request. Listener requests coming in. Listener requests coming in. The first listener request is no Bobo or Lady Di. So if I get a call from them, that no go. Yeah, tell those selfish slobs to stay home. All right, listener request no, granted. What you say? Who was that? No Bobo. Oh, Roland, you're seconding the motion? Did not want Bobo. All right, the motion's been seconded. What can I do? Kevin in Pennsylvania. Hey, what's up, Sam? How are you? Good. Good. Hey, just wanted to chat real quick on uh, uh, your WrestleMania experience there, and, and what a shock with the Ultimate Warrior. Um, we were talking about it a little bit at the beginning of the show today. And, yeah, I mean, he was gone from wrestling from the WWE for, like, 15 years, I think. It was I 10... Think yep, I think you're right. It was 10-plus years. Correct. And... He comes back, finally. He does one weekend. He does the Hall of Fame. He does WrestleMania, not to wrestle, just to stand up on stage. And then he does Raw, not to wrestle, just to do an interview in the ring. And the next day, he's, he croaks. It's, it's uh, you know, he, he looked, he didn't look... I remember the interview you did with him on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, right before the video game. I remember. What what uh, time was that? Do you remember, like, what when was that? What month, year? Uh, that was, I mean, it was just last year. Last year. He, yeah. looked, he looked great in that interview. Yeah. But then when he gave his speech, I could tell, you know, when he gave his Hall of Fame speech, um, I could tell he just didn't look good. And when he was on Raw, he really, he really didn't look good. I mean, granted, he is, you know, 54. And there could be a lot of things going on there, but uh, I just it's just a shock, and I feel sad for his family, and and I, I hope uh, I hope uh, I, I think it was good that uh, WWE you know did what it's, they yeah did. it's good that they buried the hatchet, but it is sad that I mean he that dude loved his daughters yeah, but also do you think he looked bad before he died? Because oh, oh, and I said it earlier. Some people are looking back and said, look, he looked like he was dying. He looked like he was sick. But you're looking back on the fact that he did now die and now you're saying it i think hindsight has a lot to do with it i mean in like in hindsight now as i think about it i'm thinking to myself maybe he didn't look as good this weekend as he did last year when i spoke to him right but that's also hindsight like he, i wasn't when he was cutting the promo and he was go to shake the ropes and he would just it's just like he was tapping it and that and then stop he wasn't doing the full warrior but i stuff. don't think anybody thought yeah, this guy thought he is going to be dead within a day right 
I mean, that shit is nuts. Uh, that interview we were just talking about is up on YouTube. You can search it out if you want to find it. I'm posting a whole bunch of stuff from WrestleMania weekend as well. So if there hasn't been enough wrestling talk for you, it's on the Internet. We will see you tomorrow. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for listening to Opie and Anthony and the Opie and Anthony Post Show. If you missed a minute, get it later today at SiriusXM.com slash on demand. Or stay tuned. Today's replay starts in minutes. Here on the Opie and Anthony channel. It is real. real. I need to protect my company's email. Do you want an email security solution that's hard to install? No. You good with paying a fee for every user? No. How about a little extra for outbound email protection? No. Offshore or automated phone tree support okay? No. Then yes, we can help. The Barracuda Spam and Virus Firewall, the world's best-selling business email security gateway, with email encryption and data leak prevention included at no extra cost. Available as a hardware appliance, virtual appliance, or as a cloud service. And always humans to answer your calls. Try the Barracuda Spam and Virus Firewall free. Go to barracuda.com slash yes. But wait, I've got one more content security problem that I need solved. Okay, what is it? I need to control internet usage in my office. Do you want to pay a fee for every user? No. Do you want to pay extra to protect remote users? No. How about a product that's difficult to install and use? No. Offshore or automated phone tree support okay? No. Then again, yes, we can help. The Barracuda Web Filter. Content filtering, application control, and malware protection with no per-user fees. Available as a hardware appliance, virtual appliance, or as a cloud service. And live humans to answer your calls. Try the Barracuda Web Filter free. Go to barracuda.com slash yes. As you enjoy the great outdoors, remember, spring is mud season, which can be harsh on your vehicle's carpet. All the more reason you need tough WeatherTech floor liners. I'm David McNeil from WeatherTech. WeatherTech floor liners are laser measured to perfectly fit any make and model, providing a wall of protection for your vehicle's carpet. .com or call 1-800-CARMATS. Attention truckers, achieve your maximum earning potential with TP Trucking. TP offers a competitive base pay and realistic driver incentives with an industry-leading health insurance plan, and we work diligently to get you home for the weekend. The TP fleet is growing with new Kenworths purchased locally from Pape Kenworth. Drivers, the time has never been better to make the switch to TP Trucking and maximize your earning potential. Give us a call at 800-777-1121. TP Trucking, we're going places. Be honest. Will owning a bigger TV help you get ahead in life? Will another pair of shoes make you a better person? Probably not. But what if you could speak another language? If acquiring a new language excites you more than acquiring more stuff, then wait until you hear this. As part of its biggest language learning event in history, Rosetta Stone is giving away demos of its powerful language learning software absolutely free. For your free demo, call 1-800-377-9196. And Rosetta Stone has made language learning more convenient than ever. Learn on your computer or iPad, then practice on the go with your smartphone or MP3 player without ever opening a book or memorizing boring vocabulary again. Do you want more stuff or do you want a language that will last a lifetime? After all, it's all about priorities. To try a free demo of this powerful language learning software, call 1-800-377-9196. Again, get your free demo now. 1-800-377-9196. That's 1-800-377-9196. There's an oil boom going on right now, and you're missing out. Own your own oil well at oilboomusa.com and take advantage of one of the remaining successful tax shelters with up to an 85% write-off in 2014. That's right, 85% this year. Get the facts at oilboomusa.com. Invest in America and boom. Oilboomusa.com. Oilboomusa.com. Own your own oil well at oilboomusa.com. Accredited investors only. Individual results may vary. There's no guarantee that past performance will be indicative of future results. Invest wisely. Cut my taxes. Cut my taxes. Cut my taxes. I make a lot of money. I pay a lot in taxes, and I'm tired of it. If you make a lot of money, are self-employed, are a business owner, a well-paid career professional, or a high net worth individual, and you're tired of paying a lot of taxes, we can help. Since 1998, we have helped more than 7,000 clients across the country save more than a half a billion dollars in taxes. That's right, a half a billion dollars. The average American pays 31% in taxes. Our clients pay an average of 15% in taxes. 15%. If you want to keep more of your money, pay less in taxes, and protect your assets, then call us right now. Call now, and we'll also send you our free tax report that will show you how we can save you thousands of dollars. 
Just dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say, cut my taxes, and you'll automatically be connected to our offices and instantly receive a text to your phone with a link directly to our website. Just dial pound 250 and say, cut my taxes. That's pound 250 and say, cut my taxes. Entrepreneurs everywhere are running their small businesses using just their personal mobile phone. How? With Grasshopper, the entrepreneur's phone system. With Grasshopper, your business can sound professional from anywhere in the world. With an 800 number, multiple extensions, call forwarding, voicemail to email, and many more advanced features. Join over 150,000 entrepreneurs who've turned the world into their office. With Grasshopper, sign up at grasshopper.com. The entrepreneur's phone system. We're a regional business that isn't so regional anymore. We need more office space, more phones, and more staff. It's a good problem to have, but still a problem. That's when we called in our secret weapon, Regis. Businesses of all sizes are turning to Regis. With over 1,700 global locations, Regis offers fully furnished offices with flexible terms, a receptionist to greet clients, and access to meeting rooms and video conference studios. Get two months free when you visit Regis.com slash radio now or call 1-800-OFFICES. When it comes to choosing a trucking company, choose the one that invests in its drivers and their quality of life. Trans Am Trucking equips its Kenworth trucks with refrigerators, APUs for in-cab climate control, power to charge your cell phone, run your TV and microwave, automatic transmissions, voice navigation, in-cab fifth wheel release, and no-touch freight. At Trans Am Trucking, their drivers earn a living and enjoy life on the road. Call Trans Am Trucking at 800-370-9609 or visit TransAmTruck.com. To make your life on the road more livable, choose Trans Am Trucking. Hi, I'm Jay Farner, president of Quicken Loans, and I'm excited to tell you how to get just the edge you're looking for as a home buyer. This brand new program is called Mortgage First, and it's exclusively from Quicken Loans. With Mortgage First, we'll underwrite you up front, giving you the upper hand on the competition. To learn more about Mortgage First, call Quicken Loans today at 800 Quicken or go to QuickenLoans.com. Restrictions apply. Rate terms and conditions may change until final loan approval. This is not an offer to lend. Call us for cost information. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states and MLS number 33. DaveSmith.com feels the need, the need to give you a great deal. Dave Smith is driving prices down. Call 800-635-8000 or go online to DaveSmith.com. Check out the great deals on over 2,100 new Dodge, Chryslers, Jeeps, Rams, Chevys, GMCs, Buicks, Cadillacs, and top quality pre-owned vehicles. DaveSmith.com is the world's largest Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, Ram dealer and the Northwest's largest GM dealer. DaveSmith.com. Get a great deal today. 